On TV, you'll see it later. <laughs> I came to play today. I knew it. No big deal, no big deal. Thank you. One day, King of the Mountain, other day, in the Valley. <sighs> Comeback time.
Hello and welcome to Las Vegas and the Poker Stars North American Poker Tour back for the first time since 2011 and the first event in Vegas since 2010. The return of the NAPT. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Maria Ho. Welcome to my side of the world, James. Here we are in Vegas, just days ahead of the Formula One Grand Prix down the Las Vegas Strip, and we are bringing you three consecutive days of cards up coverage of this NAPT series. Starting with the penultimate day of the main event, that's today. Then we have the final table of the main event tomorrow and the final table of the high roller on Sunday. Live today at 12.30 local, live tomorrow and Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific. And of course, over the course of today and tomorrow and Sunday, we want to hear from you. We have the live chat on Twitch. We have the live chat on YouTube. You can use X, although let's be honest, guys, it's not what it used to be. There is also Facebook and Instagram as well for your entertainment pleasure. So these are the chip leaders coming into day three of this four day MTT. Some familiar names in the top 10, including Nick Shulman, Scott Ball, Sergio Aido, a player we know very well from the European Poker Tour. Blinds are going to be 10,000, 25,000 with a 25K big blind ante. And we have every hope, every expectation that we will get down to the final table today. Scheduled to play six levels. Hopefully at the end of that sixth level, we will have a single table. There are five tables in action right now. 1,095 total entries in this $1,650 buy-in event, generating a prize pool of more than 1.6 million. Big sums up top, and more than a quarter of a million dollars for the champion. $268,945 plus the first NAPT main event trophy to be presented since 2011. Here's the lineup at the feature table. Here's the lineup at the main stage. We've got Nick Shulman, the poker pro and poker commentator. Scott Ball, the godfather of Twitch poker. And should highlight that we've got three big stacks, four short stacks, and David Coleman is in the danger zone. Danger zone. And as you'd expect, Maria, mostly US flags there. We do have an Israeli player as the biggest stack of these seven. But yes, this has very much been an event for the locals. Right, and they came out in droves. I mean, a lot of people entered, re-entered. Scott Ball actually told me in the hall that he's in yeah, for a nine entries. So I think he needs oh, to get 16th place maybe to break even. Yeah. Action is underway on day three, playing down from 34 to a final table. This is level 24 of the main event. Blinds are 10,000, 25,000, 25k big blind ante. Before the FT, which is a lot, but I don't know. You know, I saw a lot of the old favorites playing this event. A lot of people I thought were dead. Is the clock running? How does the clock work here? So you're, you're Dan High Millers. Not only are they alive, but maybe they've paid off their poker debt so they could show their face again. Yeah, maybe. I'm not, I'm not talking about Dan Highmiller, by the way. Other people. Dan is a legend. Kathy Liebert the clock is saw her. Seat. You're fine. No, you're good, dude. Scotty Wynn played the main event. I did see Scotty. I heard Scotty, actually, before I Level, saw him. We're kicking it down. So we have had an under-the-gun race here from Shang Wan Li, Ace King. How many bullets for you, Nick? Oh, right, poker. Oh, so down away. I don't know. Scott. Yeah, this I'm whole Max. thing. You're just the goat. It, Anthony Asky defending his big fly with quick four strawberries. <laughs> ready to be in for nine? Empty the clip. <laughs> what flight was it? Uh, one in the first one. I wonder if he was an inquisitive I child. I the 10K and, like, just barely got Oh, I didn't stop up with that. It took me a while. I, Did you play that? I didn't get yeah. a lot of sleep last night, but... Uh. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I fired a will at that one, too. What's the blinds? I didn't see What's you. the next payout? Yeah. When's the I dinner break? In a small field tournament. Anthony Askey. Are we there yet? <laughs> Looks like a continuation bet from Lee on the flop. One in the pot. 
gone First out of the day, done. I have to say way. this chip can distribution, both, very yeah. interesting. Can you effectively? The, the small blind Obviously is only the done, big right? Obviously, the big stacks yeah. are going to be yeah. leaning can on you, the short stacks, and you do kind of, want to stay like away from each other if yeah, possible, of course. You know, we are in the portion of the game where I look at it ICM is going to be in yeah. play, although, you know, the consideration is going to be a lot more at the final table. There are still play jumps, pay jumps. Yeah. Under the gun raise from Liran Batito, the table chip leader. Round 150. Scott Ball <laughs> in the cutoff, who has three bet with Ace King, has re raised to 150,000. <laughs> Just one ball. You were highlighting the chip distribution, Maria, and obviously we've got two of the bigger stacks here who could potentially play a flop, and that looks like what will happen. Did you guys know that Fives is my least favorite pocket pair Presto? of all time? I would have no idea why. Eight tray deuce on the flop. Five still good here. Near enough a four to one favorite. Is that foreshadowing? No, I just wanted people to know that. People have a favorite pocket pair and yeah, a least favorite. Yeah, least favorite pocket pair five and is my is least favorite. Yeah. Hmm. It's close between aces and eights, which are my favorite. Eights make the most sense. Eights would be a great hand to have here, but fives is not bad with this board texture. Yeah. So Petito playing in flow, checks the flop. Ball continues for 125k. Petito calls. Ooh. And the board getting even better for Petito. Five still good. Plus has an open-ended straight draw. 88% equity. Yeah, very interesting if Ball's just going to continue here and represent the top of his range, all of the big over pairs, and continue to bet this equity that he assumes he has with two over cards to the board plus that wheel draw. Right there. But I don't think okay. that Batito is not regional, 34 already. Okay. I think it's 24. Of course, there's going to yeah. be some speculative hands that Batito could have continued with. Some broadways that have overs and some backdoor flush draws potentially. So ace, ace king high not necessarily performing poorly against that range. What a delicious run out for two fives. <clears throat> the speed limit. Maria hates it. That's why. You're a little speed demon, aren't you? The speed limit. You're a little speed demon. I mean, the speed limit, if this was 15 years ago, everybody yeah. knows that it's at least 65 now, generally speaking, right? 70, 75. It's a fast-paced world we live in these days. Why I, can't everything be like the Autobahn? Should highlight, if you're keeping an eye on the ticker at the top right-hand corner of the screen, that we are already down to 32. We are going to see a table break because there have already been two eliminations. So no redraw at 32, but we are now at four tables. The first redraw will occur when we are down to 24. I know who one of those eliminations was. Oh, tell us more, Joseph. Your friend and mine, Ben Ludlow. Oh, dear. Do you have the details of the hand? No, but I do know that he accidentally went to the win this morning for his restart. <laughs> so that was his first mistake. Sorry, sorry. Just to be clear. This probably is, would have been better off there. This is day three of a four-day mm -hmm. tournament. So he knew that day. He played day one. Yep. He played day two. Yep. So presumably went to the correct venue on both days. He was here yesterday. Right. Why would he end up at the wrong hotel for day three? It. It does kind of feel like the win here a little bit on the outside. <laughs> It is close to the win, yeah. a kind of across or adjacent. <laughs> Muscle memory, maybe. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if we had a scavenger on tournament where you had to find <laughs> out where the tournament was being played <laughs> on the next day? So Shulman outflopped here by Petito. 
But as the pre-flop aggressor, Shulman raised under the gun. He'll continue this flop for 30,000. But Tito, 9-1 to one favorite with second pair. I'm kind of nervous to do commentary on Nick Shulman. Oh, commentating on the commentator. He's, uh, he's everyone's favorite. That's true. Well, naturally, I think he was going to be betting range here with this type of texture from under the gun. And we'll see if he's going to continue to try to get Batito off of these types of hands, the weak 10Xs. Um, I was at a, I was at a, uh, like, a, this, like, cocktail spot in New York just in the morning. And this is a really cool place. They had amazing cocktails, just a little hole in the wall, nothing. And this was, like, they are just selling their merch. And this was just, like, a random thing. That's a, that's a Barry Greenstein yeah, has I made an appearance. Like, I love that. And it's not not like changing the outcome of this hand. It's literally just specific to this one shot in the middle. Of the I yard. love that Shulman recognizes that once Petito goes for the check yeah, on this river, that he too. probably has some type of weaker showdown value. Ones that, you know, sevens possibly can't beat at really showdown. So very clearly turning his hand I'm into a bluff is, with the appearance of an ace. So a card that, of course, favors Nick's range. And, you know, Nick could do no oh, wrong. Nick is amazing. You correct. <laughs> Wow. Shulman what a player. Takes it down with that bet of 125,000 on the river. And Shulman, second at chips at this table. This is being live streamed right now? Just shy of 2 million. All right. Liran Petito still table chip leader with 2.1 million. Not so great at commentary now, now, are you, Nick Shulman? Minutes away? They break the table? Huh? They broke the table? Now? Pretty quiet. They yeah, just they broke my table over this yeah. way. So the new player at the table who just got moved here is Jonathan Borenstein, a player with 2 million in live earnings. On a $500 event at the win for 230k. Welcome to the table, sir. Thank you. Where's my? Which one's mine? Susan C. in YouTube says you're my favorite, yeah, Joe. Every two Third box. Nick is amazing, but he There's doesn't one. hold a candle to you. I think it's just because Nick is behind a paywall. <laughs> is, is Susan the name of your mom? <laughs> Susan, are you out there? I think it's very sweet that you think Joe's mom will be using YouTube chat. <laughs> My mom won't listen at, to anything that Maria Ho is participating in. I asked if your mom was in the gallery. The other day. <laughs> uh, I don't blame her. So we've only caught one of Anthony Askey's whole cards here. He's opening in the cutoff with the Ace of Hearts. And is that correct? 325,000. Oh, it's a virtual all in. I get it. I get it. Obviously, with the return of the NAPT, it does lead to questions about what happens next and what the plans are for the 2024 season. I imagine, and I have no inside information genuinely, I imagine there will be an announcement in the near future about what stops you can expect to see on the North American <coughs> Poker Tour in the next 12 months. I've heard some stuff and I feel like they're intentionally keeping it from me. Ace is for Scott Ball here. You suspect. thing I've heard being discussed and obviously this is a I guess it's the beginning of a new era for the NAPT. This is a bit of a relaunch yeah. event here in Vegas. A bit of a celebration. A bit? What, was that? what I'm saying is I don't think this necessarily sets the template for what you can expect moving forward. So there is every possibility that when the NAPT runs in 2024 it could be uh, a tournament to schedule and buy-ins that are maybe closer to what we see on the EPT. Oh, hello. Oh. Ace is outflopped. Two pair for Coleman. Boy. Coleman is somebody who, you know, has played a lot of the high stakes buy ins here in the States. Definitely the type of player that you wouldn't want to find at your table, but he is short and clearly trying to flop a lot of equity with a suited hand by defending it pre off of the short stack and going to be really happy, of course, to get it in and. Luckily for Ball, it's, 
He's not up against the big stack, holding two pair here against his aces. Yeah, Coleman defending out of the big blind with just four bigs behind. Pretty much guarantee the double up if it holds. Hang on a second. Coleman's got more than 120k there. Maybe each chip is worth one. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. His, 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 his chip count was wrong at the start of the day. Maybe he has 1.2 million. Here is the problem with start of day chip counts. Mm. We are reliant on what players write on their plastic bags at the end of the day. And sometimes, as good as they all claim to be at math, sometimes poker players miscount. Feels like he forgot a couple zeros here, but this is going to mean trouble then. Four ball, of course, never going to be getting away from aces at this point. I wonder if uh, Scott's chip count was right. It can be hard to read the ball bag sometimes. We've got the ace of clubs on the turn. And so now it's two pair and a flush draw for Coleman. And to be fair, a hand like 7-6 certainly would have potentially played as a check raise on the flop with the double gutter. And that does get there now on the turn, of course. Coleman also has the backup in, in. clubs. All in. Just call. gonna go all in, gets a quick call. And... Well, this is likely to be a double up for David Coleman. Obviously, the dealer needs to verify what Coleman's stack actually is and how much damage, I guess, it will actually do <laughs> to stop all. This is worse than GG. Sweat it out. <laughs> Fives and threes hold. 450? I was right about him guaranteed the double up even though he had more than four big blinds. All in is 450. Okay, well then I guess if the all in was 450, then Coleman had probably. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Carry the one. Okay. 900k to start or 850? Anyhow, full double. Probably up to, you know, 1.5 million or so. James, you see this message from 710 suited? Yes, one of our loose cannon candidates. Correct. A candidate. How did we not think of that? How did we not think to call them candidates? It's too late now, Joseph. It's all in the can. He says, hi, all. Awesome event. Had a great time. That bubble was crazy. Busted 101st in the money. Not bad for free rolling through the big game on tour contest. Party Honest. at Zook was awesome last night. We wouldn't know. We were definitely not. We were doing big game stuff. Anyway, one five six five plus nine. Chris made it through the first round, if I remember correctly. Did he not? <laughs> five seven five. <laughs> anyway, thanks for participating, Chris. Six, six, Glad to have you <laughs> at the NAPT. I can't wait to hear the announcement of where the other stocks might be in 2024. All right, Colts. You just doubled up, man. Just sitting there. Yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah. No? Feel good for a I second. Just, I just thought it. Take a breath. Math is not that hard. It's nice to not have to suffer from jet, jet lag this particular trip. I have enjoyed that very much. It was weird because I didn't decide whether I was driving or flying to the last minute. And that was so fun, right? It was weird, it was yeah. Flying by the seat of your pants for this trip. I changed my flight twice. It took me longer to get to the airport than it did to fly here. That's LA for you. Nick Shulman back in action. Sixth hand of the day. Opening on the button with ace nine. So Coleman, a much bigger stack than we originally thought. 
actually has one and a half million chips now, 62 bigs. So it would have had around 30 bigs at the start of the day. Going after this button raise from Shulman. How dare he? I would assume the mystery card could be something of, you know, the suited variety. Some of these Queen X suited hands might play well as a three bet in terms of some of the weaker three bet bluffs, but obviously for value certainly could have hands as strong as ace queen or queens, king queen suited, king queen off suit in terms of small blind versus button. Is it gonna get Shulman to fold the weakish ace? Optimus Clang says, no desert bus style journey for Stapes. So I did take the bus here once or twice in the last few These years. Are, I remember a couple of oh stories, gosh. and I do not understand why you put yourself through that. So yeah, so one of the times, I was like, look, it's a... Oh. Story time later. Yeah, we're just looking at some of the famous faces in the field here, including Masata Yokosawa, Sergio Aido, plus... Some qualifier stories, some really good qualifier stories, actually. Thomas Patka, who won a package to play the NAPT main event. But more impressive than that is a Canadian player called Jonathan Boussiers, who have won a gold power pass, but not just any gold power pass, the Vegas Special Edition pass. So this is worth 20K, this package. It's a 5K high roller buy-in and tickets to the Formula One Grand Prix next week. Oh. Now, Jonathan just happened to have three silver passes as well, <laughs> which he used as buy-ins to the main event. That's fantastic. Bullet one, uh, bullet two, uh, bullet three. Here he is on day three. But he still profited from a min cash, even though he was in for three bullets. Correct. <clears throat> Um, I think it's fair to say that Jonathan is very much enjoying Power Path. He also went to Barcelona via a gold pass. So anyway, the first time I took the bus, it broke down and we had to wait four hours for another bus. <laughs> this and is then, Greyhound you took. No, this is the Flix bus. It's like oh. $8. Yikes. It's $10 it's if you 10. want, like, a private seat. <laughs> and then right around when I forgot how awful that experience was, I tried it again. And my bus driver got caught up. Uh, with the bus got cut off by a pickup truck. And the bus driver then cut the pickup truck off, blocking it, and then got in a fist fight with the driver of the truck. I mean, I don't know why you... Do you kind of put yourself in these situations for the story? Like, you must, right? This just doesn't make sense. I have a very short memory. Still early stages of the penultimate day of the NAPT Las Vegas main event. We are 25 minutes into the day. Two eliminations so far. Started with 34, down to 32. And we have a race here. David Coleman in the cutoff makes it 50,000. Joshua Siat in the big blind defense with 10 three of hearts. Ace 10 tray. Wow. Oh, come what on. What is happening? Yeah. Of course, giving Siat not a whole lot of credit for having the strong aces in his range because. Off of 11 bigs, he would have just shoved those pre-flop against the cutoff open. So, got to be feeling pretty good about the queen 10 in this spot with the backdoor clubs. What's nice for Suya is that his holding doesn't block the strong ace axes, right? Because it unblocks those hands that Coleman's going to very likely be calling with or continuing with. Ooh. 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 <laughs> well. Counterfeit alert. Coleman now with the advantage. Just like James's watch. Mm. Mm. That's a nice watch. Thank you. Looks like the real deal to me, though. Spells yeah. Rolex with a zero. 
Nobody would notice. Holman trying to get value from some weaker 10Xs. Pretty happy with the queen kicker at this point. Also, of course, some potential for some straight possibilities lurking in there that you don't want to give them a free river. Come on with a lock on this. And Suyat with just seven bigs behind. Suyat's not completely devoid of ace X's in this spot. Maybe some of the really weak ace X's he'll just defend. But we'll see if Coleman wants to go thin to win. Not. So, 335,000 in the middle. Coleman bets 325,000, almost full pot, but really what this is, is a bet that puts Suyat all in. Should be cool. Not a thin sizing, is what I was trying to say. Chunky sizing. Thin value. Yeah, it was a little problematic for Suyat, of course, not only being counterfeit on the turn, but the presence of two aces out there makes it less likely that Coleman will have an ace, of course, and... So yeah, blocking some of the other better 10Xs, of course. So that's also what is going through his mind at this point. And it is a spot where Coleman doesn't feel like Suat will have a lot of ace X, which means he can also pressurize this type of holding even without it. Meantime. Ooh, got him. <laughs> wow. Suyat. Suyat. Calls it off on the river. Flop good, got counterfeited on the turn, and is eliminated in 32nd place. Cole's so hot. The right big now. line, hot. not so, so special. Right no. Yeah. That's all on, guys. So this level, level 24, was meant to be the last level of last night, but they actually finished play early, I think because the bubble went on quite some time. So they decided to play a level less than originally planned. So we've got a 60-minute level to start today, and then we go to 75-minute levels, which was the plan for this tournament through to its conclusion. Petito. Table chip leader in action here with ace queen raises to 55,000. So cool asks, how come we had no world famous bubble coverage? Because we weren't covering the bubble? Because we used our first two days here in Vegas to film the big game on tour. That's right. We told you guys we were bringing back the big game. Those games have taken place, but we're not talking about them. Do you know why? No spoilers, because those shows will go into post-production and will air in 2024. As we see a classic race lining up on the main stage, Borenstein with the James and Joe. And this three bet looking pretty strong against a fellow big stack in Batito opening from early position. So, you know, Batito can certainly elect. Well, Ooh. ASCII though, hold on, back it up. Wants to, <laughs> wants to go with King Queen suited. Um, Goo. Yeah, it's tough because he is so short and he probably won't get the opportunity to pick up many better hands than King Queen suited off of that stack. But when you're 95 more, so facing you a three bet before you, yeah, it does make the king queen shrivel up a bit. Eight, 
Definitely a weirder spot now for Petito, even though ASCII is short. I would imagine that most times he was planning to call the three bet from Borenstein. But now wondering, should he ISO, should he fold? What's going to happen if he calls this 245K, but <coughs> the action is reopened, right? Back to Borenstein. Yeah, so the shot clock came into play at the start of day three. So we see time bank cards being deployed here by Petito. Remember, every player has 30 seconds per decision. If they need additional thinking time, they have to use time bank cards. They received six at the start of today. They'll receive an additional six cards at the start of tomorrow should they progress to day four. Some of the first ever Poker Stars time bank cards being deployed in North America. There's more oh, time, out of time back. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, you see, still some, hand. still some growing pains. Even the time banks are jet lagged. I would assume you do at some point. Yeah. We even measure the stacks different here in North America. Inches. <laughs> Spending a lot of time on this decision, I do wonder, you know, if this is necessarily the spot you want to be employing most of your time banks. Potentially could be some other big decisions throughout the day. It does end up folding, which makes it easy for Bornstein, of course, to just run it against ASCII. All in, Paul. All in and a call. So it's Jax against King Queen. King Queen at risk. Better than Jax. Like Skittles versus Starburst. But if I come in, you fold. If you continue, I probably don't. I don't call. I only five bet. I wouldn't continue versus five bet. You continue with five bet? No. I don't like maybe the old artists like the Jax. You know, some little send mining right here. If I, if I hit it, though, you know, it's big. Well, we've lost a player from one of the outer tables. So if Askey loses this race, he will go out in 30th place. We'll check on who went out in 31st in just a moment. Ooh. Ace, eight, seven on the flop. Bethel. Askey with four outs. Kings and queens working for him. for a river course. Have a heart. Oh. There is a heart on the turn. 11 outs now for ASCII. Kings. Oh, a queen. Too many outs, I think. And the hearts. Many, many outs. <laughs> Too many, I think. Can I have a king? Can I have a heart? How much do I win? When's the next page up? He's resisting using his one time. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Never underestimate the power of the James and Joe, and we oh, lose. Your hand as well. Anthony ASCII in 30th place, oh, taking God. us down to 29 players. He cashes for $6,905. And now we can check on who finished in 31st place you before that all in was dealt out on the main stage. Like 375. It was a former NAPT champion, Joe Tihan, who won NAPT Los Angeles back in 2010, is out in 31st. There will be no double win for Joe Tihan, of course. In its brief existence, no, no, no. we did have a two-time NAPT okay, winner, Joe. Yeah. Vanessa Selps won two main event it's, titles. It's bad bad yeah. Yet. If anyone was going to do it back then, it was her. A oh, boss. I thought about a little queen joke. I can't believe Joe T. Hat hasn't won an NAPT in 13 years. Yeah. What's the name of the other Joe that had curly, kind of blonde hair that's an American player? Joe Sirac? No, a different, oh, I, I need to, Bartholdi. Joe Bartholdi? Oh my gosh, so like when I see these people, yeah. these are the types of people that I'm like, We would have got you. <laughs> I had 7-3 offsuit. Smart move. <laughs> I felt it on you. I was you like, I don't, I don't want none of that smoke, man. I, I like your fold normally. I would have gone in. I, like really I don't want the smoke. I would have gone in. <laughs> I believe you. I don't blame you. <laughs> I would have done something similar. I think I probably would make it. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
By the way, it is out there in the public domain who played at those big game tables, yep. obviously. Even when you have to pay with the, the game so playing on tour okay. here at NEPT Las Vegas, people were able oh. to rail the action. But what we're not going to discuss oh. is any of the hands that were played, the outcome of those tables, who won, who lost, and whether the loose cannons managed to turn a profit. I'm not supposed to say this, but someone got aces. Joe! What I can say is I had a blast, and it was so fun to play with Phil Ogg. <laughs> so I'm really funny. jealous. I'm just so, so glad I get to watch the TV shows with Phil Ogg. He and Jennifer are both so funny. I just want to sit and be a fly on the wall for their conversation, like their day-to-day. -day. Just like even talking it's about so what they want at half a breakfast. They love each other so, so much. much. They do everything together. I know. Like. Ooh, a couple of hearts there for Coleman. Indeed. Plus the ace working for him. This is a post-flop flip. But right now, Scott Ball is ahead with the snowman's. Num num. Well, that ace on the turn gives Coleman the advantage. 98% favorite now. Coleman not really looking to bloat the pot with top pair and a flush draw. Of course, it's going to be a lot of hands that beat him with that run out so far. But Ball not willing to turn eights into a bluff. Doesn't have a whole lot of showdown value, though, once Coleman checks to him. <laughs> Ball. Coleman looking to maybe go thin again. Let's see what sizing he chooses. Leading this river. Just a small 40K. Gets a quick fold. Kind of a frustrating start for Scott, of course, coming in as a big stack immediately. Do feature tables up. rotate? I would think so. I wore it for you. A little for him as well, but it was mostly. Uh, I'm sorry, I had to be honest. I don't know. I don't want Chad to riot if we um, take Nick off the feature. I'm not sure. Well, there will be a change in feature table when we get to 24 players because that will be the first redraw of the day. And I think we heard the players at the start of the day alluding to the fact that there'll be a redraw at 24, a redraw at 16, and a redraw at 9. Three redraws in one day. Yay. American redraws, though. I don't get it. Everything American's better. Okay. No patriot over here. Love it or leave it, ho. <laughs> I have dual citizenship. Well, then I guess you can leave it, can't you? Break after first look. Wait, Canada? No idea. I checked, yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. I'm just wondering. Yeah, it's no. Never been to South America. Two, two and a half. Yep. King seven versus Queen Deuce. Nick Shulman in action against. I think so. Leran Batito. Two and a half hours. They got TV <laughs> there in Taiwan? Yeah. No. It's a lot. Oh, jeez. They still use dial up. I should stop drinking water. Well, yeah. The soap? Not surprised to see Shulman find the continue with King High on this board. And Queen High has a little <laughs> bit of showdown, of course. You can walk away, but I can't. <laughs> I can't miss a hand. Oh, no. Queen High, no good. Nick Shulman playing just shy of 2 million chips. 78 big blinds and still 20 minutes till the blinds go up. Only one short stack at the table now. 
Sheng Wan Lee with 14 big blinds. A few people asking about Tonka, who is here playing a number of events, and there was a strong chance when we got into the last hour of play last night that we could have had Tonka on the main stage. He was chip leader for much of this tournament, was doing well right up until the very last hand of the night. Oh, for real? Yep, busted on the last hand of the day, taking this tournament down to 34 players, and sadly, no Tonka here on day three. I might be exaggerating slightly. It might not have been the very last hand, but it was one of it was one of the last hands. I'll tell you the what, last ten minutes. It was his last hand. That's true. That's true. If you think about it, you always go broke on the last hand of the day. Huh, Batito calling from the button with four three offsuit against Borenstein's plus yeah. one open. You ever heard of the power of position? That is a little out of line. Just a tad. So Borenstein's open called by Batito and Shulman. The fourth is going to win, isn't it? Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Batito has paired his three. However, Shulman's nine still ahead. A decent flop for Shulman, but out of position against two opponents. Just going to check it over. And Petito can actually have, of course, a much stronger range than his actual holding in this spot when he calls an early position open. He should have a lot of the middling pairs that are playing pretty well against this board. He will have perhaps some king-queen suited, king-jack suited, king-ten suited, those types of hands that are going to be in the mix as well. So trip's certainly a possibility, but for Shulman, just good enough for him to continue. So still three-way going to the turn, seven of hearts. Shulman now a four-to-one favorite in this three-way pot. Oh, he's so cool, I hate him. Now leads on the turn and leads small. 50K into 365K. That's funny because Batito is Spanish for little bet. It was 75. Oh, wow. Interesting. That is not a little bet. Well, listen. All right. If you're going to call pre with 4-3 offsuit, then I like to see you take this line against the lead. You don't expect Shulman, of course, to be leading that often with trips and for that sizing. So perhaps Starts detecting. A little bit of weakness. Oh. The only line here is out of. All right. Who's this Petito character? I'm looking at him up. <laughs> What's Petito. Little bet. So Petito is an Israeli player who started today amongst the chip leaders, was the table chip leader, still one of the biggest stacks on the main stage, has 700K in live earnings. Best result. The we can find could was the at the five. World Series of Poker in 2019. Made the final table of the 1K little one for one drop, a fourth place finish for just shy of a quarter of a million. And as I mentioned, this line credible in the sense that he will have trips here sometimes, but Shulman, you know, trying to get away with a block bet of, of sorts with that lead on the turn, doesn't fully believe it. So let's find out how out of line Petito can get. Will he follow through now without improving? I, I didn't even have time to say he was going to give up before he gave up. <laughs> nice. Nice hand, Nick. Nice hand. A good hand, a good pot for Nick Shulman, who now has the table chip lead. 2.5 million, 100 bigs. Other people at the table are big shoulders. Yeah, who said well. nice hand? It wasn't even in the hand. No, good hand, nice hand. Yeah, nice hand. Good, good, good stuff. Got a new player coming to the main stage. Because we've lost someone out in the field. Senhao Cow eliminated. 
Cashing for just shy of $7,000. That takes us down to 28. Cacao. Keeping the tables balanced. So Sandeep Palampati has just come to the main stage. Just under six or 600 total? Like 580. James, usually uh, at EPT, there's, whatever, yeah, there's a breakdown of, you know, where all the players come from, you know, yep. percentage-wise. Do we have that for this? Because we just saw a Chinese player, of course, getting eliminated. We've got a Israeli in the mix. That's an interesting question. Paging Yan Corres. We need a pie chart. A few seconds before. Something tells me that the USA slice... It's going to be big. I think it's going to be a Pac-Man. It's going to be USA with a little, little wedge of rest of world. Yeah, but I'm curious about the rest of world. Where, okay. How far are these people coming from to play the first NAPT back on US soil in 12 years? There's the pie chair. The pie chair is gonna be mostly red-blooded pepperoni. With one little slice for you soy boy vegetarians. That crossroads place it's not bad. Crossroads is really good. Yeah. So you probably do know this, Maria, but I'm going to give you the hashtag fun fact anyway. The first time Joe and I ever worked together was the last time there was an NAPT in Las Vegas. <gasps> it was the NAPT stream in February of 2010 from this city when Joe came in and did some guest commentary. Huh. And that's the first time that he and I met. It's the first time he and I worked together. I thought we were just farting around. I didn't even, it turns out it was an audition. And the rest is history. I was like, yeah, I'll get on the microphone. Wait, you're going to give me a mic? Yeah, sure, why not? I got nothing else going on. Now you guys are the dynamic duo. Do you have any fun stories, James? Like, be honest, what was your first impression of States? I liked him, and I thought he was really good at it. And then they said, should we hire this guy to do the live stream from Mohegan Sun? I went, yeah, absolutely. Which I guess was your first proper paid gig, Joe, and the first time we officially worked together as a, as a duo, I guess. It's still the highest day rate I've ever been paid. <laughs> <laughs> 13 years ago. <laughs> They're like, we're not adjusting for inflation for you. It was actually <laughs> Matt Morans who hired me over the phone. And he goes, I can only afford to give you X amount of dollars. And I almost dropped the phone because it was so much money. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Start, no problem. Sure. Yes. Let's go. They want tough call. What about Good feeling. Yeah, it is. Yep. Did you try to pretend like you were a little uninterested? You're like, yeah, I, I think. Let me check my myself. schedule. There was no pretending. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't use none yet. Walked in the traffic. <laughs> That's what they're for. I was getting my oil changed at the time, and I remember getting you off the phone and going, <laughs> Very yeah, I'll that take is, the yes. good stuff now. Action has been folded around to David Coleman. Jack six of hearts in the cutoff. Coleman raises to 50,000. Scott Ball is on the button. Seems interested. And sometimes two players are just destined to tango at the table. Can't avoid each other. Ball certainly can find a three bet spot, I think, with this type of hand against the cutoff open off of 22 Ball bigs. One all, in. all in with King Jack offsuit. 570. Well, it's going to get through Coleman. The question is if the blinds got anything. And yes yeah. is the answer. <laughs> Borenstein waking up with tens in the small blind. I think against these positions, 22 bigs effective for ball. Got to be pretty happy with finding tens. You are going to be a little bit wary of, of course, you know, when you call here. I mean, assuming Bornstein does go with the call, you know, you don't want Coleman to come in there with call. an ISO because then you wouldn't feel great about your hand. But... We see that Coleman's hand is just going to be a fold here, and it will be a flip. Ish. Yeah. Obviously, we saw a jack folded. Like hot dogs versus apple pie. 
one of these two American things has a slight mathematical advantage. Borenstein actually a six to four favorite and Ball the at-risk player here. Needs to hit to survive. Queen, six, deuce on the flop. Kings and jacks are Scott Ball's immediate outs. Turn card is a tray, so same out. Five cards in the deck that can save Scott Ball. A king or a jack required. River card is a nine, tens hold, and Scott Ball is eliminated in 28th place, taking us down to 27th, three away from the redraw. Ball's out. The chips over here too. Hmm? <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> One two flips. I'm mad at it. Yep. I'm mad at it. Yeah. I'm mad at it. Steve open on stage. Do you have a calling hand, Coles? Sorry? Did you have a calling hand? Stone bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Orenstein now table chip leader with around 120 bigs. Nick Shulman, the other huge stack at this table. Sheng Wan Lee with a sub 10 big blind stack now. Played with Borenstein here in the States a few times and you know, certainly from everything I've seen today, just very solid, has had good spots, but played them well. Okay, King Jack suited for Nick Shulman. Raises to 65,000. David Coleman. Snowman's. Num num. Maria's second favorite hand. Mm -hmm. You're not wrong. Coleman and Shulman certainly have a lot of history with each other playing high rollers. <laughs> Then you've got Jonathan Borenstein in the mix as well with nines. I thought it was Berenstein. Calls on the button. Those are the bears, I think. Fold from the small blind. The short stack in the big blind folds. So we are going three ways to the flop. There's a nine. <laughs> And two clubs. Wow. So Borenstein was already ahead. Has flopped top set. Nick Shulman with the flush draw. Yeah, it appears that especially multi-way Shulman going to try to realize his equity cheaply. Has two overs. Has a flush draw. It's kind of fitting that a guy named Coleman created this cooler. And uh, Borenstein really trying to trap both of his opponents by checking in position, which again, you know, it's a little bit dangerous. It's a vulnerable board texture, even for top set. Certainly not out of the realm of possibility that your opponents can, of course, not only have the suited combos for flush draws, but also perhaps some 8-7 suiteds will be in the mix for straight draws. And now Jack-10, of course, will also have turned a straight draw. So it is an interesting check back here with Shulman now leading with that additional gut shot equity. Bernstein's probably gonna wanna raise right here just because there's gonna be a lot of bad rivers that might kill his action. Does nope. land on just the call, though. Hold on to your butts. Manages to fade it all. Shulman does not improve. And you wonder, because Bornstein didn't raise on the turn, if Shulman is going to feel like he needs to turn this hand into a bluff. But... Is he really able to maybe get Bornstein off of 
queen x here if that's the type of hand that he had, which makes sense, you know, with the check back on the flop and then calling the turn. Bornstein will have turned some top pair hands. But also, you know... The clock. Sorry, I'll just, I'll sit here all day. <laughs> <laughs> by accident. <laughs> but also, you know, Shulman ahead of some draws, right? Going to be ahead of Jack-10, even though he does block some of that with the Jack of Clubs. But maybe just trying to target perhaps some hand like eights and sevens that'll be in there that can't really withstand this river barrel, which is unfortunate because we see Bornstein pretty much with the top of range given the run out, even though eight, seven gets there. So I'm not sure that he is going to put in the raise, even though he still does have an incredibly strong hand. Well, you feel like you're going to raise, and then all of a sudden you're looking at 300,000 in front of you, and you're like, ah, maybe I should just call. The sizing on the river from Shulman, Shulman not particularly polarizing, though, right? You know, One just million. going for half pot. They so did do it. That makes Bornstein feel good about say, his hand. Stuck million. to the plan. <laughs> Jonathan Bornstein takes it down. He's making it look easy today. Playing nearly 150 big blinds, more than three and a half million chips. Nick Shulman drops down below two million, but still has around 80 big blinds. Blinds will be going up in just shy of four minutes. And flopping sets the best. Set of nines right there. Flopping sets and then fading flush and straight draws. Those are the crucial elements. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it would be great. Shulman back in action here, raising under the gun with King Queen. Round to the button. Sandeep Palampati with Ace Queen of Diamonds. So, to clarify, Bottomus Clang and anyone else wondering, first level of the day was 60, but all future levels will be 75 minutes. So we'll roll into level 25, which will be an hour and 15 minutes long, and then we'll take our first right. break of the day. Is there a redraw 24? Okay, thank you. There is a redraw incoming, as we see Palampasi 3-bet, re-raising to 225,000. Maria, better patty, Palam or Peppermint? Okay, yeah. I hate no, peppermint, so I'm going to go with Palin. Palin Patty, that's correct. You got it. Oh, you need to come up. You can get the memo? Wow. I took you this This down on top. Oh, they're fine. <laughs> Good for you, Nick Shulman. You police that clock. I don't think they have these sorts of clocks in the Night's Watch. I'm not supposed to know. I don't know what to do when you're the one who opened. What? I don't know what to do since you opened. <laughs> uh, I mean, he just said hold up. So, you, I'm gonna fold. you have 9 4, so I would suggest folding. 7-6 suited for Palampati. All right, better patty. Palam or cake? <laughs> cake. Ooh, controversial. Folded around to the blinds. Looks like it's just Nick Shulman in the big. Can't do it. And there seems to be a bit of a kerfuffle right. going on out on the yeah. floor. Yeah. I think we may be down to 24. I think we may have seen three eliminations from the outer tables. And I think we're going to have the first redraw of the day. But there's only 39 seconds wow. left. I kind of figured we would play a full first level. 
before we got down to 24, but no, confirmation. We've hit three tables. Looking at the start of day chip stacks, there were a lot of shorter stacks out there. Seems like they're resting quickly. So that is Mitchell Halverson, one of the players just eliminated. That, that way is the exit, thank you. Goodbye. And sadly, one of the other players who just went out before the redraw is Jonathan Bussiers. However, he will now be able to register for the 5K high roller because, of course, he has won a seat to that as part of his gold power pass package, which gets him into that 5K. And we'll see him and a plus one go to the Las Vegas Grand Prix next week. New Year nines. Maria, are you available to be his plus one? Once I raise the river, you knew I. Would it have felt good if I said the all in after you snapped one a milli? No. <laughs> <laughs> it would have felt really bad. <laughs> That's a scary one. Right? Really, really bad. I was are we going was like, to F1? Yeah. Please don't, don't go do all in. <laughs> don't do it. Chip trays being brought out because we are at the redraw. Right. Okay. Three tables of eight. And that is going to necessitate a short break to give the players their new seating assignments for us to pick a new feature table, get the players' mic, get the information into the graphic system. Our TD, Jordan, giving the players their assignments. Everyone just calls him Cutter. It's his last name. He's not, like, super sad or anything. Yeah, you and I. Yeah. 42-3, okay. And David Coleman, 42-4. Okay. Wow, this kid's just fine. Nick, if I go bet, bet, would you have check raised no, the turn? I, so I don't think so. I, I don't think you would have either. Probably would have been the same amount. And so good. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me? Yep. I can't rule nice it out Nick. for sure. Nice so a very short break while we redraw for seats around the final three tables. Now, guys. We have mentioned, I'm sure you've heard, it's been all over social media. The big game is back. We have brought the big game on tour here to NAPT Las Vegas. We'll talk about that more in a moment. But first, we are going to relive a classic moment from the original big game back in 2010. So enjoy this, and then we'll talk about the new incarnation of this show. Still thinking about making a move here. I raised the pot. I raised to 12,600. The loose cannon. Ooh, pair of cowboys. If there's ever a time to re-raise, this is it. 12.6. Yep. Call. But just a call. We have some cannon action over here. Ernest just called 12,000 cold. Should be sending smoke signals into the sky. Wow, started something. He may be trying to set a trap by just calling, but by not re-raising, Ernest giving Doyle and Tony both better odds to call behind him. Well, you can see Doyle's stack, just 50 grand right now. He's looking at 20% of his stack to call. I know Tony's going to call it, so I might as well too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love these big pots. It's a very loose call from Doyle. Tony calls. Wow, what a sick hand this is. <laughs> Four ways. I'm not even going anyway next spot, so it's like a free roll for me. It's the danger of smooth calling with Kings. Ernest has let three other players into this pot. The flop 9-10-9, trip nines for Hellmuth. Phil has flopped the Hellmuth okay. out of it. Our loose cannon Ernest is in big trouble if he can't get away from this. And honestly, Chris, I don't see how he'll be able to. Tony G has checked on over to Phil Helmuth. That flop looks like you, doesn't it? No, Phil, I look like me. <laughs> Ernest, very confident. 17,000. Phil bets 17,000. If you look like me, why you bet so much? Ernest is actually asking the right question, but isn't looking for an answer. Wow. All I can see are those two kings. Thirty-six thousand. I love you, Ernest. I try to gamble on this king. Doyle folds. I was going to rise. I'm so sick. Tony G's out. <laughs> wow. 
This is almost certainly disaster for our loose cannon. 200,000. What are you going to do if I move in? Are you going to call? Phil, of course I have no choice but to, my brother. <laughs> you got aces or kings or something or what? Man, if I had aces or kings, man, I'd be the man right now, wouldn't I? <laughs> 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 This best. is why this show's so fun. You're the best. Boy, oh boy, I don't think I have a choice here. This is so sick. All right, I guess I'm all in. I call. Kings. I got three nines. You lie, I'd be kidding me. OK, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. What on. were you slow rolling him for? Here, man. Maybe a 10 slow. Oh, I mean, he, he just he was so happy. That was so unreal. That was torture. I didn't mean to slow that's roll. Sick. Hold on. How, how many times do you want to deal it? Oh, hey, thanks for asking me. Three um, times? Yeah, that's Huh? Three times? Yeah, run it three. Three times. Three times. Three times. Yeah, three times. that'll you work. You might win one of those three. Gee, where is mine? Wow, and you straddled and everything. That was perfect. You made it so much before the flop with Ace-9. Our loose cannon has one foot out the door. Yeah. You want to deal it four times? When you asked him you're going to call if I go all in and he said yes, what percentage of you didn't believe that he was giving the straight dope there with that little bit left? Wasn't it like a little a bit left? He had 50 left. Like the worst slow, that's one that of the worst slow rolls I've seen in slow roll. No, that's not. When you know he's gonna call because he says it. You know, Phil Locke, why don't you why don't you just stay out of uh, why don't you stay out of it? Because I'm right because, here. Because I, because, I because you are you've been so far out of line to okay. me, and every time we've played, and I'm just sick of it. So why don't you just you mind your business? Twelve thousand six hundred. But he's right. Nine. It was a pretty sick slow roll. I'm sorry, because I haven't done anything like that in my whole life. Were you folding? I can't get away from this. The whole speech. The guy's already in. He's already got eighty percent of the side. Well, you're the. He had fifty thousand more. Did he have fifty thousand more? You want to? I'll bet he had at least forty thousand more. You want to bet? Thirty-six thousand. I'll bet he had forty more before you count and look. Seventy-four, seventy-four, three hundred. How can he ever have that beat? You want to deal it four times or what? Four times? Yeah. It gives you a better chance hey, to win. Yeah, sure do. Cool. Run him out, baby. All right, four, four times. times. Mm, mm, mm. Four times, need two kings. Wow, that's about Three a 50. Spade, 50. spade, clean jack. Hey, run a jack. Spade, spade. Yeah, run, yeah. A, run a runner. So we'll see the turn in river four times with each pot worth a shade under 50 grand. Run number one, a jack of hearts. Queen, king. yeah, queen, queen king. king. The river, an ace of diamonds, round one goes to Hellmuth. Phil Hellmuth has filled up and made a full house. He's locked up at least 25% of this pot. Run two. The turn, a king. There we go. Yeah. Full house. That's what I'm talking about, you baby. Get me down. If you're in it twice, you Get got money back. Damn. Yeah. Oh, damn, I said four times, though. Damn, yeah. didn't I? Holy yeah. snap. Yeah. I got to stand back up now. I thought it was only twice. Come on. The <laughs> river's a three. 15% dog. <laughs> Ernest has won the second on, pot. So that's cool. I'm feeling good right now. Well, you're still alive. You're still alive. Our loose cannon will stick around. Round three. A spade seven of spades. <laughs> Everybody's rooting for a spade. Everybody you can now hit a king or a spade to win this run. The river. It is a spade. God damn it's spade. God up to one. Hey. That's loose cannon. He's up two to one. Why did you go for four times? You went for. Hey man, I'm just thinking of more house, man. It was almost. <laughs> oh, this is like slow roll. One more time. Hey. One more time. Put a king ball out there. <laughs> Ernest Wiggins has now won half the pot. Like, this is the thing right here. This is it right here, man. This is like the action right here. Right? Helmet loves it. Yeah, I really like it. <laughs> Come on, one more. King, king. The final run. Ernest's odds continue to get worse and worse, but Phil looks sick anyway. A queen on the jack, turn. Jack, there's a jack. You want a jack. That would be sick. King or a jack? One time. There's, there's what? Three jacks. Eight percent right now. The final river card. It's a king. king. Oh, that's <laughs> real. He had three out of four. He had three out of four. That's with the worst. Hey, <laughs> Why is everyone so happy except Phil? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Huh?
one of the best poker hands of all time from the original big game here at the PokerStars North American Poker Tour in Las Vegas. We staged the big game on tour. We brought back the classic format, the much loved show. We staged two tables across the last two days. We can't say too much, Joe, because obviously we don't want there to be spoilers. It's a TV show, it's not a live stream. So people are gonna get to see those episodes at some point in 2024. What we can say is we, as judges, cast two loose cannons who came in via some qualifying tournaments that were held here at Resorts World Las Vegas. We played American Idol on Monday, and along with Nadia Magnus, had a panel where we decided who those two loose cannons were gonna be. Yeah, a lot of fun. But a long day and also uh, tough. It was really difficult, one, to, to make that decision, to have that sort of responsibility, but also to say no to, uh, what, 17 people. Not my favorite thing I've ever had to do. Absolutely. There could be only two, and those two were very worthy loose cannons, Nikki and Lily. Nikki got to play on Wednesday against the likes of Phil Helmuth, Jennifer Tilly. Yesterday, Lily played against you, Maria, and Sam Grafton, and Phil Lark. And that's all we're going to say about it, other than watching from behind the scenes, watching every single hand, Joe, watching both sessions. There's some great stuff there, and these are going to make great shows. I will say one more thing, which is that the big game magic is there. The show really is back. And that was always the thing. In every conversation we had about bringing back the big game, I always had this kind of like, doubt in my mind yeah. that lightning in a bottle it was the perfect time the perfect mix of players those stakes that era that height of the poker boom could it ever be replicated and you're right those tables what we've filmed in the last 48 hours prove it can be it felt like we were the ones that got lucky watching the big game be filmed over the last two days like oh man did we get lucky that yeah that it really did feel just as good seeing that game played as it ever did. So as well as Joe Stapleton and James Hartigan, you have Maria Ho with you on stream as well. Hello, everyone. Uh, Maria, I mentioned you got to play at that second table. I know you discussed it briefly already, but I got the impression that you had a fun day. Oh, I had an absolute blast. It's really hard to not be sitting at the table and just laughing and staying engaged in all of the different conversations that were happening. But to you guys' point, like even as a player, I felt some type of pressure of like, could this game ever be as good as the big game episodes that I watched when I was coming up as a poker player? And, you know, again, you, you just never know how everything's going to play out. But I do also feel like this is actually what I, you guys were hoping for, but also as yeah. a player and for me to experience it firsthand, I was like, this feels like the big game. I felt a ton of pressure and obviously there's gonna be, we haven't even done the commentary yet, but I felt a ton of pressure to recapture that magic. As a player, did you feel pressure yes, to absolutely. perform and to make it as good as it once was? Absolutely, I just didn't know if we could do that because the original was so good, yeah. right? The bar was set so high. Absolutely, so we filmed the big game yesterday and the day before. Today we turn our attention to the NAPT main event. We've played an hour already. We got down from 34 to 24. We've had the first redraw of the day with the players now sat around the final three tables. And that means we have a new lineup on the feature table on the main stage, but we are sticking with Table Shulman, the poker pro, the commentator, Nick Shulman taking center stage with 2.1 million chips, 84 oh, big blinds. We've one. still got David Coleman. Oh, okay. Other players at the table Great. include Ryan Yu and Thomas Great. Patka, who I think is the last remaining qualifier. Yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah. So we nice. are gonna play out what I believe will be the last hand at the 10K, 25K blind level. And then the price of poker is going up to 15K, 30K. 75 minute one. Oh, yeah, and that. the levels yeah. get longer. Next level, 75 minutes. Mine is, Mine is like, either way, like five Is that uh, American time? Thank you. Or I just gotta put We're them using American like clocks this. Oh. this one, right? Yep. We don't have shot clock here. Hmm? None of those metric system clocks. Ugh. <laughs> I was speaking to somebody yesterday about, you know, someone 
I can't remember who, but they work on production. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, it gets so hot here in the summer. It's 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And they're like, what is that in cell? Like, excuse me, what are you saying? In Celsius, you're dead. <laughs> All right, Nick Schulman opening Jack-10. Ping Lu folding the small blind. Oh. G-O. G-O, let me hear you say go. Go. Go, that's go. right. Unite, let me hear you say fight. Fight. You were a cheerleader, weren't w you? W-I-N, let me hear you say win. Win. Okay, we're good. We're good? That was awesome. <laughs> nice pom poms. King eight eight two clubs. My air palms. Were you a mean girl? I wouldn't say I was a mean girl. No. You hesitated. I, I, no, I ever mean, so slightly before it's answering that. Because I want to be honest in the sense that when you're in elementary school or middle school or high school, Everyone's there's peer mean. pressure <laughs> to kind of go along with your group, right? You yeah. never really want to be the person that uh, sticks out. You want to fit in. So you just go with the flow. I didn't initiate, but maybe I didn't defend. You wouldn't, like, throw a girl on the ground, but you would kick her a little. <laughs> Stop. I didn't kick anybody. <laughs> Ace high still good. Shulman C back called by O. Turn card is the six of spades. Not doing much for anybody. O checks. Norman checking behind, four on the river, and ace high is still good. Any chance that Shulman bluffs this river, Maria? Perhaps, you know, Shulman didn't turn any additional equity with the Jack-10, which is why he slowed down. But on this river, you know, if O comes with the check, then Shulman probably feels like he's not gonna be able to win at showdown very often, could be up against some of these high card hands. Check, check. Ace High's going to win it. So this is level 25. Blinds are 15,000, 30,000, with a 30,000 big blind ante. Second redraw of the day will occur when we're down to 16. I know that feels a little bit premature, but bear in mind that we lost 10 players inside the first 60 minutes, Maria. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that that could happen before the next break. That was insane. I mean, it feels like a lot of the short stacks just got absorbed and consolidated. Yes. And sometimes, you know, there's just going to be an ebb and flow where the shorties will double up and hang around. So who knows? Well... Average stack right now is 1.4 million, so just shy of 50 big blinds. I would say just over the last couple of days, I've been keeping an eye on the tournament clock and just seeing, is this playing as a 50 big blind average? No, it's mostly played as like a 30 to 40 big blind average. So actually, for this event, the stacks are quite deep right now. The average stack is quite deep. I mean, the fact we have a player at the table who has three big blinds tells you not everyone is deep stack right now. Right, and no uh, pay jumps for a, a couple of spots, it would seem. So it feels like some of these short stacks have to move, and Paka with the fives doing just that. So Paka, the qualifier, all in over the top of Nick Shulman's open. Shulman folding the fours. Zephyr says, did you bring the widget, James? I did bring the widget. Shall we see what the widget says? Now, bear in mind that I...
got the widget to hedge a little bit because I knew that with a $1,650 buy-in, this might play differently to like a 5K EPT. So there's a spread rather than a hard-to-find number. As we see an elimination from one of the outer tables, looks like the pace of knockouts is not slowing. Sheng Wan Lee out to 24th place. 23 players remaining now. And yeah, we are level 25. I mean, I appreciate it's a bit of a spread, but 22 to 36 is the spread. <laughs> Well, I would say maybe we're going to go with the lower end I think, from yeah. now well, on. Well, we're kind of clearly we'll playing down. closer to a 50 big blind average. So by the end of this level, we could be at 16 players, according 16. to the widget. Well, you know how much I trust the widget. If the widget went off a cliff, so would I. So <laughs> I, I'm going with it, James. Raise here from Ping Lu in the cutoff. Haven't seen lose cards. Jeremy Pekarek in the big blind has 5 3 off. I know you're meant to defend Wipe Maria, but. Ugh. Yeah, no, this is definitely not a mandatory defend against a min open by any means. You can certainly elect to fold, especially if your original opener is a pretty strong player, then you you can stay away but you can also three bet right i mean i guess if it's the bottom of your range and you want to go polar from the blinds why not king lu no <coughs> slouch though somebody who certainly has had a lot of results tough player to play against plays both tournaments and cash and has ace queen so yeah bad timing oh. makes the call in position Pekarek with the betting lead and a pretty junky hand and now playing out of position. 20 bigs behind. And oh. it is a jack five deuce flop. So second pair for Pekarek. He has flop best. Better than a three to one favorite. And he continues into a pot of 355,000. It's a bet of 80K. Yeah, about 25% pot here. And I think who's going to have to continue with two overs and the Broadway possibilities. Also backdoor wheel possible as well. Hello, Ace. That is going to be top pair for Ping Lu. It is giving Pekarak a wheel draw. And what's interesting is the Ace actually does favor the pre-flop three betters range you know let's assume that yeah peck rag is going to go ahead and try to rep it as the pre-flop aggressor I'm certainly giving respect to Pekarek for that pre-flop three betting range he's going to have off of about, you know, 25 or sub 25 big blind stack. But I mean, Ace Queen just so strong here. Hundred ninety thousand apiece, and this pot is big. Neither player has pot behind. Pekarek is the effective stack with three hundred sixty k behind. Looks like he's gonna give up here, and Lou. About 40% SPR behind. Has Pekarek covered just ever so slightly. Oh, 
you had in trouble like that. No, I mean, he doesn't have to be the chip. It's a fault, man. He fought, he fought, yeah. Virtual all in from Lou. That's it. A bit costly there for Pekarek to step out of line. Yeah, leaves himself with 10 bags, but Michaela Skirter yeah, no, still the close. shorty with just two bags. Doesn't. I, yeah, I wasn't pretty sure. Either. Yeah, I know what you're saying. That was an unfortunate turn for me. <laughs> no choice but to blast. No choice but to blast. He's compelled, Maria. Compelled. Compelled by uh, King the poker gods probably. to play 5 3. Unfortunate. Fun card. Flush draw. Twenty three players remaining in this NAPT Las Vegas main event. We've already mentioned, Maria, that there weren't that many NAPT events before the premature pause, shall we say, of mm -hmm. the tour back in 2011. Did you play any NAPTs back in the day? It's funny because I was trying to remember and I feel like I played NAPT Mohegan Sun, actually. Yeah. Um, I just vaguely remember what the room looked like, but it, it was my first and only time that I'd ever gone out there and I specifically went all the way from the West Coast because I wanted to play in an NAPT. Which is, you know, good because now I can say I've at least played one because sure. I wasn't able to play the main here. Because you were playing high stakes cash You're instead right. and You're letting right. people hear your dulcet tones on the live stream. <laughs> 10, 6, 5. Top pair for you. A straight draw for O. Do you remember which Mohegan Sun it was? Was it the first one or the second one? The, was it the one that Vanessa Selves won, or was oh, it the one right. that Vanessa Selves right. won? <laughs> was it the one where Jason Mercier won the high roller, or the one where Jason Mercier won the high roller? <laughs> yeah, you know? I did have a lot of trouble getting those mixed up, so I, I feel like it was the second one, though, if I had to say. 2011. Oh, betting his draw. You with top two. Yeah, electing to take a delayed C bet line here, but I assume that he's going to hear from you with the presence of the straight and flush possibilities. Of course, you think that sometimes if King Queen's going to be in there and some backdoor flushes, some, you know, Ace X of diamonds, then perhaps you want to go ahead and make them pay. And that raise will end the hand. Thank you. Oh, there. Oh. And we have had an elimination from one of the outer tables. That is Girish Rekna. 23rd place finisher, cashing for $9,125. Over that way, sir, to collect your money. <laughs> 22 remaining now, with an hour on the clock until the first break of the day. The first official break. We had that short break for the redraw at 24. I mean, we might have another redraw break before the official break. Who knows? Rapid pace. Did I hear a rumor that we're going to relive NAPT Mohegan Sun 2011 during our next break? Vanessa Selps' second NAPT victory. You'll be able to see that when we go on hiatus in an hour's time. Well, Vanessa and I were friends then, so maybe you could catch me in the background trying to get in her winner's shot or something, and then that'll prove 
that that was the one that I was at. Okay, I can't guarantee it, <laughs> but keep your eye out for Maria Ho on the rail. Maybe she was there. She barely remembers whether she actually went to the event. So I wouldn't take her word for it that she was on the rail. It was so long ago. And to be honest, like I love Vanessa, but I definitely didn't stay to rail her. If I busted early, I was, I was out. <laughs> Aces versus Ace King. Well, fortunately, J.O. decided just to call here. Yeah, respecting, of course, Coleman's under the gun opening range, but also both of them big stacks. Oh, not really looking to play a huge pot pre necessarily in that situation. But now finding a little bit of an opening since Coleman checked to him and decides that he wants to fire with the two overs and the backdoor diamonds working. Bet of 90,000. Three hundred. And it's a check raise from Coleman. Pretty sneaky and something that O certainly did not expect because now it kind of blows him off the ability to see turns and rivers with a pretty decent holding, all things considered. You know, certainly doesn't have a pair yet, but somewhat under repped with that flat call pre flop. And again, so many backdoor pot possibilities and potential that could go unrealized now. It's a pretty big raise. There's a jack out there. There's a diamond out there. You got backdoor potential. And also a little confused maybe by the check raise. Yeah. Just feeling like why doesn't Coleman just go ahead and barrel top of range himself, <coughs> especially with a couple of draws out there. That's a fold. No, it's a call. Oh, sorry, he's just throwing the original bet into the middle. I thought I saw cards going, then I saw chips going. I'm like, what's he doing? What's he doing? He was helping the dealer by putting the, pushing the chips forward. I like people who help dealers. Yeah, he wins uh, points in our good books for that, but he certainly isn't going to win that pot. Buttons here, I think. David Coleman, table chip leader with 73 bigs. Nick Shulman, 63 bigs. Michaela Skirter, two big blinds. Hanging on by a thread. Well, she is going to be forced all in on the hand after this. Hold on a second. That is more than that's, two big blinds. That's more than two bigs. That's a miscount again. Interesting because, you know, granted, this is an event in Vegas. There are going to be a lot of pros about usually, but when we talk about a 1650 buy in, that certainly opens it up for more wrecks to be in the field. So this table draw actually quite tough when you think about the overall makeup of the field and who's potentially left at this stage. Feels like this is fairly pro heavy, a lot of. Yeah. Tough players in the mix here between Coleman, Shulman, Ping Lu, Ryan Yu. So Ping Lu's opened in early position with Ace Jack. Nick Shulman is flattered in the small with Ace Nine of Diamonds. And looks like David Coleman calls as well out of the big blind. Three way to the flop. And it's all clubs for Trey Deuce. Lou with a wheel draw. Jack high flush draw. Two overs to the board. Coleman with the best hand for now, but notice that Lou actually has the best chance of winning the pot outright. Yeah, monotone boards, multi-way, of course, slows things down usually. 
pleased can we have the five of clubs on the river? Not just because it will be the type of pot that everyone loves, but also we will see street flash poker, Maria. Yeah, very exciting. I mean, and I'm ready to sing today. I feel good about, feel good about it. Well, here's a hashtag fun fact. That whole chop pot nonsense didn't exist when the NAPT mm. was last running. Of course, understands there's the potential for some bigger clubs to be out there lurking. You know, he has a middling flush. What a disappointing river, though, for us, James. Coleman with the nine of clubs, Lou with the jack of clubs. Obviously Shulman playing the board. Coleman with Lou to act behind, trying to deliberate, does he have the type of hand with this flush, with him playing the nine of clubs here that he can get some worse hands to call some worse clubs and smaller flushes. So Chris watching on Twitch confirms that everyone who made day two got one of those fantastic NAPT hats. I was in the market for the shark that they were giving out. Did you see the little plush I, uh, shark? I, I know someone who won one. There is, uh, there, is, there is one in my hotel room at the moment. <laughs> so I now have three. Well, one of them is officially not mine, but, but between us, we have three. So you're saying you have one to spare? Maybe. This is a special one, though. This one has a four bit of one helmet. <gasps> No way, that was 30. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Whose butt do I have to kiss for one? I want the Formula One helmet. Chris says, I want a t-shirt too. You've done all right out of this week, Chris. And again, thank you for taking part in the big game on tour qualifier. For taking part in that free roll, for participating in the audition process, Chris got an NAPT main event ticket. By virtue of that, he got a hat. Plus, he got the T-shirt. And I hope, Chris, that you enjoyed the whole experience. I love the fact that Lou was able to find a raise here on the river with the jack of clubs. Just understanding that Coleman sizing makes it more likely that he's going to have one of these middling flushes. You know, probably the nut flush, the ace of clubs or the queen of clubs probably won't go that size on the river. So nice value raise here from Lou. Gets Coleman to think about it. Does end up folding, it looks like. I really don't know. You're probably right. I felt like that, but I don't know. So it looks like we have corrected Michaela Schurter's chip count. I should highlight, she is very short. She has 180k, so that's around six big blinds, and two of them are going in on this next hand because she has to post the big, and she has to post the big blind ante. Yeah, in the overall scheme of things, still short, but you know we we had her at only a third of her actual stack. Yeah, I mean she's still very much in the danger zone. Danger, danger zone. zone! Wow, <laughs> unintentional unison. Who needs states? Is he literally passed out? Yeah, uh, for sure. Three hundred total. Yeah, China. I am really envious of his ability to just literally go to sleep anywhere, on the floor, in a closet, in a chair, on a table surface. For someone who's a bit of a germaphobe, like this disturbs me greatly. Like what if somebody, you know, 
went outside, stepped in some dog poo, and then walked in to the comms area. And it just happened to be right where Stapes' head is. Does that not, I don't that think possibility not bother him? going to make him any dirtier than he already is. <laughs> Saw David Coleman shove on Michaela Skirter there. She did not call it off. On to the next hand, when she will be in the small blind. Ping Lu in the big blind. That's more like it, Jeremy. It's Patka. Thomas Patka. He's picked up Kings here. Opens under the gun plus one to 60,000. Ace Jack of Diamonds for Ping Lu. Maria has literally just sprung out of her seat because she ah! has just been gifted. One so of the cute. special Formula One edition Sharkies. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you. Whoever got it and had Nikki bring it to me. Thank you, did Nikki. You're the best. I have seen Maria Ho. You're the best. Win huge pots. I have seen Maria Ho cash poker tournaments. <laughs> I have never seen Maria Ho so happy. It's so cute. It has a helmet in one hand and Ace King of Spades in the other. Meanwhile. Patka is all in with Kings against Ping Lu's ace jack of diamonds. Oh, Patka, so the cute. qualifier, at risk, <laughs> but <sorry>. ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. There's a hand going on here. It's a pretty big pot. Back to the action. Queen, 10, deuce. Heart's not a factor. However, there is a straight draw for Lou. Aces and Kings working for him. Five outs, five cards that Thomas Patka has to fade on the river. Board pairs, and Patka doubles up. Oh, you don't see any box card in the river. If the king. Oh, black card. Black card doesn't really matter. Red box card could be king, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Red monkey. Favorite. Any, any black card, any black card for any black card. Yeah. Trisball is a very happy individual. I have rolled back the boulder from my cave and discovered a Poker Stars event in the US. This is a wonderful thing and a positive step for the world of poker. That's right, Trisball, the return of the NAPT, the return of the big game, all happening here in Las Vegas this week. So we check on the stacks of the eight players on the main stage. 22 remaining in the main event, including these eight players. Some people lay down kings, ICM, they don't. A lot of the players on social media commenting about just how well this tournament has been run and the fact that they get to play eight-handed is such a treat. I mean, I feel like a lot of tournaments here in the U.S. specifically are still, you know, playing nine-handed and, gosh forbid, ten sometimes. And Yeah, I oh. didn't realize that was such a novelty. I didn't realize that yeah bringing that format here would be such a game changer it's a big deal we're just so used to it right when we do <laughs> right. the events in europe no i think eight is the ideal number in terms of players per table i feel like it really allows for the players to you know feel like they can stay active they have a lot of physical room and space at the table it definitely improves the player experience overall which is obviously something that we're always looking to do. I think the event looks great as mm -hmm. well. 
is walk in and again it has that familiar feel for us as people who go to many PokerStars events but I guess it's a new experience for many people here. Yeah, the, the color scheme of all PokerStars events is a vibe. I'm the one who respect Asian race. Three way to this flop. Fours, ace nine, snowman's, numb, numb. Ace king jack, and it is ping, sorry, Ryan Yu, who has the best hand with top pair. Ping Lu has the worst hand right now with a pair of fours. Getting to see who some of the most active players at this table are. You know, granted, they're getting some holdings that allow for them to be active, but some of the people that I mentioned, these pros that are at the table that are going to battle. Board has paired on the turn after everyone checked the flop. Yeah, use hand certainly a bluff catcher with the run out so far. A lot of hands that he's going to be scared of. You know, queen ten is going to be in there. Some trip kings, like king queens. Check, check, check on the turn. River for free. Yeah, and I think it's safe to assume that trips would have fired especially with the potential for some straight possibilities with the Queen X and the 10X in hand. And so, you know, playing the Jack Kicker on the board perhaps could look for thin value. One hundred thousand bet is going to win. Ryan Yu this pot, and he is now playing around 45 big blinds, 1.35 million. Ryan Yu was actually at my table in EPT Barcelona, I believe inside the money, and he actually took a really brutal beat, I think. Well, looks like we are losing qualifier Thomas Patka. He is being balanced off because we just lost a player from out in the field. David Jackson eliminated in 22nd place, cashing for just over 9K. Takes us down to 21, which means we need three tables of seven. I'm not sure I'll have to so I mentioned at the start of the show, Maria, that we've had the big game. We've got the NAPT all leading into Formula One week here in Vegas. What have you got going on in the next few days? When do you actually leave Vegas? I leave tomorrow afternoon, James. I'm going to Pebble Beach, California for a little road trip for the nice. Grand Toro. So you're doing the Grand Toro. Yep. You'll be back here in Vegas, I guess, on Wednesday of next week? Yes, but I'm meeting you in Bakersfield, Correct. right, for a poker night. That's right. Joe and I are going to be at the PokerStars Oracle Red Bull Racing Poker Night in Bakersfield, part of the Grand Toro on Tuesday night. Then, of course, everyone arrives in Vegas on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday of next week, charity poker tournaments hosted by Poker Stars and Oracle Red Bull Racing every day here at Resorts World Las Vegas. And plus, Joe and I have got some fun stuff to do at the uh, Cobalt Strait Hospitality Suite yeah. as well. Really looking forward to being here for the Formula One Grand Prix. Have you been to a race before? Never. Are you into it? You're into the watches that they wear. I, to be honest with you, I, it's not a sport I've ever taken a serious interest in. But because of our partnership with Red Bull, I did initially force myself. I thought, oh, I better learn more about this. I'm going to watch that Formula One documentary that everyone bangs on about. Three or four episodes in, I was hooked. You were hooked. And I have blown through all five seasons of Drive to Survive. And now, I, like everyone who watches it, I consider myself to be a Formula about One expert. I it off, so oh, a little less. Maybe I, can, hand. maybe I can just... Guys. One thing I've realized, it's all about tires. Yeah. Yeah, pink. No, I want more chips. Because I struggle with, like, the math. But you got it. <laughs> I start lining my chips up so I can just see how many big blinds I have. Pack a wreck all in with that Ace Jack here. That was my biggest here. concern when they took away the phone. 
Yeah, never okay, really no, recovered I can't get on my calculator now. I gotta do that shit. Five three head. hand against Lou. Oh. Well, this is looking good for a Jeremy Pekarek double up. One flop. A lot longer than what I'm using. But Coleman does have outs. And one is missing. And that means Jeremy Pekarek is going to have to fade a king, a jack, or 10 on the river. Wow. It's a king. Okay. And Pekarek is KO'd in 21st place. Running hot. Makes sense, sir. Good day to run hot. Thank you. You're not folding. Thanks. Close, I think. I don't know. Okay, so one last thing about it. I want to bring it back to. And I do realize that perhaps I this flat. could lead to some type of argument flop. between us. Right. Could get in the way of our friendship. Support. Do you have a favorite kind driver of like and why? I can't think about it. Yeah. I do not. Okay. But the one thing I took from after, watching after like Drive Survive is it made me look at Lewis Hamilton in a different way. In a, in a much more good positive way. way. Yes, absolutely. I like, that's what I like to hear. Yeah. That's my favorite driver. Generally speaking, I kind of have a beef with people who relocate to certain places where their tax liability is massively reduced. But he came across very likable. Yes. And, I have a, and, and realizing, I guess, some of the challenges that he personally faced mm -hmm. trying to make it in Formula One. Yeah. And you cannot doubt the success that he's had, that Mercedes have had in the last decade or so. I also felt that way about David Beckham after watching the Beckham I documentary. We are down to 20 now as we see Nick Shulman opening here with Ace King. Queen Jack of Diamonds for G.O. Aaron Paul Kramer says, can the Stappen be stoppened? No. Um, and I think that is one of the only negatives about this race is that the season's all over. Like, right. He, they don't, he doesn't even need to race. <laughs> He's got a lock on it now. Yeah, it's it's interesting because obviously for a while Mercedes had such a long run, um, and then Red Bull came back. You know, the last couple of seasons, and it just hasn't really been close at all. The fact that you've got Verstappen and Perez just at the top of the table by such a high margin, it's just. I mean, that's impressive dominance, but it doesn't make the sport as interesting. It, when it's not competitive, when there's no drama to the final race of the season. Right. Okay. Gut shot now for O. You with a straight draw as well. Shulman still with the best hand. Ace high. Yeah, you electing not to take this spot to lead after it's been checked around on the flop with that gut shot straight equity and a board that might seem to favor him considering his other opponents haven't shown much interest so far. Barry Greenstein makes an appearance. Shulman had the best hand already, but will now be feeling probably a tad more confident. See, this is the point I was making, Maria. Everyone who's watched Drive to Survive thinks they're now an expert in Formula One. For example, Yellow Cathead. F1 is about the car, not the driver. Could it possibly be about both? 
And Sean bets 105,000 on the river and gets folds. Shulman, still a big stack, more than 60 big blinds with still 35 minutes to play at the 15K, 30K blind level. And we are going to the outer tables to see a hand between two EPT regs, Masato Yokosawa and Sergio Aido. We join this hand on the turn. The board is 8-8, eight, eight, queen, six with two diamonds. And we get a bet from Yokosawa of 300,000. And a fold from Aido and Masato Yokosawa among the big stacks now, playing two million. And whenever I think about Masato Yokosawa, I always think about Joe Stapleton. Welcome back, Joe. Thanks a lot for that. Much, much appreciated. Do you know why, Maria? No. Because he ate my lunch at the main event. <laughs> is this a real story? Yeah, the the that big hand I lost with Jax, that was oh. that was against Masato. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, I hate him. <laughs> the good He's news hard is, to hate. Like I, I pretend know. to hate him, but like the good news is, Joe, that may have happened. And during your day one of the World Series, you may have lost multiple hands to Masato Yokosawa. But the good news is there Every was hand. A Japanese vlogger there to record every single one of them. Correct, yeah. No, I'm definitely probably some meme in Japan now. I'm probably called sushi or something. Fatty tuna. Oh. Trip nines for Schulman. Elected to fast play, and Jack A going to quickly get out of the way there. God, he played it terrible, huh? Jeez. Man, there was a time where me and Nick Shulman, like, almost became friends, and I really blew it. What did you do? Nothing. Did, I did just... You, oh, you tried too hard, huh? No, I didn't try hard enough, eager? I think. Were you overeager? I played it too cool. You're not good at playing it cool. Tell me what really happened. I just got busy. I, like, didn't pursue it. Dumb. You idiot. I could be friends with Nick Shulman right now. It's unbelievable. It's stupid. <laughs> Skirta folds. Lou is out. Pocket Kings for you. Seventy K is the raise. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Uh oh. Ooh. Looks like I burned my Coleman cooler joke too quickly. This is shaping up to be a real one. Yeah, especially button versus big blind. Very unfortunate. You effective stack here, just around 40 bigs to start the hand. Hot pink chips going into the pot. Probably gonna find some four bet non all in sizing to try to Induce his opponent. Again, Coleman can have a lot of light three bets here, considering he's up against a button open. So you wants to make sure he can keep his customer right. in. 
faces. All of it. And suited is a snapper. Coleman doesn't seem that disappointed by needing to hit a three outer or some clubs. Well, you weren't here 10 minutes ago when he said, you know, that he's running pretty good today. So I feel like Hello, he's, guys. he's feeling it. He thinks it's going to come. Nobody ever got to the top 20 in a massive field tournament by not running good. 6-5 Trey, one club. He's going for max pain. He wants it to come on the river. <laughs> Can't make a wheel at least. Turn card is a five. Needs to hit the ace. Not the ace, one of three aces. River card. Oh, the fake ace. 1.24. You are going to double up through Coleman. You at two and a half million now. Coleman back down to 1.2, still over 40 bigs. Well, definitely the type of cooler you want to avoid at this stage of the tournament. Mackenzie, would it be possible to ask for a server? Yes. Unfortunately, blockers aren't real. Do you want to go out there and take Nick's drink order? Maybe get on his good side again? If it wasn't 30 minutes later out there, I would think about it, but... It's kind of appropriate. I was I slept on the... Slept on the friendship, and um, Slept on the drink order. You literally slept on the drink <laughs> order? Were you guys talking about me napping on the floor? We did. The germaphobe in me really just wants to like lay down a, a towel or perhaps just a sheet. You can't get germs through your back. Old. <sighs> Shuddering at the thought. Ace 10 off for O. Makes it 65,000. Skirta finally <laughs> finding a spot to get it in. And it ain't looking good. It's a domination situation. Thank you. I don't know. Yeah. Much life. <laughs> Look. Thank you. Back to you. Nineteen percent chance she survives. Ooh, Jack seven five two hearts. Domination rotation. Now around a nineteen percent chance she doesn't survive. Four on the turn is safe for Skirda. Has to fade the ten. Out in the Thank streets, you. they call it Skirda. I've never heard of this reference before. You have. I, I just it is. sang it really bad, which is good. Uh, so unrecognizable, we can't get sued. Double up for Michaela. She's back in it. 17 yeah. bigs. She said, I don't have much life, but she do now. And this ain't the only table in play. Out in the field. Oh, this guy for real. Yokosawa. Facing it all in from Liren Petito, who was just at our feature table before the redraw. You're definitely rooting for Masato to lose his pot, aren't you? 
I, I can't root against him. Well, we saw Petito get pretty out of line at the feature. The man called with 4-3-0 pre against the Rays. Let's see what he's got now. Osato calls. Petito shows King 4 suited. You weren't wrong. Wow, wait, trip fours. Was trip that on the fours. flop? No, he had trip fours already. Masato called with top pair, which was the king queen. River is a five. Y'all can't see this, but Stapes was fist pumping. <laughs> Tito doubled up through Yokosawa's down the 700K now. to say that's a huge pot. Jeez, yeah, pretty big. I don't think I've seen anyone with a pot with a stack bigger than three million. Ninety-five. Eight. Ninety-five. 95,000. I was betting ninety-five thousand with top pair. Raised under the gun with this queen jack. Jen Ruckus says she's going to win the whole thing. Maria? I think we're talking about Michaela, and you know what? I, I'm rooting for Michaela as well. You think she's any worse than a 1 in 20? No. I would put money on Michaela right now at better odds. You don't say. Oh, I've got to take her, huh? Now that we're all squared up, you want to start a tab again? Let me tell you guys something. There is no money sweeter than home money. <laughs> it is the best. I got some home money last night in my pocket. It burned a hole right through your pocket. It didn't even make it out of the... Didn't even make it to my room, unfortunately. <laughs> I knew it was a bad idea. Like, I really need to send the Venmo... You know, when you're not within walking distance of a casino, perhaps. Like, maybe when you're just back in L.A. and you're just at home. Hang out with Raquel. I'll find one. 10-9 suited for Shulman. Flops a fine-looking jack of hearts. He's got a gut shot. Skirta. Flops a fine-looking seven of spades. Also... Has a gut shot. This is where it's all going to start. My girl, she's going to start chipping up. She's going to start chipping up. Uh, she's way behind. Yeah, but she could semi-bluff low. Check, check on the flop. King of diamonds on the turn. A double gutter now for Shulman. And probably a pretty natural card for him to barrel on once Shkurda checks back. Shulman... Does have some range advantage here with the king on the turn. Okay, so it won't be this pot, but maybe the next one. One hundred and five thousand. The bet from Shulman. A time bank. <gasps> Is she gonna raise? Maria? No. Maria? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, she wants to try to crack whatever she believes Shulman has in this spot. Can she do it? Uh-uh. It's Shulman who gets there. Yikes. Now you wonder if she feels like she can bluff catch now with eights and sevens against maybe some ace-queen, ace-ten type holdings. 
Oh, I don't like this for her, but less than pot back. Four Skirta. Showman's putting her effectively to a decision here for well, most the good news of is her she, stack. She can't bluff it off now. One of the good news is if she just calls, too, she's not out. She'll have a chip and a chip. <laughs> Yeah, this is really tough because, you know, Skirta got herself in a little bit of a predicament here, you know, going for the gut shot, but rivering eights and sevens. Again, might feel like it's a good enough bluff catcher against some of the natural semi bluffs that are going to start barreling on that king turn. Why did I have to improve? Certainly a lot of other rivers would have been a much easier decision. Has more time banks left as well. There we go. Into the muck. Nick Schulman up to 2.29 million. 76 big blinds. And a cool cat. Oh, I'm good, thank you. Pellegrino. Did you hear that drink order? Yes. It's, it's sexy. Peppermint drink order. tea and a Pellegrino. I mean, come on. That's my drink order from now on. <laughs> Can I get a peppermint tea and a Pellegrino, please? I mean,. Well, when you say it like that, it just completely ruins it. Can you do your best Nick Shulman impression while ordering that drink? Can I get a peppermint tea and a Pellegrino? <laughs> My first try. Seven. Yeah, it was wasn't a million miles away. We're working on it. Ryan Yu, base 10 suited. Nope, that's Lou, excuse me. Ping Lou. Get out of here. <laughs> can you, can you, you guys can't switch it to this one. It would make a lot more sense. Yeah, because he, he needs to constantly look at anyway. He wants to move the box too. I said no before, but like. Oh, really? Yeah. I am C2. It, it would be, I know, I'm three too. Yeah, because this is designed for the ninth, ninth. Yeah. yeah but you're why. Nick Shulman. Perhaps yeah. an exception can be made. It would make sense. He goes 45. away from me, you know. Saying, like, uh, he can't, I'm sorry. Yeah. He can't do it. That's 45,000. He has to look at his hand. And my yeah, staff like, it's... Saying, Hello? Oh. No, I think I'm the one. I'm sorry, I'm the one. Sorry. My bad, my bad. <laughs> you know what? We need the gap for footage. This one costs a lot of money. You know that, right? Yeah, you got it. I mean, sometimes you don't want yeah. it. Usually, usually we have to race. We obligated. <laughs> yeah, so it's sometimes it's a lot of money. Maybe. It's all good. It's all I good. mean, but you are like, I, I get it. I mean, it's more inconvenient for you. It's like I have to put my car. Yeah. Every time. It's all good. What a flop. Six, six, three, three. Yeah. Coleman under the gun. This hand. Fold, so does Skirta. It's hydrate time, boys and girls. Over to O. Where are you from? Has had a couple okay. tough spots today. Still has 38 bigs, but definitely lost some chips in a couple of those confrontations against Coleman. Oh, cool. Yes. Shulman, I believe, as well. You live here now? Use in. With Ace. I've been here like something. two and a half years. Shulman certainly won't be now? folding Jack Tan. Michigan area? Yeah. You go there? Yeah. You go there? I did, yeah. What year? How old are you? 34. A little too old to know my friend. 34. That's the year of age. Use other card, the nine of hearts. So you're born like uh, 89? Queen, nine, eight, two <laughs> spades. 
One heart, one oh, nine. Vegas. Up and down for Shulman. Oh. Yeah, this okay. is going to um, be interesting, Shulman. Yeah, yeah. straight. Yeah. Okay. So not often, but... New poker with license. Pair, yeah, yeah. Backdoor possibilities. What's oh, wait, license? sorry. Yeah. Excuse oh, me. Oh, <laughs> I want Up and down to the six card straight. Yeah, Shulman's going to want to start putting more chips into yeah, the pot very quickly. Them, wants to try to get as much money in there as possible. Nice. A couple of draws, yeah. of course. A lot of hands that are willing to come along. Some pair and straight draws and two pair combos, flush possibilities. Would you come along? Leaving after this tournament? Oh, with Ace, yeah. Nine of Hearts, yes. No, no, I meant him. Oh. After you win? <laughs> Ryan, you. Not you, you. Yeah, with Ace, Nine of Hearts. Would I come along with his hand? No, would you come along? <laughs> I mean, we'd be yeah. just now. Yeah. Up 2% is pretty darn good. Big old brick on the turn. You know what you was hoping for, wanted to improve to some back doors. But again, I think it's just too quick to start folding potentially with a pretty innocuous turn card. Shulman can certainly double barrel with some of the Jack X, some of the 10 X, some of the flushes, even the hand like seven, six that doesn't really have showdown value. It feels like you have to kind of get yeah, sticky in yeah. this spot yeah. Yeah. when we're talking about all of the semi bluffs Sean uh, could have here. here. Cool. You don't 30? block any spades as oh. you. Yeah. Very fortunate. Ooh. Ooh. Very Committing fun. a whole lot of chips. Well, the hand that can't win and is unlikely to improve. Well, uh, I lived in Italy for 20 years. So Flush draw, no good. Okay, well, play, good news. 7-6 like, gets there, which is, you know, uh, this, part this year, of Shulman's semi-bluff. But again, as I mentioned, you doesn't Hello. block What's any up? spades and doesn't block any Jack X, 10X. So okay. there's a whole lot of other hands that Shulman box. might be inclined to continue firing with yeah. that you has beat. 10K. 10,000 people? I know. Uh, oh, okay, you cash for 10,000. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. 675. Nice. And now, I just like 75. You checks, Shulman bets 675. And there's going to be quite a few hands that are able to go for value on the river. Obviously, straights, but two pairs as well. I think with this run out, you know. Queens and nines and nines and eights are going to be able to go for value. Queen eight, of course. And you blocking some of those two pair combos. Just going to look Shulman up. Indeed. The up gets looked. Hi, Thank you. Thank you. Such a, such a <laughs> Who is kissing Nick Shulman's butt? Other than me. Other than that's you. A, that's, a, that's a money flop. Turn in the river. Doesn't he know that there's only room for one set of lips, and those are Joe Stapleton's? Do you think Nick Shulman ever has to do one, more than one take? Interesting. When he's doing commentary? Ooh. No. Big tipper on stream. Just on the stream. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, dollars, okay. Yesterday, I was very impressed, <laughs> Stapes, at a lot of your one take wonders out there at the big game. Yeah, well, there was a line I had to get out in the beginning of the day that literally never happened. Eventually, my bosses just gave up. They were like, okay, we got it. And I was like, I know you didn't, but you're sick of this. It was terrible. I don't know what happened to me. Skirt it all in. I was on like a four or five year streak, too. Oh, really? Yeah. That good. Skirt it gets through.
Under 10 minutes left on the level. Then we're actually going to have a break. Six raises to 60,000. Ping Lu, King 8 suited. Makes it 60K under the gun. G, O, oh, Ace 10 suited. Do it, do the thing. G, O, oh, let me hear you say go. Mm. Go. Mm, 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 mm. That's right. Mm. You knight, let me hear you say mm. fight. Mm. Fight. You're, mm, mm, mm. You're, you're messing it up. You're off to what? beat. I'm harmonizing. You got to It actually goes, there's a clap that goes, G. Oh. <laughs> we're going to workshop this. We're going to come back. Hopefully, O will still be here when we're back. Or we're going to have it down. Oh, Maria. Three best going to work, and so is the stare down. Get him. Outer table action for your eye holes. Matthew Wantman versus Tomas Patka, the online qualifier. Got a board of queen, six, five, seven, eight. Two clubs. Three clubs. Seth McFarlane reaching for pink chips. That's Wantman betting 135K. I think it's safe to say his opponent isn't going to raise. <laughs> he looked in the blender for a sec. Uh, I think, yeah, Potka called. Wantman shows 89 for a straight. And a straight is good. Wantman up to 1.65. Patka down to 410. Still a lot of tough players left in this tournament. Cream rising to the top here. Voice of Peter Griffin, everyone. You know who works with Seth McFarlane? Who? Jennifer Tilly. Oh, yeah. Duh. Bonnie Swanson. Duh. Ace King suited for Skirda. This is small blind versus button, and Coleman not snap calling it off for the 15 or 16 big blinds. Skirda's been pretty snug on yeah. the short stack. This is definitely a function of just the way that Coleman has been observing Skirda and how she's playing. Just realizing that she is not going to be shoving over an open light. Good lay down by Coleman. You know, it seemed like it was smooth sailing for Coleman for a while and just after that Ace King yeah. versus King's confrontation. Definitely taking the wind out of his sails a little bit, down to 36 bigs. All right, Maria, we're going to play a quick YouTube game. Uh, Don't okay. look at your phone. Okay. It's called Misogyny or Not. <laughs> the YouTube comment starts, please let this woman. Is it going to be a nice comment or a mean comment? I think it's going to be nice. I think they're rooting for her. Please let this woman ladder up to the final table. I love a good small stack story. Cacao. Not misogyny. And not banned. That's right. No, actually, it's been a while. You're banned. It's from P. DeBork. He's king for ping. 90. Seven raises to 90. Do I have to say 90 when they say it? It feels pretty obvious. Yeah, okay. Sure, she's 
Blue going 3x here from the small blind into O's big. And oh. Yeah. It was big. <laughs> Certainly has a hand that you could call with in position C3. It's got that connective properties suited. Why not? Why does it sound like there's like some drum and bass or something coming from this? Gym? It's probably the drum and bass. So they're, um, ooh, ace, eight, nine, two hearts. Whole lot of flop for both of these players. So we're right next door to Circus Circus, and there's some kind of um, carnival in their parking lot. That's where the music's coming from. Are you being serious? Yeah. We're that close to Circus Circus? Yeah, it's literally right out, right behind this wall. Yeah. The parking lot is, at least. We started this hand with about 20 figs, so, you know, no matter what type of pressure he faces, certainly not going to be folding ace-king on this board. You wonder if O's going to want to just call here or if he's going to start getting aggressive just because he feels like he's got to have so much equity. And we can see 52%. Just get the chips in and let the poker gods sort them out. Oh. It's all in. And Lou makes the call. Technically, Lou the player at risk. Flip. He doesn't like it. He knows it's a flip. Slightly behind. Which hand do you like? I'm not sure which I know it's for the. I think you gotta take the drawing hand here, right? It just feels better. I don't know. Like when you miss, you're supposed to miss. Look at Ping's face. Save my brain power. Here we go to the turn. Now oh. it's a favorite. It's an eight of diamonds. Oh, Lou wow. not dead. Down to 5%. I guess it was better than the heart coming. River card. Ooh. It's an ace. Wow. Hello. The old suck resuck. Hello. <laughs> That's one way to win it. That was exciting. That was Lou exciting. hits the ace. Who's announcing? Uh, Ping fills up in lieu of being eliminated. In fact, if you saw Sam Grafton here for the big game, he probably is. Yeah. This is a 5J. He did? He did? He knows who I am. He might have just played the game. He's on live. He knows that you do commentary for Poker Stars. Yes. I told you we were pretty friendly at one point, me and Nick. I offered him help doing, uh, he kind of expressed interest in doing stand-up. Well, it almost feels like you guys are on a first-name basis because all your close friends call you events? states, and he called you states. He, said he states, didn't yeah. call you Joseph or Joe. No, but, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure no. Speaking of people I have a man crush on, when am I gonna get a, when am I gonna get a little peek at muffins? When's Muffin's going to show his tight little That's body not... down here? <laughs> huh? Oh, you're funny. <laughs> funny guy. Tight little bod. Somehow, like, someone with the nickname Muffins and tight little bod doesn't I know. Really seem I, to if anything, together. I should have the name Muffins. 18 players. What? Two more, and then we're going to get another redraw. I think the widget's on track. Cool. The widget's very good. There's no denying it. Any doubts he oh. might have had about the widget? Totally out the window. Your friend and mine, Nick Schulman, raising under the gun with two fives. Lou wants to play from position with six five suited, and you calls with ace ten. No, Ryan, you. It might have been confusing for the people at home who aren't playing poker. King, Jack, Trey, two spades. Just a little gut shot. 
Backdoor spades for you. Ryan, you. Not you, you. I've been doing this to this poor guy for years, by the way. It's just like, if anyone is going to be my friend, it's you. He's over it. I mean, you, you, you. this time. No, Maria. Oh, oh, yeah, you. Yeah. Nine of hearts on the turn. Gives Nick a bigger piece of this pot, although it can't look very good for two fives. Check, check. And Lou can't show down six high in position, but does end up checking. Oh, that's another nine. Huh. Five's good. Unless Lou stabs here, Shulman's going to win this hand at showdown. Be proud about those five, Shulman. Yes. Shulman's going to rake the last pot of the first session of the day here the on day three. Just leave it at the table. I assume we can. John Lee, one last question before we get out of here. It says, why isn't the stream like showing pre-flop mucked but... hands? Why aren't you saying anything intelligent? Because it's never happened before. Harsh. Same answer for both questions. All right, my babies. Players are going on a break. We are doing the same. Feature table chip counts. Nick Schulman leading the pack with 90 big blinds. Michaela Skurda still hanging on. Coming back with just a couple of tables left from the first North American Poker Tour event in over a decade. Live from Las Vegas when we return. Lines of 15 and 30,000 with a 3,000 ante. Under the gun is Joe Tehan. He will fold. Tom Hoagland will pass. Dan Shack doesn't like his hand. Vincent Rubianis will also pass. King Queen here for Steve O'Dwyer. Steve O'Dwyer is a great player and has made a ton of final tables, but hasn't earned his coffee yet. Mm -mm. Coffee is for closers. Mm -mm. He's raised from the cutoff. He's made it 60,000. It's a min raise. It's been folded to Vanessa Selps in the big blind with ace king suited. For almost any player, this is a spot for a three bet. For Vanessa, it's a great spot because she has a reputation for being so loose and aggressive. Well, she has re-raised it to three bet to 215,000. O'Dwyer does have position on Vanessa. Steve's in a terrible spot because there's absolutely no way you can lay this down to Vanessa Selps three bet. Well, he has called, so we will go heads up to the flop. And Steve has unfortunately dominated. And the flop is jack nine six. So Edouard does pick up a gut shot straight draw. Vanessa Selp still leads with ace high. Steve's behind but has the kind of hand he probably can't fold for one bet. Let's see if Vanessa wants to keep that pre-flop betting lead. No, she doesn't. She checks. And Steve O'Dwyer will check behind. Turn card for free. And it's a king. This could prove troublesome for O'Dwyer. This is very, very bad for Steve. The only question is how much is he going to lose? Here comes a delayed continuation bet from Vanessa Selbst. 220,000. Vanessa's got a cheering section here. That's her girlfriend Miranda on the far right. Now, a lot of players might try to get it in here, but as you can see, Steve's only got 800K behind, which isn't a lot compared to the size of the pot. Good players will realize there's not a lot to protect against that isn't beating you already. And he will call. The pot is now 909,000. The river is an inconsequential three of clubs. Vanessa's first to act. No reason for her to not think she has the best hand, so she won't want to give Steve the chance to check behind, which he's quite capable of. Smaller. She says all in, and that would put O'Dwyer all in. Vanessa's law school buddy's looking on. He's tortured. But he's got top pair with a decent kicker. How can I fold this? 
Vanessa has Steve covered. This is a fairly polarizing bet with Ace King probably the very bottom end of Vanessa's value betting range. Why are you so good, Vanessa? This makes these things so hard. Steve's not so bad himself. Elsa's money would have been in there 30 seconds ago. He has laid it down. He has made a class fold. Yeah! And Vanessa's cheering section don't know that she would have welcomed a call there. <laughs> if I'm wrong there, I'm going to look like the biggest idiot of all time. King Queen. That is spooky. You're too good. I'll check King Queen. You're too good at poker. Action has been folded around to Steve O'Dwyer on the button. About how much do you have? 350. Steve's pretty short after that not so pleasant encounter with Vanessa. I'm all in. He shoves from the button. And this is enough to put Aaron Overton all in. Snap call. Snap call. Ah. Yep, it's an all-in battle of the short stacks. So it'll be O'Dwyer versus O'Verton, who looks like some kind of ginger superhero. And why not? He's got Steve dominated. And there are his two trusty sidekicks. Not a good start at this final table for Steve O'Dwyer. He needs to see a seven. Ooh. And he hits it on the flop. Now Steve's got Overton reverse dominated. Diamond first what? You got diamonds. I disagree. Jack, queen. Jack deuce, diamond. deuce of clubs. Jack diamond. Why am I saying this? I always hate when people call out cards on TV broadcasts. I'm like, why are they doing that? And here I am doing it. Because I'm sweating a lot of money. Aaron's not saying anything. He's the one that wants something. And he gets oh, wow. something on the turn. The four of diamonds gives him the flush draw. Well, there's your sweat. Overton can now hit a king or a diamond to double up. If not, he's hitting the rail. A 27% chance of survival. And here comes the river. And it's a diamond for the double up. Nine diamonds. That's my card I was thinking of, baby. Steve's taking it pretty well. He knows he Nine lost, diamonds. right? Red Nine red. diamonds. Get in my suit, Nine diamonds. That's exactly my card in this tournament. Two times all in yesterday with the Nine of Diamonds. Well, why don't you just marry the Nine of Diamonds then? Steve O'Dwyer's day goes from bad to worse. Blinds are up in the main event, 25, 50,000 with a 5K ante. Actions on Rubianis with A6. And he's raising, makes it 110K. Fairly loose raise from under the gun plus one. It's the kind of hand you'd rather just win the blinds and annies. Tyler Kenny, the chip leader, has pocket fours in the cutoff, and he will make the call. Vanessa Selps folds the button. Tihan and Hoagland will give up their blinds, so we go heads up to the flop. Kenny will have position after the flop, and if we see all five cards, these two will be racing. It's a jack-10 deuce flop with two diamonds. Pretty good flop for Rubianas, even though he's actually behind. It's a pretty clear-cut spot for a C-bet. He can maybe win the pot right here or start building one in case he hits. 135,000. That's Tyler's brother Bryn in the middle there. No stranger to final tables himself. This spot is usually a full, but it's reasonable to peel one off here and hope your opponent shuts down. He raises to 310,000. All right, well, this is option C. It's a straight bluff, probably meant to get Rubianis to fold a medium pair or ace king. Now, for Rubianis, this is a spot where a lot of players might just get it in. He's got good equity against Kenny's actual hand, but not so hot if he had top pair or better. He decides just to call and see a turn card. And that turn card is the six of spades, so Rubianis now takes the lead. Though I'm not sure he knows it. He checks to the man who took the initiative on the flop. Now that Rubianis is paired up, I'm not sure another bluff by Kenny will be able to get him off his hand for any amount. 435. Zoinks. Well, even if Rubianis thinks he's behind here, he probably thinks that aces, sixes, and diamonds are all working for him. 435,000 to call. Sure, big bro approves of the huge barrel. Rubianis can't really like this bet, but he's got way too much equity to fold now that he's got a pair to go with the nut flush draw. He makes the call. We go to the river. It's the queen of hearts. So Rubianis doesn't improve, but he does still have the best hand. Both players have got some showdown value, but I don't know how much heat either one of them can take. Rubianis has checked. 
I mentioned Kenny's hand having some value. Tyler says the most important thing Bryn ever taught him is to not overvalue his pairs. That advice could come in handy here. He's counting chips. Fold. And Rubianas lays his hand down before those 900,000 chips are even across the line. Nice river bluff by Tyler Kenny. And that hand a perfect example of why playing out of position stinks. Nice hand. Thank you. So 21-year-old Tyler Kenny adds to his stack, maintains no, no, his no, chip lead, and down. proves that he is a force to be reckoned with at this final table. <laughs> Who let the dogs out? It's the star of the new Air Bud Poker sequel, here to research his role by sweating Vanessa Selbst, who's voluntarily playing pots 30% of the time right now. And even better for her is the fact that she's won two out of every three of those hands. Fewer than four big blinds separate her and chip leader Tyler Kenny. The blind's now at 30 and 60,000 with a 5K ante. Action's been folded to Vanessa. She's got sevens on the button. Vanessa's likely to raise any two on the button, let alone any two that look the same. So min raised to 120,000. Tom Hoagland's folded the small blind. A6 off suit for Dan Shack in the big blind. Dan knows this about Vanessa's game as well, so it's possible he might think he's got the best hand here. And if he thinks that, he's likely to re-raise while out of raise. position. He's announced raise. It's a three bet to 400,000. All right, it's leveling time. Vanessa knows Dan knows this and knows he doesn't really need to have a huge hand to three better. No way. So she four bets enough to put Dan Shack all in. Call. And he calls very quickly. Care. Not a great call by Dan. He's doing pretty poorly against Vanessa's four bet range. A6 would even be in bad shape to most of her bluffs and never ahead of her good hands. Vanessa seems to be outraged by that call. Well, Dan does have 30% equity and a reputation for running pretty good. There's Dan's friend, Nick Binger. I'm really bad at middle pairs against weak aces. Huge leak in Vanessa's game. The flop. It's 4, 8, 10. So far, so good. Safe flop for Vanessa, but Dan can still pair his ace, and he's got a few backdoor draws. He is the player at risk. He needs to hit. And he does hit on the turn. Terrible card for Vanessa. Not only does Dan take the lead, but it kills one of her outs, leaving her with only the seven of clubs. Pretty frustrating to get your opponent to make a bad call like this for all his chips, only to have him run you down. Said I'm really bad against weak aces at middle pairs. One out. Seven of clubs. Cheer up, Vanessa. Maybe it's just that Dan Shack is really good against middle pairs with a weak ace. Let's see the Vanessa should just try to run better. She's looking for the seven of clubs, but it's the nine of diamonds. The Dan Shack will double up and become the new table chip leader with 4.2 million. Vanessa Selbst is now the short stack. Don't you look at me with those sad puppy dog bad beat eyes. Sorry about that. No, you're not. That was fine. No, of course I am. Come on, Vanessa. He seems sorry. It wasn't a great play. But your reputation gets calls like that. You want calls like that. Not with the middle pair against the weak ace. Okay. That's the only time I don't want it. Because <laughs> I never win those. Dan Shacks picked his spots well today. Of the 17 hands he's played, he's only lost one of them. Can't say the same for his Wall Street job. He recently got some notoriety when his hedge fund made a loose call on gold this past year. A6, anyone? Well, that hand has left Vanessa with a 16 big blind stack. She's under the gun here with King Jack. Red paint's probably good enough for a shove. I'm all in. She's made the move. Looks like she just got tired of counting it. Nah, forget it. I'm all in. Hoagland and Shaq have both folded. Great call. Vincent Rubianis will call her from the small blind with pocket eights, and Tyler Kenny will give up the big blind. So, Vanessa Seltz is flipping here for her tournament life. Vincent Rubianis has a slight edge. Vincent's a former competitive chess player who quit when he realized you could make money playing poker. This is the one time right here. You need this. Paint! No paint. Eight ball. So I guess he went from pawnage to pawnage. Well, if his pocket eights hold, Vanessa Seltz's dream of going back to back here at Mohegan Sun is over. Ah, sweat. This is ridiculous. Well, you got that big mop to soak up any sweat. The flop is King Seven Deuce, all hearts. What a flop for Vanessa Seltz. Top pair and a flush draw. She's flopped Rubianis dead to one out. And what happened to Yale's admission standards? Jeez. The three of hearts up there. Don't get greedy now. Well, it's the king of spades, which actually gives Rubianis more outs. That's bad for me. That's bad. That gives him two outs. 
All right, the eight of hearts is now back in the mix since it'll make Vincent a full house, and Vanessa's flush will be down the toilet. Excuse me, James, the Lou. Eight ball deluxe right here. Come on, Vincent. It's not up to Vincent, it's up to the poker gods, and Vincent will need a miracle or Vanessa will double up. That miracle translates to 5% equity. He needs an eight, but it's a four, so Vanessa Sucks gets the double up. Just over two million in chips. And unless he's been hiding some chips in that sweet hairdo, Vincent Rubianis is left with just three big blinds. It's not five million chips, but I'll take it. But I'll take it. Glad she reiterated she'd take it. I thought maybe she was going to give him back. Right now, we are going to sweat with the defending champion. We're only going to see Vanessa Selp's hold cards and play the hand from her perspective. So Vanessa Selp's ride along should be pretty exciting. 140. She's in the small blind of facing a raise from Tyler Kenny. Kenny's on the button, so Vanessa has to assume he's raising a pretty wide range. And with her pocket sixes, she will call the 140,000. If she were deeper, she may have three bet. Let's get Dan in here. We'll get a family pot going. Vanessa's anxious to get some of that money back from Dan. He's getting decent immediate odds of call. And he will make the call from the big blind, so we go three-way to the flop. Family I pot. I like it. Makes me somehow appreciative of my own family. Eight, eight, queen. What a terrible flop for a pair of sixes. Not at all, but it's not great against two opponents. She checks, Dan Shack checks. Remember, Tyler Kenny was the pre-flop aggressor. Get my game face on. No such thing as game face. It's just poker, it's just a card game. Exactly. I could smile. You don't know what I'm gonna have. Like, yeah. It's true. Tyler Kenny giving off the uh, tell. Let's see if he wants to continue. He does. He bets 160,000. Again, Kenny would have to see bet a pretty wide range here. Vanessa oh. makes the call. And Shaq will also call. We still have a family pot heading to the turn. Dan just overcalled, which worries me a little bit for Vanessa's hand. Nine of diamonds, another overcard to Vanessa's sixes. And that nine's really bad because a lot of hands that might have floated the flop with nothing just caught up a bunch. Vanessa's checked, and now Dan Shack is leading out for a quarter of a million. Tyler Kenny with King Seven. Woof. Decides to get out of the way. He smells a rat. Dan leading out now is definitely bad news bears. Great. Vanessa decides to check raise. She's made it 750,000, leaving herself 1.2 million behind. This raise is probably intended on the off chance Dan's got absolutely nothing, but if this doesn't make him fold, I say it's time to throw oh. this hand into the muck. He has called. I think Vanessa finally realizes it's game over, man. The river is the king of spades. The board continues to get worse for Vanessa. Kenny would have rivered top pair. Of course, Shaq could easily have an eight, queen, nine, or king in his hand. I know Dan's an older guy and everything, but he's been acting way too confused during this hand. I ain't buying it, Columbo. Selps just checked to him. I think we're losing this hand. I think you're right. I'm all in. He shoves, puts Vanessa all in, and she quickly gets away from it. And Shaq shows quad eight. What's that? Quads. Quads? Quads is good. Uh, nice yeah, thing. quads is good. Quads. Just trying to get you off a of queen, because I don't learn my lesson. Yeah, no. Maybe could have got him off a of queen. Probably not quads. Him off a of queen. Yeah. Is that like a bad? I don't know. It might be terrible. Welcome back to Las Vegas and the Poker Stars North American Poker Tour. The NAPT has returned after a 12 year hiatus, and we're bringing you live card up coverage of day three of the main event from Resorts World Las Vegas. Back for break, and the same lineup on the main stage. Headlines 
by Nick Shawman, the poker pro, the poker commentator, with an 83 big blind stack. Everyone else relatively short with two very short stacks. J.O. and Michaela Schurter. Blinds going to 20k, 40k with a 40k big blind ante. Is James Hartigan joined by Griffin Benja. Hello, everyone. I asked Maria this question earlier on, Griffin. Did you play an NAPT back in the day? Never, never. So this is your first NAPT? This is it. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. 18 players remaining in the main event, Griff. We started the day with 34. We had the first redraw when we got down to 24. There will be another redraw when we lose two players and get down to 16. And our aim today is to get down to a final table. Being slightly nebulous about the number of players who will be at that final table for tomorrow. Could be nine, could be eight, could be seven, could be six. Ultimately, we don't really want to play more than six levels. So if by the end of the sixth level of the day, we're down to a single table, Jobs of Gooden will come back for Saturday. And that's when they're going to play for the big cash money. Six figure scores for the top three, more than a quarter of a million up top. A reminder, this was a $1,650 buy-in main event. 1,095 total entries, total prize pool of 1.6 million. And of course, we are well into the money yesterday with the bubble bur bursting during day two. And looks like we're ready to get cards in the air once again. Level 26 underway. Small blind, 20,000. Big blind, 40,000. Big blind ante. 40,000. The only non-American on the table, Ryan Yu, with that um, Korean flag, actually from Toronto. I spent a lot of time with him, so also a bit of a Canadian. So I'll be rooting for him. Officially, this is home soil for you, being the North American poker tour. There Not just go. a U.S. tour, mm -hmm. but a Canadian tour as well. And as... We've said a few times today, I appreciate that uh, no information uh, has been revealed is yet. Is there a redraw at 16? But there is or likely to be a, a, a full 2024 the call me. schedule the for the NAPT revealed soon. Have you an ace king? I don't know why, but sometimes right, I do. Good luck, guys. Very, very sometimes. I'm very tilted. I didn't get the stack. I can check behind and then I can have a, like queen diamond on the turn. You're back to a full Yeah. Such an important stage of the tournament with two tables, three tables. You're in that period where you're starting to get towards the big money, but if you so finish here, like it almost doesn't feel idea. worth it. So you really want to get to that final where the big, so big money plays. Yeah. A little under one point. So Coleman has opened under the gun with ace three of hearts. Ping Lu with ace jack of diamonds calls from the cutoff. King 10 on the button for O. Yeah, definitely the kind of hand you want to throw in the muck for 15 bigs facing early position action and a flat. And with the blinds folding, we are going heads up to the flop. Uh, a little over what you had, One, like 1 1.2 or something to start. That flop is queen, nine, eight, all spades. Yeah, nobody really hitting here, but going to be very difficult for Coleman to <clears throat> try to win this hand, given the, you know, kind of range that Lou is going to have flatting at the cutoff here. Mr. X136 asking on the Twitch, is it possible to watch the game in person? Absolutely. It's an open event here at Resorts World Las Vegas. You'll find us on the second floor. And obviously the main event now closed now that it's down to the final 18 players, this being the penultimate day of this four-day event. But there are side events got the NAPT Cup playing today. The two starting flights yesterday, two more starting flights today. That continues tomorrow. Lots of 
fun events over the weekend. And we were saying earlier on, Griffin, that next week, Formula One week in Vegas, <coughs> we've teamed up with Oracle Red Bull Racing to run charity tournaments. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of next week, $200 at 2 p.m. in the main resorts world card room. James, I know how busy you've been out here, but are you going to try to fi find yourself into the, s the sphere while you're out here? I would like to see the Sphere. We had a few uh, colleagues who got to see you 2 perform at the Sphere, which I'm told was an absolutely stunning show. Yeah, I was able to catch Darren Aronofsky's postcards from Earth. Staggering. Really, really special. Powers asking, is the goal pass winner still in the tournament? No, sadly, Jonathan Bussiez was eliminated earlier on today. However, remember, that gold pass that he won gets him into the 5K high roller, which starts today. So he's gone to reg that. And he'll be staying in Vegas next week to go to the Formula One, which he also gets as part of that 20K package. Very crafty shove here for 12 big lines from Shkirta under the, under the gun here. This is a really, um, really intelligent. It's kind of like the worst hand you can really shove in this spot. It might, you might, you can, might even be one... You know, not good enough, but recognizing those blinds are going to hit, you know, deciding to go for it. I, I really love that. I mean, there's 18 players left. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're playing for a pretty big prize pool. to shove it in with King-9 with five players to play. Not an easy thing to do. But she found the shove. Power says, I came sixth in that goal pass tournament, played against him at the final table, so I'm rooting for him. Yep. Yeah. All 30 of those Gold Pass Vegas Edition winners playing the 5K High Roller today because it's day one of that tournament. We will be streaming the final table on Sunday. Tomorrow will be the final table of the main event. Eighty-five. Raised to eighty-five thousand. And we have got raise to eighty-five thousand from you in the cutoff. Nick Shulman considering his options with King Six of Diamonds on the button. Shulman has 17 million in live earnings, has had three seven-figure results in his career, is a WPT champion, has four World Series of Poker bracelets, four WPT bracelets. Yeah, really nice three bet there from Shulman. One of those things where you're going to end up folding out so many hands that dominate you in that spot. You can't really continue with your King Tens, even King Jack. King Queen's going to have a tough time figuring out how to play it there. So Shulman recognizing the spot, not surprised to see him take a really nice aggressive action there and extend the table chip lead. Shulman with close to three and a half million chips. Only a few minutes into the 20K, 40K blind level with 18 players remaining. Nice little walk there for the, with the 10 3 offsuit. That's always nice. You know, you have two big blinds in there between your big and the ante, and you just get a walk with 10 3. It's the dream. Living the dream. Joss, watching on YouTube, asks, did any Belgians make the money or make remarkable runs? 
I'm not going to lie to you, Joss. I'm not sure any Belgians played this tournament. Lex Veldhaus is here. I know he's Dutch, but he commutes to Belgium to play poker. So you can kind of semi-have him as a Belgian. I'll allow it. Lou versus O, blind v blind, and O deciding whether to raise after Lou limped with the 5-4. Time bank card. This guy's kind of a vibe with his hair, eh? It's a great Into vibe. It. <clears throat> Loving it. Octavian MD says, hello from Romania. Hello back. Praise. Good to have you watching. You this is a really nice spot here from O. Um, yeah. you know, you're only playing 14 big blinds. Um, it does, it, you know, when you see a limp like this, if you think it's weak, you, you don't really want to shove and be, be wrong and you know, get snapped off by it, you know, a trapped pocket jacks or something. You're sitting there with queen six. But recognizing that a lot of the limping range at this 14 big blind stack depth is going to be balanced between traps and then a lot of hands that um, a small blind is prepared to just limp, limp fold. And there's way more limp folds, right? So when you have a nice little blocker like that queen six, but a hand that doesn't have a lot of playability and you don't have a lot of room with your chip, chip stack, I really like that little raise there. And uh, that's a nice takedown. So that was a smart little pot for Mo. Tech Tech asking, is there already an air date for the new big game with Lex? There is not. Hopefully during the first half of 2024, you'll get to see the big game on tour, which we filmed here at NAPT Las Vegas over the last couple of days. And yes, Lex was at one of the tables. Oh my God, remember that big hand? Uh... Griffin. <laughs> 80. Lou raising the button with king queen, O with king nine in the small blind. This could be trouble for O, just because, you know, it's. I think it's made a little clear to us that he's he's someone that's prepared to push some edges, and if he thinks that Lou is raising a huge percentage of, of the button, king nine might want to play as a shove sometimes over this open. That's going to have a lot of raised folds, but rightfully makes a good fold. And now Ryan Yu on the 25 big blinds, surely deciding between yeah. shoving or inducing, All probably right. going to expect to see the shove, lower the variance. And five. Yeah, this is the, the play with ICM considerations. Um, count, please. You, you pause the clock on the count? Yes, the shot clock is paused while the dealer verifies the size of the all-in. Yeah, I, th I think this decision here for Lou is mostly ceremonial. I don't think he's going to call 25 big blinds when it represents, you know, most of his stack. But it's almost like he wants to have a bit of a funeral for this really strong, you know, button hand that he got, a hand that he would have been prepared, I'm sure, to call O's shove and now has to deal with Ryan's. And also you get, you know, to find out exactly how much Ryan has. But I think we'll see the fold in a second here, and there it is. Ryan Yu playing just shy of 1.2 million, around 30 big blinds. Average stack right now, 1.8 million. So just shy of 50 big blinds. Still 18 players remaining. Redraw when we get to 16. And Nick Shulman is a player we caught up with during the break. Asked him how he felt about the NAPT returning to Las Vegas. Cool, it has a, it has a really nice 
vibe to it. I, I feel like a lot of us have memories of playing these before. And what's it been? Ten years or so? You know, that's a that's exciting. Just to have a new tour, throwing events. There's so much stuff to play nowadays, and uh, yeah, it's nice. This has been really fun. I, I, I've had a lot of fun all week, and uh, I mean, obviously, getting down there in the main is extra fun. But uh, yeah, it's been cool. Nick in a strong position right now with more than 80 bigs and quite the stranglehold over the rest of the table, Griffin. Second biggest stack is Ping Lu, has got 30 bigs. Yeah, what a great voice too. You should do commentary. He's everyone's favorite. Everyone guaranteed at least 10 and a half K now with 18 remaining. As we see, David Coleman open under the gun with Ace Jack, but Ping Lu has Ace King in the cutoff. Re-raises. Yeah, and this is a huge spot for Coleman because he happens to have sort of what I imagine to be the best hand he would be prepared to fold in a situation like this. But, you know, we don't know what the dynamics are. We only know what we've, you know, seen over the course of the day. You know, if this was ace-queen, maybe Coleman would, would, would go with it. Ace-jack, you can probably make a tight fold. But if you think your opponent... Is just going to look down at sourdough suited or king queen off and do this. You know, sometimes you want to protect against that by being prepared to four bet shove at the stack depth. We're only six handed, but really uh, disciplined fold from Coleman there. All three tables playing six handed right now. Actually, one hit the eight on the tongue. I almost shake your hand. Kai says, hi, James and Griffin. I, almost, I love I almost, that NAPT I hat. Up. I know. I almost, almost shake your hand. You sat right there. No no reaction. I mean, I was. Yeah. I love the hat. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm it's a good hat. Like, hot on the tongue. And you're a hat guy, so Griffin. You should get one of those hats. I'm wearing a hat right now, actually. He's still out. Eight is pretty Yeah, funny. but I almost, almost shake his hand. Yeah. Good thing I didn't. Good thing I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. At least it wasn't a hard part. <laughs> I would have got up. So. <laughs> Oh, baby doll. That's a nice hand. Skirts are opening under the gun. Guys, I'm going to do it. I'm going to bite. Smoker G watching on YouTube. I'm going to ask the question, why? I need more information. I need to know. Yeah. Um, how you have ace king? I know your range is like ace. Showman could get into some trouble here. He can certainly afford, you know, getting in for the 12 big blinds. If he thinks she has some raised folds, like, a, you know, your ace tens or um, your king queens, it, it plays nice here to just get it all in here. But it's, 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 you know, you're up against a very strong range that is under the gun, you know, limp. I also wouldn't be surprised to see a very disciplined fold. From Nick Shulman, but Call. you know when it oh that's cool, nice, okay, yeah, a little flat. You can get behind that. If you can't choose between shoving and folding, I think calls actually kind of interesting. Okay. Not the best flop in the world for a pair of aces, but at least Skirta has the ace of diamonds. Yeah, the kind of board that Shulman is just hoping Skirta has something like an ace queen, black ace queen, and checks back and sort of gets the showdown, but that is not the case here. And I'm sure Shulman will be able to just let this go. Let's see what sizing Skirta goes with here. Yeah. Committing bet from Michaela Schurter, which gets a fold from Nick Shulman. Frederick says NAPT is ending today, right? Wrong. Main event concludes tomorrow, so they'll play down to the final table today and then play Thanks. down to a winner <laughs> tomorrow. But the NAPT concludes on Sunday when we'll stream the final table of the 5K High Roller.
87, raised to 80,000. Snowman's. Nom nom. And Ping Lu opening here, raising to 80,000. Round to the blinds, David Coleman in the small, queen eight. And now Michaela Schurter in the big. She folds as well, 10 3 off. Okay, so Smoker G was the person watching on YouTube, Griffin, who insinuated that they would never play for real money on Stars, which is fair. Everyone's entitled to make that decision. But I had to ask the question why bot players on real money tables? Not a thing. Well, if there are a thing, they are detected pretty quickly and they are shut down. PokerStars has a full-time game integrity team who specialize or at least a certain subsection of that game integrity team specializes in detecting not just bots, but also people who are using bots, using real-time assistance. Great results so far here for Ryan Yu, raising this at the cutoff. You know, it's a bit tough with the chip leader on your left. We already saw how Shulman was prepared to take advantage of, you know, being in that position but this time gets it through the big blind. And Lou with a very strong ace jack, but not quite strong enough to want to get all the chips in for 27 big blinds. But Joss, you are mistaken. PokerStars has never been involved in the organizational sponsorship of the World Series of Poker. Thank you, the boss. Whether you're talking to me, Griffin, or any of my colleagues, we appreciate it. Lou wisely continues with the ace jack high here. Oh, ace jack high, still the best hand. Lou now an 86% favorite. Yeah, it's one of those tricky spots for Ryan Yu with just this queen high here. You kind of find yourself with the bottom of your range against a hand that obviously can improve on that five, you know, all those six sevens. And also, can you even fold out an ace high? So, you does decide to give up, which I think is the right thing to do. Cascap, I'm going to answer your question with a plug. James, is AI a threat to the future of online poker? I'm going to direct you to, not a particularly recent, I think it was last year, last summer, we released an episode of the Poker in the Years podcast where we spoke to Francis Lincoln, who heads up the PokerStars game integrity team, and we asked him that very question. Can you keep up with technology? Is AI eventually going to kill the game? He had a very good answer to that. So check out the Poker in the Ears podcast. Check out the episode from last summer with Francis Lincoln, how PokerStars polices the tables and makes sure the game is played fair and square. And check out more recent episodes, some entertaining interviews, including a preview of everything going on here in Vegas. <coughs> We are about to head out into the field, Griffin. We've referenced a couple of times that Nick Shulman is the biggest stack at the feature table, but he is not the biggest stack in the tournament. He is not the current chip leader. This guy is Anthony Dianatti. Anthony says he is in real estate, but today... He's a professional poker player. 4.3 size, 6.9 million. I did it. I did the math. Seven, four, eight, four. 
We've got him on around 5.5 million right now. Yeah, I didn't actually count. <laughs> that is a lot of cheddar. We are playing, of course, 20,000, 40,000, which would give him close to 140-ish big blinds. That'll play. That'll play. Eduardo says, say hi for Brazil. Can you say hi for Brazil, for Eduardo? Hi for Brazil. Thank you, Griffin. A shove from Michaela Schurter. With pocket fives from the cutoff. Yeah, perfect stack size. Good hand candidate for this shove. 16 big order. lines at the cutoff. <laughs> so, doing everything right so far this level is Schurter. Adam asks, will there be a change of the main table later? Yes. Thank you for your question. No, I'm not going to do that to you. Uh, when we get to 16, there's going to be a redraw. So we will change yeah, the lineup on the main stage by virtue <laughs> of a change in the lineup in the tournament. You get more than me now. No. A little bit more. 7.35. And just to correct you, ex Moroccan, there is a difference between choosing to exit a country and not being allowed in a country. Again, Ruckers is in San Diego. Can you say hi to San Diego? Hi, San Diego. Go yourself, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> I was fully <laughs> expecting that to be a response. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was raised from the bottom with 10-9. Shulman in the big blind with ace-9. Yeah, I think this is oh. a... Pushing it a little too far from O, getting a bit too tricky on the short, short stack size. You're raising into a very st strong small blind player in Ryan Yu and the table chip leader who's played some of the biggest games um, out there. Uh, it, frankly, just not a good raise, I think, with the 10-9 there. I think that you just got to let that go. To answer Galaxy Frog, yes, we are broadcasting from Resorts World Las Vegas where the NAPT is taking place. And to answer Feet Guy 420 no, this is not five-card stud. This is no limit. Texas hold them. Six folds. I bet he'd like it if it was five-toe stud. Feet man. <laughs> oh, Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we managed to get through a solid 30 minutes at this level without <laughs> any of your attempts. <laughs> Where are my feet men at? <laughs> I know there's more of you out there. You're all lurking. <laughs> Coleman definitely holding something he wants to see a flop with here. Playing these 17, 18 big blinds. The suited Kevin. Versus Lou, an ace six five board. King high still ahead. And I think this hand is going to be a good example of of how the dynamics change based on position. The fact that Lou is opening, um, you know, in earlyish position. 
going to be more difficult for Coleman to, to make this king high f call on the flop. The fact that it's only 60,000, though, um, you know, one and a half big blinds. Coleman does have a bunch of different backdoor options. I would really love to see appeal here. I know it represents 10% of his stack. He just has king high. Going to be a lot of guessing games, but I, I yeah. think your hand's a bit too strong. Yeah, playing it as a raise is, is fun, too. Let's do that. You know, if you do get some floats by either actual aces or maybe some bluff <laughs> floats, there's going to be some turn cards that you're going to be able to to shove your 400 remaining 435,000 into that 460. If you you know we see a three of hearts or a um, hand uh, cards like that. Nice hand. Griffin, maybe you can answer this question from MJR Sig on Twitch. Are you commentating from Vegas or are you streaming? I think the answer Sorry. to that question is yes. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to move my arms. Oh, oh! I feel James. I'm feeling James right now. He's beside me. We're doing both. Coleman, the good walk candidate, but might find it a complete and hope that big blind just checks. Nah, it's too much. It's too three Dewey. Three Dewey, Kaplui. <laughs> since we had an elimination. We've played 30 minutes into this level and still at 18. Emilio Gonzalez asked, what is happening in the Circus Circus parking lot that was making the noise from earlier? Emilio, that noise started yesterday and it's continued today. It's some kind of party. Some kind of outdoor event. What a bunch of nets. A lot of walking. Lot of walking. How is Circus Circus still standing? I mean, because, because the show must go on. Hotels in Vegas just don't go the distance. They blow them up. They refurbish. <laughs> they start again. That has been there, like, what, since the late 60s? I heard they're, they're, they're uh, like, refurbishing or, or renovating the, the Rio. I didn't know that. Probably need to paint a, paint a coat, coat of paint. says circus circus is terrifying i think this is going to play as a pretty easy clean shove for lou here that's right the great gonzo as featured in the james bond movie diamonds are forever 1971. Ooh, and oh here great opportunity i think this is 
one of the worst hands you need to be prepared to call all in for 10 big blinds, recognizing your opponent is going to be shoving all the worst kings, the queen jacks and queen nines. Yeah, sometimes you're up against an ace five and you lose, but sometimes you're up against an ace five and you win. This king eight is too strong to fold, in my opinion, for 10 big blinds against a very capable player blind on blind, but can O pull the trigger? Easier said than done. And lets it go. Very Folds tough. Up. Just to be clear, this is not being played at Circus Circus. This is being played at Resorts World Las Vegas, which happens to be next to Circus Circus. Therefore, we are exposed to the drum and bass coming from the car park next door where they're staging some kind of outdoor party slash festival slash celebration. Yes, and to be clear, we will be ha having the feature, the, the uh, final table um, from Circus Circus. <laughs> As usual, Griffin is writing <laughs> checks that he can't cash. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all. It was just the, the, you know, the long con just to get the, the final table there. Folded to David Coleman. Has pocket sevens. No Mitch. Crockford's is part of Resorts World. Made it 80,000. King Queen mm. for J.O., who's now playing eight bigs. And you really don't mind having this hand once it's folded to the cutoff or button. And wow, very interestingly, O is going to call just playing. Oh. Okay. This is also very tricky here for Ryan. Yeah, Ace Jack in the big. Playing 20 bigs. Looks think, like yeah. just a call, Griffin. Yeah, it's, it's just safer. It's just the lower, lower variance route. You know, Coleman has to be relatively strong, raising an early position. This O flat from the small blind, you know, maybe Ryan doesn't think that this is a... Ooh. Always coming say? seven. That's what they say. Always coming seven. A set for Coleman. to see a bet from Coleman into two opponents here. Really hoping that someone has a nine or some spades and a tricky, tricky check back. I love this from Coleman. It's just one of those spots where Coleman is just so aware that this doesn't hit O's range. You have two sevens in your hand, so it makes it less likely that you know, Ryan Yu is on base. Yeah. You need to have a specifically a nine or specifically a flush draw. So giving an opportunity for someone to catch up, not being afraid of bad turn cards. You know, now any flush does beat you, but, you know, if somehow O has two spades in his hand, the money's going in anyway, so. Well, they have caught up, Griff, because obviously we see you pair his ace, and also O has picked up the nut flush draw. And it's a perfect, yeah, it's a perfect card to, to show why that, check is so crafty you know you have now created such a, a beautiful opportunity to make chips i think a lot of people watching at home would have always bet that flop there and gotten two folds now we see an opportunity where he could potentially get all of o's chips and at least one street bet from ryan Yu. 110 
That's 110,000. Delayed continuation bet of 110,000. We can see that Ryan Yu is actually drawing dead with top pair here. O oh, does have that flush draw, 19% equity. Good fold, folder. yeah. Just have so, so few chips to work with. You're just expecting your opponent to have an ace a lot of the time there. Ryan, too high up in his range, so under wrapped with this ace jack. Pre flop, on the flop, now on the turn, and a complete brick on the river. Will Ryan be able to get away from a large bet? Coleman going to be pretty confident that you is split between, you know, something like what he has, a decent sized ace, maybe something like 9x with the spade. You yeah. Know, something like queen nine with the queen of spades or king nine with the king of spades would have overcalled in the big here. And then, of course, called the turn. So if I'm up against that range, what do I want to bet? Probably something polarizing, probably something pretty big. And that looks to be about close to 300,000. It is 300,000. Yeah. 300K into 500K. And it's, what, about half of these remaining chips? It looks from the, the way he's moving his chips like he kind of wants to give it, throw them in there, but I mean, he's a really talented player, Ryan. I, I, I also, yeah, it's too bad. Makes the call, gets shown the set. Big pot for David Coleman, 1.1 million in the middle. And that's going to give David Coleman a stack of 1.5 million, just shy of 40 big blinds. Ryan Yu now playing fewer than 10 big blinds. Well, we have lost a player from one of the outer tables. There are two tables out in the field right now. We are going from 18 to 17 because we have just lost Zhang Jin Wu, cashing out for $10,495 in 18th place. Juddy96 has a question for Griffin. Mm. Is this your first time at Resorts World, and how does it compare to other Vegas venues? So, yeah, it is my first time. I think it, it only take was sort of time, erected guys. in the last few years, right? Even it last year. It in 2021. And um, it's, you know, I mean, I, I love shiny new toys. Home. And this is a shiny new beautiful casino, um, in incredible restaurants. I've been very, very happy to be to be here than uh, many other places that I've spent um, in Vegas over the you know, 10, 15 years that I've been coming here. Maybe longer. How long have I been coming to Vegas? 15 years sounds about right. And all the players seem to be pretty pretty thrilled with it as well talk to a few that really really are happy with this this venue you did good resorts world you did good <coughs> folded to O on the button with eight <laughs> seven of hearts yeah, you don't have a, a great deal of fold equity with the six big blinds here, but you do have a bit. And this hand really plays yeah, pay pretty well, especially against the calling range when all the cards are on their back by the river. So I would love to see O try to, to shove and get this one through. I think that's a bit tight. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? Let's see, it would have folded out Ryan's 10 deuce. And would it have folded out Bon, um, pardon me, Shulman's 9-8 suited? <laughs> Maybe not. That would have been funny. <coughs> Eight high shoves, nine high calls. <laughs> no, I'm talking. Devin Neiman says, my favorite place that I ever stayed in Vegas was the Westgate off the strip. Extremely nice rooms for the price. Interestingly, the Westgate also featured in the James Bond movie, Diamonds Are Forever. It was one of two hotels that doubled for the White House 
where Blofeld was living in the penthouse. Skirta was the short stack at the beginning of this level, but she's done a great job to, to chip up almost double what she started the level with, whereas Ryan Yu and G.O. slipped below 10 big blinds. So we're going to expect to see some eliminations coming up. And ace six isn't a hand you want to be making too much of a habit of coming in for a raise, but six-handed, you know, when these players are completely handcuffed and so short, I like it. Great Gonzo says, but did you know if there was a pool down there? Another Diamonds Are Forever reference, but that was at the Tropicana. Interestingly, so Diamonds Are Forever, 1971, right? Three of the hotels featured in that movie are still standing. That's oh, really? weird. What were the three hotels? Tropicana, which uh -huh. where Bond stays when he first arrives in Vegas. Uh -huh. Westgate, which doubled for the White House, which is the fictional hotel, which was the villain's lair. Uh, and Circus Circus, where a key scene in the movie plays out. Do they make the the orange juice there? Or is it mostly just a hotel, Tropicana? Jesus Christ. It's just a question. Gets the race through. Good job, Lou. Yeah, Sam Sam says the Tropicana is not long for this world if rumors are to be believed. I mean, as I said, it's unusual for Vegas hotels to last multiple decades. Of course, the site we're on was home to which iconic Vegas hotel, Griffin? Which was the subject Before. of the movie Casino, starring Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci. Oh, really? Yeah. That's what it, okay. So which, which hotel? I don't know. Stardust. Nice. I rewatched Casino recently, and um, I realized that uh, I think it's a better movie than Goodfellas. That's a hot take, Griffin. It's a very Ranger. hot take, but uh, yeah, Casino's something, something, something else. It's interesting when Great I first rewatch. when I first saw Casino, I was a little bit unimpressed because yeah. I just felt it was like a, not a rerun of Goodfellas, but too similar. But I don't disagree with you with the. With time, I think they're both great movies now. I've, I've, but I really appreciate Casino now yeah, more than I used to. It's funny how that you know time is like that with with movies, with films. It's, it's so interesting. Ryan Yu is going to get it in here. A three will be folded from Shkurta, and yeah. it being just eight big blinds, Lou is going to give Ryan Yu some action. Surely, I think he is just getting a count, but. Eight big blinds, you can't be raising pairs and then even considering folding them. That's kind of built into the what this is, right? Don't bother raising it if you can't call off the eight big blinds. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe just a bit of posturing. Just want a little little camera time. Little suspense for the friends and family at home. So, classic race underway at the feature table. Ace Jack against threes. And it is Ryan Hughes, Ace Jack at risk here. Good luck to you guys. And eight one deuce one. with two spades. Looking good for one. you. 13 outs now. 
still behind right now, but a statistical favorite. Yeah, and actually, preflop was a rare favorite as the overcards. And now increased that lead a little bit, but now is going to be a Ooh. big underdog. Oh, brutal card. So many cards would have even given Ryan you a straight draw, like a king, queen, seven or nine. But the four of clubs was one of the last cards he wanted to see. Oof. Wow, brick, brick, threes hold. And we see Ryan Yu eliminated from the NAPT Las Vegas main event in 17th place. That is going to take us to 16 players, and that is going to necessitate another redraw. Yu cashes for $12,070. All right, so survive. Wasn't surprised to see Ryan Yu deep in an event like this. A really skilled tournament player. And play unfortunately, or? just couldn't find a fold We're with redraw, that right? Redraw, right? Yeah. ace jack top pair and then lost the, the flip to get back into contention. So the final 16 players will draw for seats around the final two tables. That means a new lineup on the main stage when we come back. Should be a relatively short break. Should take about 10 minutes to conduct this redraw, get the new feature table selected, and get the players mic'd up and on the main stage. So earlier this week, I think it was on Sunday, PokerStars held a Women in Poker panel here at Resorts World Las Vegas to discuss how to get more women in the game. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from that session. Today we are talking about women in poker, impact and inclusion. I'm just so happy to see so many people coming together. Beginners, legends, honestly a room full of inspiration. I have been playing poker for about 50 years. When I started, I was the only woman playing a lot of times. There might be one or two others, but that was it. What we know about women who aren't in this game yet is that there's a knowledge gap, there's a confidence gap, and there's a bankroll gap. We need to just start to get, at scale, women feeling comfortable playing the game. So they can strategize, they can allocate capital, they can get comfortable taking risks through the practicing of playing poker. You're never failing, you're never getting your bluff called. It might be because you're not bluffing enough, but you're not getting in there and asking for the raise or the opportunity. And I think poker certainly taught me that. I feel like poker has helped me become a better actor, become a better entrepreneur. It's given me such a better attitude about taking big risks for big rewards. It sort of helped me confidently navigate my life. I have just seen the transformation that playing poker gave me, which is what I want for my friends as well and other women to experience. Judy, who I actually met at her very first live poker tournament and some of the mechanics she was struggling with and I noticed that the men at the table were trying to take advantage of her and it was like really irritating me. So on the bathroom break, I pulled her aside and told her and she was like, oh, light bulb moment. And then of course she took all her chips and she ended up cashing in her very first poker tournament. <laughs> I get excited when I sit at a table and I see somebody taking charge and check raising. It's exciting to see what's happening in the poker world as far as women goes. These legends, the Hall of Famers that came out today, to meet them in person, that was wonderful. We are doing everything we can, but I'm, I'm putting it back on all of you because that is the only way we scale the game. That's the only way we get more women to take that first step and start to learn and then start to play. The three still remain in pursuit of that trophy and the $450,000 first prize. Blinds up to 40 and 80,000. The ante stays at 5,000. Ace king on the button for Tyler Kenny. 200. And he's raising. He makes it 200,000. Ace five in the small blind for Vanessa. Small one. And she shoves. Dan Shack has eight deuce hill muck. Call. Tyler Kenny makes the call. Vanessa Selbst at risk and way behind. 
Looks like Vanessa's kicking herself a bit, but again, Kenny was raising the button, so an ace is going to be ahead of a lot of his range. Kenny's got Vanessa way covered. The Kenny clan. The ladies await the dealing of the flop turn and river. <laughs> Tyler Kenny doesn't have to worry about a smile giving anything away now. He's a three to one favorite to send Vanessa back to class. But the flop has a five on it, and Vanessa Selps takes the lead. Vanessa's gotten very lucky here. She has Kenny reverse dominated. He's now the four to one dog. That smile nowhere to be found now. Vanessa Selps now set for a double up. Unless there's a king on the turn or river. No. Six of spades doesn't change the situation. I do not have a spade. Obviously automatic there. Kenny needs a king to eliminate Vanessa Selps. She's a 93% favorite to get the double up and remain in contention for that second NAPT title. Cricket, cricket. Three cards to fade. It's the three of clubs. She gets that double up. Sign's kind of ironic. Vanessa was a three to one dog. And there's her mascot who actually has a painting of people playing poker at his house. Hey, Sam. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah. What am I going to do? Tyler yeah, Kenny's taking it well. Blech. Well, and there's the appropriate response. Sure, the entire internet will love that one. Go crazy on I'm the luckiest player alive. <laughs> Luck always a factor in poker, but she's continuously making good decisions. There is the trophy that one of the remaining three players will get to lift at the end of this evening. Will Vanessa Selps get to lift it for the second time in two years? If she wins a second one of those trophies, she's definitely going to have to invest in a bigger mantle. She's folded the button with 10-5 off suit. Dan Shack in the small blind has ace-queen. 200. And he will raise it up, makes it 200,000. A7 for Tyler Kenny in the big blind. Kenny's in a similar spot as Vanessa a few hands ago, and Ace is too good of a hand to let go, and he really doesn't have enough behind to just call. I'm all in. Call. He does shove, and a snap call from Dan Shack. Dan's got Kenny covered. Kenny now the one who needs to hit a three-outer to stay alive. If he doesn't, this match will go to heads up. I predict a 73% chance of a heads up match after this, James. I got spades and clubs. Seven. <laughs> Say it like you want it. <laughs> Tyler Kenny wants it. Well, instead he gets a very unfriendly flop. Eight, nine, mm. jack, all hearts. He's now drawing to only two outs. Just don't put a heart out there and, and just kill me completely. He needs the seven of spades or the seven of diamonds. They'll make the sing. Turn. He's going to be singing for a seven. It's the ten of clubs on the turn, and now he's drawing to a chop. He got what he asked for, at least. It wasn't a heart. That is brutal again. He's going to need to hit a non-heart queen for that job. Vanessa Selps on the verge of going heads up against Dan Shack. Tyler Kenny Whee! is on the verge of getting noogies from his big brother, Bryn. The river is a heart. Shack improves to a flush and eliminates Tyler Kenny in third place. Congratulations. Starts at this final table as chip leader. And now he walks away with $170,000. Dan Shack's going to need a break to get all those chips yeah. stacked up. He'll go into the heads-up battle with 8.7 million. Vanessa Selps with a stack of 3 million. Good game, what can you do? Yeah. Good run, good play. Yeah. Whatever. So here we go. They're playing for the title, the trophy, and $450,000. <laughs> well, Vanessa Selps has been here before. Literally, she played heads up in this tournament exactly a year ago. Dan's got the chip lead and did recently beat Phil Ivey heads up. You played a lot of heads up before? What? Have you played a lot of heads up before? A decent amount. Like in heads up tournaments? Well, have I Or not? just like in like tournaments? Well, online, I mean, like, live, I've, you know, I don't play heads up tournaments. Oh, online. like like online you're saying? I mean, the World sessions. Series I play. Vanessa's trying to figure out how mad she should be if she loses. As we pick up heads up play, actions on Vanessa. 160. Eight nine of spades, she min raises to 160,000. Queen six offsuit for Dan Shack. Dan's got paint and he's priced in, but there's no shame in folding a hand like this heads up out of position. And he decides to defend. These two are about a coin flip, but Vanessa will have position after the flop. And that flop is Jack nine four with two clubs. So second pair for Vanessa Selbst. Not much for Dan Shack. He checks it. 
Here comes the continuation bet. 155,000. Vanessa's already betting for value. This is a pretty clear fold. Dan's reaching for chips. It's not such a bad spot for a bluff raise, but if he's calling, that would be just awful. He decides to raise, makes it 355,000. This is where rep comes into play so much. Dan knows Vanessa's going to see bet a lot of flops, so he's hoping she missed and he can take it down right here. She calls and they go to the turn. There's a million in the middle. This board's pretty wet, so a check raise doesn't look all that strong. It's the nine of diamonds. Trips now for Vanessa and a lock on the hand. Hopefully for Dan's sake, he's gonna shut down his bluff attempt after the flop call because there's no way Vanessa's folding now. He fires again, 500,000. Some players would raise in this spot. She just calls, hoping to extract more value on the river. That's right, she knows that if she raises, she could scare off all his bluffs. It's the four of diamonds on the river. Vanessa now with a full house. And Dan Shack is going to bluff at this double-paired board for 800,000. Not a great read by Dan. Now this would be a spot for a raise, even though we know Dan can't call. Calling. A croaky shove. Oh, no, stolen. And that's got Dan's attention. Don't worry, guys. Vanessa's got it locked up. Vanessa's chances of getting called here are just about slim and none. And after a little bit of posturing, Dan Shack will Dan fall. <laughs> Imagine how excited everyone would be if Dan called. Well, now they're almost level in chips. You have the four or the nine. You pulled a jack, Dan? What? You pulled a jack? I have to guess you have the nine. Good guess. Just a few streets late. 200. Can't promise you'll be rewarded with kings on the button, but... <laughs> well, she's raised, a min raised to 200,000. I think it's 600. And here comes a three bet from Dan Shack. King, queen of clubs, pretty strong heads up. Dan's not the type to three bet super light, so Vanessa may feel like she can four bet for pure value. And that's what she does. It's now 1.3 million, an additional 700,000 for Shack to call. A call? And he does call. Dan was getting almost three to one. Selbs has Shack dominated. Don't worry, Dan, there are three more queens in the deck. So he's going to have to play a full bet pot out of position and completely crushed. And there is a king on the flop. Wow, Case King on the flop. Amazing flop for Vanessa, though there's a chance the ace could kill her action. Dan checks. Vanessa would typically continue her aggression here, especially since it's fairly likely Dan could have an ace. She does continue for 800,000. Dan in a bad spot. Call he he on. shoves on Vanessa call. and she snap calls him. Vanessa shows Vanessa's the 98% favorite to win this hand and double Dan through Dan Shack and take the commanding oh, ship race. Nice hand. Thanks. Wow, Case King comes up. That was nice. Dan needs two perfect cards, a jack and a 10. Not exactly in that order, or he will be the short stack. Well, there's the jack, jack on the, the turn. This would, be a, this would be a real bad one. I'll say Shaq's equity just went up 450%, and he's still less than 10% to win the hand. And I'm no math wizard. Let's see the river, Merrill. It's got to be a 10. But it's another Jack. Jack. King's full for Vanessa. <laughs> and she now has a 3-1 chip lead over Dan Shaq. Permission to cheer for Vanessa? I'll allow it. Yes. A very real chance for her to repeat here as champion and become the first player ever to win two NAPT titles. Vanessa beat Mike Beasley heads up in this very tournament last year, so right now she's got the power of the Moes. Mojo, momentum, not to mention Mohegan Sun. Jack seven suited for Dan Shack. Call. And he's limping. It's probably a raising hand heads up. Vanessa has king seven suited. Vanessa could raise a suited king like this, but she's out of position. So she will check and see a free flop. Again, Vanessa has Dan dominated. And that flop is king 7-3, second pair for Shaq, but top two for Selbst. Vanessa has him in jail again. And look at this. After she checks to him, he reaches for chips. He's betting 200,000. Dan got into trouble last time by committing a lot of his chips with second pair. Looks like he's doing it again now. She check raises, 625,000. 
I'm all in. Shaq moves all in. Cool. And Vanessa Selps calls. Dan's got 1% equity in this pot, and that's the appropriate face. Well, I'm drawing dead. Not quite. You can hit running jacks. <laughs> Vanessa Selps is on the verge of winning this tournament for the second year running and becoming the first player ever to win two NAPT titles. You're drawing dead? You're good. Don't jinx things. I'm drawing the runner runner. You're good. Jack Jack. Yeah. Vanessa, you're the one who should be smiling. It's not over till it's over. I mean, he's got Jack Jack. It would be pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> it would be really bad. <laughs> now he's drawing dead, and now Vanessa Selps can celebrate. Get Dan Shack, he's gonna walk with 254k. Repeat! Vanessa's friends calling for her to come back and win it a third time. Thank you. You deserved it. You played really well. Thank you. If there was somehow any doubt that Vanessa Selps was one of the best in the game, she has eradicated that doubt and certainly proven it now. <laughs>
we would play down to six. That would be the objective. And I would <coughs> clarify that if we get to six players, we'll stop. Other than that, we'll just play to the end of level 29, which will be six levels for the day. And that will give us a reasonable finish time. And we don't really mind whether we come back with nine, eight, seven, six, as long as it's a single table, as long as it's the final table. The Great Gonzo says, I am a Golden Knights fan by proxy because they are owned by the same guy as my soccer team. Quite a tight fold there from our table chip leader with the ace-jack offsuit facing the raise from Nick Shulman, who's going to be raising much worse than this ace-king suited. Yeah. But now Shkurta is the one who's going to step in it a little bit here. I don't blame her for this shove, though, knowing how wide Shulman's going to be prepared to open, going to have a lot of raised folds. And this is the kind of hand that can, can get lucky when you do run into it. I like that it's suited. So Shkurta is dominated here, running ace-10 into ace-king. And is going to need a little bit of luck to survive. <clears throat> Just the one spade on the flop. So two immediate outs, the two tens in the deck. And all things considered, pretty decent flop with the one spade and the paired board. Some chop opportunities. That's not good, though. That has her drawing dead on the turn, and we are going to lose Michaela Schurter in 16th place. Down to 15 in the NAPT Las Vegas main time. event. Impressive performance, like James mentioned. Two for two now in live tournaments. I think she might be on to something. 16th place for a little over $12,000. I took my chips back earlier, and it ran out of chop. I did it back. I gave you all the luck you did. Table of eight, table of seven. And Shulman now playing 4.1 million, more than 100 bigs. In the Century, Century Club. Over 100 big blinds with just two tables left and a big MTT that pays over a quarter million dollars. That's where you want to be. You probably also want to be Nick Shulman. So as we established, Michaela Schurter with two tournament caches and the two live tournaments she's played. The first was a $500 Ocean's 11 Memorial Day tournament. She was second for $9,700. So even though this was not as good a finish in the sense that she came 16th rather than second, it was a bigger score. It was a five-figure score. So congratulations to Michaela on her best cash yet. Got to keep up that record, though. Got to play MTT number three and go three for three. <coughs> By the way, she's played two tournaments, had two caches, and she's going to be higher up on the all-time under list than me. You checked? I did, yeah. Well... Massey had Shulman dominated pre and is way ahead now. Nine to one favorite. Pairing his ace. I think this turn can be played as a mix here between betting and checking. He does go for the more passive route. You would hate to get check raised here on the turn by, you know, a jack or some semi bluffs. You know, like your queen nines or your diamond draws. So that's why Massey elects to check tw check twice here. But definitely going to be going for a little river value. I don't think he'll find a customer in the king high of check Nick check. Shulman. Wow. And uh, another check back. 
I'm, I'm a little surprised by that, but I think maybe Massey respecting the capabilities of yeah. Nick Shulman that, you know, had he thrown out a, 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 a you know, 30, 40% value bet there, that Shulman would be capable of just, you know, 6x raising it and really putting him in the coffin. So I understand where Aaron's coming from, but, um, you know, hard to make top two pair. Undersea Monkey asked, will the NAPT be going back to Mohegan Sun so Vanessa can rock up for the three-peat? Wouldn't that be awesome? I keep saying it, no details yet <coughs> on NAPT stops for 2024. We haven't even announced the 2024 schedule for the European Poker Tour yet. I imagine those details will come in the next few weeks. Massey with Ace-King, raising to 85,000. <clears throat> Little cutoff race here with the Ace-King for Massey. Try to build on that momentum from that pot one from Shulman. And so far, so good against the ace four of the United. It would be nice if it was just an ace high flop. Action, action. We want action. Very small bet here on the flop from Massey. Just over one big blind, but surely with a brick turn designs to up the price. It's quite an interesting card because certainly some flush draws are going to be in Dionati's range. Could also decide to check raise this card, but because of all the other ace axes, the seven axes with a you know a big diamond, you're gonna wanna really charge your opponent here. Yeah, I think this is a bit um, a bit too cautious from Aaron Massey. I mean you, you you have a very strong hand with two pair and you would have gotten a very big bet in and a call from Dianati. But at the same time, you know, there's a a lot of ways to play a poker hand, and ultimately Massey deciding that he would prefer to just get river value than the turn value. What's the expression? There's a lot of ways to skin a monkey. No, it's a cat, yeah, right? It's a cat, yeah. It's a cat, sorry. Yeah, and now a min bet on the river. You know, I, I, I need to see a raise here from Aaron Massey. What's the monkey expression, then? I don't know. Slowy, catchy monkey, is that an expression? No? Mm. Quite interestingly. Softly, softly, catchy monkey. That was the expression I was thinking about, which is basically if you're kind of like slow playing a hand. So I don't know if D Dianati's even thinking about it, but... He could also just turn this ace into a bluff with the ace of diamonds. <laughs> you know, just make it 800,000. Um, because, you know, Massey shouldn't have a lot of flushes checking back the turn. But, uh, yeah, Di Dianati's going to say, you know what, take my 40,000, that's fine. And I think that's probably the right move. For the avoidance of doubt, I don't want to see any animals get skinned. Cats or monkeys. Just expressions. Turns of phrase. Yeah, I think we need to use softly, softly, catchy monkey a lot more. We need to get with that back into poker commentary. Was it ever here in the first place? <laughs> yeah, it was frequently used when someone would be, you know, kind of trying to squeeze every little bit of value out their opponent okay. by, by cold calling, trap checking. Oh, 
Oh, Nick's got that look. Nick's got that. Do I want to slow you down here? Nah, not with King 10. Up to Ryan Lang in the big blind. Not a great hand, the Queen 7. Probably one of the best hands he's prepared to fold there. You know, the Queen 9, you'd call Queen 8, maybe call sometimes. Queen 7, you know what? Okay. I'm out of here. So to be clear, we have had two redraws today. Started the day at 34, played down to 24, redrew to three tables. Played down to 16, redraw at two tables. The final redraw of this tournament will take place when we get to one table. Nine players. That will happen tonight. My own business at the table. <clears throat> Aaron thinking about it again on a nice little heater here about three or four hands in a row King three of clubs for Nick Shulman in the cutoff Nick Shulman's never seen a suited king he didn't love ex-Moroccan says why no familiar faces um you're not familiar with Nick Shulman. If you're not familiar with him as a poker commentator, you've missed some great poker content. If you're not familiar with him as a player, 17 million in live earnings, four World Series of Poker bracelets, four World Poker Tour bracelets, won 2.1 million Ryan, like, in a WPT event back in 2005, has three, three? seven-figure results on his resume. These are some very surprising hands to be seen defending uh, in this hand. Ryan Lang, I think, maybe a bit too ambitious with the 9-6 suited from the small blind. Oh, and while we're talking about familiar faces, appreciate that he's not as big in the rest of the world as he is in Japan, but trust me, Masato Yokosawa, big deal. I actually quite like seeing this lead from Ryan Lang. I think it telegraphs to me that even though this is quite a loose peel from the small blind, that he has gears that are going to make a call like this a little more profitable than I think the average person. You know, being prepared to lead a board like this, turn more equity with spades, etc. But, of course, running right into the king three of clubs of Shulman. But, uh, you know, there are ways of Lang winning this this pot if the turn's, you know, an eight, eight or a spade. Oh, but that's not the card. Just a, just a flush on the turn. Just a flush. I guess now I know how he managed to have all those seven-figure scores. Wow, and he's looking at his chips. Lang, no! no he's, he's Surely he's giving up. Surely he's giving up. Oh, my God, James. He's not giving up, and don't call me Shirley. Big boy bet. 450,000. I mean, nice try, question mark? Yeah, I mean, this will really freeze up Shulman if he had, you know, what if he had pocket eights? You know, would be playing the sand the same way, probably folding the turn. So again, a good opportunity, Griffin, to wheel out another commentary cliche that was prevalent when the NAPT was last around. He's got his hand caught in the cookie jar. That is a good one. One point one. Have some of that, mate. And a snap fold from Lang. And Nick Shulman chips up even further. Closing in on Dianati, by the way. Shulman with four point eight million now. Dianati still chip leader with 5.1 million. And it's 3 million to a stack since the start of play. Tequila. House Amigos. I don't like tequila. You don't like tequila? Do I, ha I have to have it. I don't want to no, like I want, to, I want you to enjoy it. Maybe I'll have a little whiskey <coughs> or vodka. All right. 
I referenced Masato Yokosawa a short time ago. Masato has $1.5 million in live earnings. Really? Made a deep no, run in this year's World Series of Poker main event. Really? Made it to 45th That's place, which was worth $188,000. Diogo says, guys, enjoy the rest of the live stream. See you for the final table. Good evening, everyone. Much love from Portugal. Thank you for being with us, Diogo. I appreciate that. Many of our regular viewers are used to us broadcasting at a different time of day. Obviously, being in Vegas, we're in the Pacific time zone. And for people watching in Europe, we know it's tough to stick with this stream once it gets to midnight slash 1 a.m. Depends how you drink it, you know. Like I, like well, we used to drink. I started with Crown Royal. Cardmaster asking, are there any qualifiers left, James? Yes. Now Thomas Patka is not at the feature table right now, but he is still in the tournament. Oh, oh, Patka's out. God damn it! I missed that one. Sorry. The answer to your question is no. Apologies for the slow roll. Yeah. Like now you can't. You can't do that. So no dinner break, huh? Um, I'm assuming. Right? I hate to break it to you guys, but there is a dinner break at the end of the next level. Is there a dinner break? I don't think so. No. I mean, if they didn't have one yesterday, they're not going to have one today when we go down to eight. I'm playing the final. It's like the, or it's the ultimate torture. Yeah, it is. Like not letting us eat when we're playing for like I don't, think that, I don't never eat the poker table, so. Yeah, but it's like. Someone tell these guys they're getting a dinner break. Hard to eat in 20 minutes. You don't have to eat in 20 minutes. There is a dinner break. They can't hear you. I've also tried this before. Chris Tapp says, greetings from Latvia where it's 2.49 in the morning. Wow, that is commitment. Donald Parker, a.k.a. Tonka. No longer in the tournament, busted towards the end of day two. Oh, what do you want? We have an ace, king, deuce flop here, laying out flop by Shulman. Chips for Nick Shulman, and the gap between him and Anthony Dianati is marginal. Oh, yeah, it's closing. I like it shaking. Might be out. Yeah. Wicked618 says, Hey, think about us Americans. We are. That's why we're giving you a dinner break. here with a decision with the king queen definitely putting chips in the middle but i think is trying to decide between whether he wants to play that as a call or a shove certainly going to get some raises that are going to fold against an all-in i said call i said call like an ace nine i don't think he's going to be prepared to call a big blind shove for yeah. 15 big blinds so perhaps it would have worked but taking the lower variance route 
And you also keep in the weaker kings and weaker queens that uh, Dianetti can have. And sometimes you're going to yep. cool her a little bit like this as Dianetti flops a nine. Yeah, Palampati with top pair. Dianetti with second pair. And Dianetti bets enough to put Palampati all in. He snap calls with the best hand. How much is it? How far along? Palampati, the at risk player, but ahead. Just has to fade aces and nines. Great spot for a double up. Absolutely. Four to one favorite here. Time to decide Sandeep Palampati's fate. One card to come. As long as it isn't an ace or a nine, he gets the double up. There it is. Jack on the river. And that is going to be a double up. Yeah. Why is it just a dinner break? We need to eat, man. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> you don't think so? No food. I just ate. <laughs> oh, the, yeah, you did. There you go. I saw that. It looked good. I wanted to ask for one. Must be nice yeah. to have a, an assistant, you know? <laughs> yeah. We're not all lucky like you. No, I went to the food court. It's called Rich. Yeah. During the <laughs> I don't think it's lucky. Uh, right? <laughs> this guy has a personal assistant. Can't just bank an assistant on the road. <laughs> they have table food giving. Court downstairs. Yokosawa, good, right? hard yeah, time. Yeah, Lot of good stuff. I like it. Here. Translator <laughs> saying he's his assistant. He's his videographer, not his translator. Uh, there you go. When are we going to get a translator for Griffin? <laughs> Welcome back. English to English. <laughs> Uh, could have action here. Ace Jack against nines. Tom says, James, did the jet lag hit you hard at all? Yes, it did, Tom, on the second night midway through a Katy Perry concert. You went to Katy Perry? The jet, the jet lag hit him halfway through the uh, Katy Perry concert. I missed the Katy Perry concert the last time I was here. I got to see this one. How come no one invites me to the Katy, uh, Katy Perry concert? You right weren't now? even here. It was her last one, too, ever. Actually? Yeah. No way. Yeah. And you went, too? No. Oh. Do you have anything? I'm a man. I should highlight the concert started an hour late because we had to wait for Harry and Meghan to arrive. Griffin okay. loves the Royals. Than My he, sister met them. He's a royal file. I told you that, right? Your sister Lynn Benger? No, Tess Benger. She's Tess. A, well, you're you're kind of one of Her Majesty's subjects, right? You're kind of fifty percent. Yeah. And then I guess the other fifty percent is part of the Commonwealth. And I'm also friends with Mike Tyndall, his royalty. Oh, there's from, a lot of connections from Shark Cage. Yeah. You're welcome, Poker Stars. Yeah. Blinds are up. This is level 27, the last level before the dinner break that the players are very, very keen to discuss. 25K, 50K with a 50K big blind ante. I still have Tyndall's number. Should we call him on air? See what he's up to? I wouldn't. <laughs> My gay. <laughs> the guy could crush her skull <laughs> yeah. with one of his hands. Ooh. Mikey Tins, what's up? Never miss Massey. This is the kind of stuff you don't get unless you're in North America. Yeah. Aaron Massey. I feel like if there's a tournament happening in the U.S., 
it, it, it doesn't waitress, please? it doesn't go off unless Massey's in it. You know, Thank you. right? <laughs> they wait for him to get there. Like he's he has to throw out the first pitch. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Ash says, Nick yeah. Shulman treats people like shit. Walks around Vegas acting like a big shot. <laughs> At least one of those two things are true. Yeah, but he is a big shot. No, I know. Yeah. I don't, I, I mean, I have no, I'm just wondering where that statement would come from. Yeah. You just like saw Nick Shulman one day and decided you don't like him because he's handsome and tall. He's very tall. Smooth. Yeah. This person might be quite short. Really cool. Right yeah. Confident. Sweet smelling breath. Kind to animals. Yeah. Good Sm at math. Smells exactly how you think you would smell. You know? Witty. Yeah. Yeah. Has a purposeful gait. All right. Call Mike Zindel. Ooh, what's happening? Looks like G O has been K O'd. Write that one down for the oh, Write that, geez. Write, write that one down for the TV show. Down to fourteen. Saturday the fourteenth. Do you remember that? There was like a horror comedy. It was like a parody of Friday the 13th called Saturday the 14th in the 80s. Nice. It was terrible. I'm glad you haven't seen it. What do you want? No, I'm good. Thank you. Pocket nines for back ahead. Nine, nine. Nine, nine. King Jack suited for Shulman. Oh, yeah. Look how he sits there. Look how great. He thinks he is when he sits there. It's just, you know, it pisses me off. <laughs> that looks like two queens. Oh, no. Mm. That looks like you're wasting my goddamn time. Masato. Masato Yoko Sunrun is what I like to call him. <laughs> Fair fight. Pocket nines against the King Jack. One diamond. diamond. No overlap in the suits. Could be a board. Shulman could take one off if sees a continuation bet from the aggressor, but really depend on sizing. Looks to be about 75k. I think we could see a float with this combo from Nick Shulman. It's tough okay. to wrestle a pot away from Shulman. Yeah, and it's just like, look, you hit her jack or king. You're probably good from his perspective of thinking, you know. And then of course the back row diamonds. Sammy. Having to having a peek at this queen on the turn. Check. Checks it. Shulman can get a free card. Very curious to see if he takes that free card or not. The queen really does interact with a lot of Shulman's flop floats. You know, you're, you see as King Jack suited, that means that he's going to have the king queen suited, the king queen off, queen jack suited, um, queen ten suited, I think, is going to float for that small bet. So that's why Shulman does come out firing. Wants to fold out some better hands that can't really handle a lot of pressure, something like a big ace high that might just decide to let him win it. But of course, pocket nines are a bit too high up in his range to let go here. Ooh, baby. Who doesn't like drilling a full house? Yeah, and with just a little over pot behind, does Shulman decide to pull oh, the trigger? Oh, oh, oh. It's going to be a bit tough because the kind of hands that your opponent has here. Is going to be. Stay without your phone. Things like pocket nines. 
Pocket tens. Griffin. I know you're very excited about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. And you know what the Ghostbusters say. If, the light, in and oh, if the light is green, uh -oh. the trap is clean. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Shulman. You know... An apparition the about Shulman, to be sucked the into Shulman the trap. just didn't walk around like such a freaking big oh. shot. You'll oh. be able to check back here. <laughs> so you get for being so cocky, Nick. Good move. Strutting around town. <laughs> Bit unlucky, frankly, for that nine to come on the river because I think that bet would have worked against pocket nines on a lot of other rivers, so a spot, a spot of bad luck. <laughs> Can we just focus on the positive and say it was a nice check there? Bye back ahead. Hello. No, because he check called the turn, so he's never going to lead the river. Can I get a sugar for so you? So it's just, it's just wow. what you do. Wow. Sorry, I, I know you don't like it when I undermine I'll take one you. No, and no, I, no, I'm not, no. Saying, I'm not saying wow that you, what you're saying to me. I'm saying you're insulting him. I don't mind being wrong. I just think you're being rude to Sammy. I mean, if you did mind being wrong, you would have a tough day-to-day <laughs> -to -day life. <laughs> yeah, and then you get the rest of the order. Nah, man, if I say something that's incorrect, yeah. please, by all means, that's I'm your job. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. It's okay. Supposedly, you have to, I assume you, you have something to no, do no, yeah. around here. I wouldn't hold it against you. Uh, I would. Got to raise to 110,000. <clears throat> Aaron Massey, Queen Jack suited. Can you, um, can I get a Corona with a lime? Can you put in a cup for me? Shulman. Yeah, Looking interested. Like uh oh, bigger spades. Luckily, they're blocking each other, so flush would never come. Another ace out, another spade out. Folded. Where do you think the expression "call a spade a spade" actually comes from? Do you know? Like, why why a spade, in particular? Well, spades a shovel, a little shovel. Maybe that's it. That's where it, that's where so this spade comes from. It's a no, little, I know, it's but the shovel. expression of just like "call a spade," like why a spade? Why why not like, you know, call a giraffe a giraffe? Like, why did spade win the? the I don't know. Maybe somebody saw clubs. You know, the dictionary lottery of being like. Used in a cool way. Maybe a guy was trying to bluff being on when a, he showed a poker being, hand and um, said he had playing cards and being like in the freaking the gambling world. Like, Spade, Spade's made it out pretty good in this life. You know what I mean? <laughs> you asked me a question. Keeping I the, tried to answer it. Yeah, okay. for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. You just go on with the, the, with the Spade thing. The yeah. rest of the question. If you're just trying to tee yourself up, no, 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 please. For a bit. <laughs> no, you let's... don't have to start it with a hypothetical question. No, you're right. You're right. Please, please continue. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to now. Okay. You ruined it. <laughs> Keeps animal population down when animals get spayed. Spaying, right, sure. Oh, it's spay. It's not spayed? Oh, spayed is past tense. Okay. I understand. It's spelled differently. Boy. I feel like this has been a really important conversation. I feel like all the schooling you had on the various sets of the commercials and television shows you're on wasn't the best. <laughs> it feels like it was mostly coloring books, probably. <laughs> Did you go to one of those free schools? I loved coloring books. <laughs> you went to one of those schools so where they, if you could just like play kickball if you wanted, right? It's funny you bring up the, the uh, coloring books because one of my there lines that I use sometimes, mm -hmm. that's one of your favorites, is a reference to that. When I say, oh, yeah, he's, he's coloring outside the yes. lines here. You like that one. I, l I, learn, I learned that line from Did you coloring. just tell me that, th that coloring outside the lines is a reference to a coloring book? Yeah. Do you think that's something I needed to explain to me? Oh, no. The, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you think I didn't get you that didn't reference? didn't know where it went, where it came from. Yeah. Top two pair for showman. Ooh. Middle pair for Lang. Lang with the worst of it again. This is your fault. 
this guy who just wrote commentators are terrible. Because <laughs> he's not even saying these commentators. You ruined all commentators for him. One spade out there for Lang. Calls the 115,000 bet from Showman. Thank you. Drawing pretty, pretty thin. How about a 10? I want blood. Ooh, that's bloody. Just 2.1x the pot left in Lang's stack. And with two flush draws out there, <coughs> Shulman is going to be very comfortable to bet big here. I would predict somewhere in the range of 350k. Pay those flush draws. Play those combo draws. Wow, he goes for the pot size bet, which represents about half of Lang's stack. And against Lang's particular hand, that's actually going to work out pretty well because Lang will not fold this hand. But Lang also is going to recognize now that he doesn't have any fold equity. So, you know, if he had, would have otherwise check shoved this, you know, 300k bet, I don't think he's going to be prepared to do that. Um, and that's why we see the sort of like, <sighs> yeah. Lang is going to be in big, big trouble if he does not connect with this river in a major, major way. Yeah, needs the club. Look at that. Just 675k remaining. And he hits the club. It does make the flush. And he hits the club. Just when it seemed like it was no longer possible. It's like Nick Shulman's arrogant ways have finally yeah. caught up with him. Take that, Nick. <laughs> Shouldn't have been strutting around Vegas. Your good looks and your money and your mahogany voice. You should have ignored this guy that you yeah. didn't notice at all. Yeah, didn't notice him at all. You just walk around, freaking talking on your phone, How making much? big deals and what? He has time. No, he has playing time golf. Man. Also, it would, ju it would just be it a would check. It would be a check as well, well yeah. How much damage? That's okay, but it, w it would be a check, right, if, if I timed out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's so affable. The last time the NAPT was here, there were no shot clocks. There weren't clocks in general. Yeah. They hadn't been invented yet. I remember that. Everybody gets nervous on the TV table, even the dealers. Showman does, in fact, check to Lang. And... Surely, Shulman isn't going to be thrilled facing the shove here, but the reason I think that he's doing it is... His name is Nick Shulman, not Shirley. 625. Call. Flush. Oh, boy. Lang gets Flush. all of it. All of it being as many chips as he had for the full double up. Does not bust Shulman. Incorrect, actually. He only bet 625 of his 675. Oh, Interesting. Okay. It was one that was worth noting that he didn't go for the full all-in. There was 1.7 million in there. Sorry, I heard six and a five. <laughs> six twenty-five. Yeah. <laughs> um, you might be wondering at home, why did uh, Ryan Lang do that? Well, it is common practice in some of these tournaments sometimes when you're going all in on the river to leave one chip behind so that when oh, yeah, you yeah, get, yeah. Okay. if the player does bluff catch you and you're bluffing. You can still maybe run up with that single chip. We've quite famously seen San Green Greenwood do it, I think, in an e a big EPT main or, or high roller that he won. So huh? giving the illusion of that by doing it when you actually have the nuts, I think is probably where that comes from, from Ryan Lang. R run it up or just survive an orbit and maybe ladder up as well. Right. God, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even think about that. Yeah. And then... Give so much to learn from two. you. Um, give him, yeah, give him uh, those two, and then he's, he's good. It's the whiskey, right? Okay, the whiskey and the water. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. All right. Masato Yokosawa, all in from the cutoff with seven six of diamonds. Here. You An example of the wide little range little. of hands, Masato. Ran me down with in the World Series of Poker main event. <clears throat> I just got it because it took forever to get one up, to get a waitress up there to get what I need for now. I'll do another one. He all in gets through.
Oh, I get his. I get his uh, sweater. It's like hookah, right? Like a. It's a hook and an A. Oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Do you think there are more hookah bars here in Vegas or in Barcelona? It's really Barcelona. Yeah, I, I guess Barcelona. Go there. Oh, you said hookah bar. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Cyprus. Yeah, Cyprus was was hookahed up. Sorry, there was a bar at the Rio. It had a very similar sounding name. <laughs> Colloquially referred to as. A couple of very big hands here. And tell you what, Pal and Patty playing these 20... Two big blinds does have every reason to shove over a cutoff open, and it would be an absolute massive race. And, and there it is. Yeah, you shove here because your opponent's not always going to have ace king. Sometimes going to have ace ten and fold, or king queen and fold, king jack and fold. But there we go. And after getting snapped, I can tell you that Pell and Patty is thrilled to just see the ace king. Fun guys. Like hot dogs versus apple pie. One of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. What? One of these two American things. So the apes are definitely the hot dogs, right? Just because, like, the shape, it's kind of like hot dog or bunny. Like, if we had to say no, which whatever one has which? the slight mathematical edge, which actually is hot dogs. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. Queen, Jack, Nine, One Club, many outs for eights to fade. Eight of clubs. Jack of cups. Eight of clubs. The problem with the club is that I'm going to have too many outs. Nine of cups. And too many outs is That's true. Big sweat for Pal and Potty. <laughs> you said it, buddy. You're manifesting over there. Self-fulfilling prophecy. You blew it. Too many outs. Look at that. 18 cards for, for him to hit. Incredible. 18 outs. I mean, ooh, too many outs. Too many outs syndrome. Oh, I predicted it. Yeah, you did. You manifested it. Pal and Potty. You, you did that. Does get the full double up. No chip behind this time. Nope. King Herno asks, anyone know where Tonka finished? Yes. Thank you for your question. The same place he always finishes. Not in first. Remarkably, I was I overheard a little interview from him. He, didn't, he hasn't even finished top three in a, in a live tournament. It's incredible. I don't understand it. Such a brilliant player. Can get the monkey off his back soon. I mean, if Spraggy can win a tournament, surely Parker can. I don't know how to parse this message so I can talk about it on the air. I'll just say that Michael Ian Black played on the big game yesterday, and I asked him if he was going to talk about it on stage. He had a show in Boston tonight, and he's reporting back that he did not sleep last night, flew to Boston on a red eye, did not sleep on the plane, not red eye, I guess the early morning flight, and did talk about his experience on stage today said it, it did pretty well. Can't wait for you guys to see it. But wait, you guys tell me I'm not allowed talking about it. He's talking about it on stage? Made me sign an NDA? <laughs> Mike Liam Black's telling the world? Bastin? He may not have spoiled it. It's true. Big old chance of chop here, Ace Deuce versus Ace Five. Because you know what they say. We're almost there. 
Wait a second. So we would need a card higher than a five. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, the chunk. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Gotta get the show down, though. Show it down, show it down. I mean, I can't imagine either of these people are gonna be bluffing here. Or going for rally so. Oh no. Oh no. 10 150,000. One Fisky. And perfectly targeting, you know, hands like what Massey does have here. Massey having checked this down is clearly repping some sort of showdown value. Wouldn't really be checking down to the river here with worse than ace high. So if Dianati is sitting there with the worst ace high, it, it clearly was an opportunity he decided to take and won't let us sing, which is, oh, it's messed up. I think everybody's, it's messed up. Everybody, everybody's probably fine with it. Yeah? Have you checked our poll numbers? They love the song. We're a hit. We have polls? <laughs> Do you know where poll numbers comes from? Um, no. Can you tell me? They used to vote for... Uh, politicians in ancient Greece by sc scraping a line into the column. What are you going to eat on your break? Okay. So that would be your poll number. Are, Italian? are you messing with me? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I like this story, though. I'm going to tell it to people. Massey opening king-queen from the hijack. A6 for Palampati. More like Palamnati. Hey Griffin, would you say that beard is lengthy? <laughs> oh, very good. Defends a big blind with a deuce of diamonds. 865. I knew you were going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna so I guess it's going to work? Razor. How much time do I have? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to fucking lead, man. Never miss Massey. A rare miss. Every time you say tenfold, like, that's something. Also, I keep betting, and she says six, and I keep thinking that, like, I, like, made it a different amount. She's fucking me up. Language. <laughs> it's just jealousy, by the way, Aaron, because I shouldn't really swear, so I don't. On here, so I'm just jealous. Ace Jack suited. For my future best friend, Nick Schulman. This one time I was uh, talking to Nick Schulman, I was like, hey, we should hang out sometime. And he was like, yeah, maybe. So, yeah. Yep. Noted it in my um, my notes app. That's what, that's what yeah. For I think. Raise and take it for Shulman. Palampati, sand deep. 
Sandeep, very strong name. I have a very, one of my very good friends. This is Randy. Where'd you start to hang Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. find four. How deep Two does it go? Four. Do you think there's more than Rand and Sand? Probably. Great names. Strong names. The thicker the waistband, the sand deeper the quicksand. <laughs> I actually tell my friend, <laughs> I told my friend Rand Deep that I find his name very ironic because Did he, he, run he, never, he never runs deep oh, in no. tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> He's always out in the first day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's the first orbit kind of guy. Big trouble for Anthony Dan Anthony. Okay. Ace Queen suited. Uh -oh. Oops. No. This is the kind of situation I would have loved to have just found a call here. Ace Queen suited, you know, like you really aren't prepared to play for stacks here. So you're, you're essentially turning this hand into a bluff if you're not prepared to get all the money in. And it's too good a hand to do that. By flatting with a hand like Ace Queen suited here, you keep in those weaker hands that would otherwise just fold to the three bet your Ace Jacks, your Ace Tens, um, you know, your King Queens. Now you've just put in 400,000 with Ace-Queen suited and you're not even going to see a flop. So I think this was a mistake from Dianati to 3-bet this particular combination. I think Ace-Queen off, you can even 3-bet to, to fold, but suited, it's just, you know. I think you're right, Griffin. He's nice. not going to see a flop. He's going to see all five cards. Dude. I don't think so. Why are you time banking here? I've never seen when someone use a time bank and fold, to be fair. And I've been doing this <laughs> you definitely at least have. a couple months. <laughs> You've been doing it for years. <laughs> Why are you keeping count? Why are you so obsessed with me? Hard to fold such a pretty looking hand, says Wooly, the mammoth himself, or herself, does fold the ace-queen suited. I hate oh. it, even though I won our little bet, Joe. I can't wait to see what you have. You made a good fold. Achilles, Premium. last Premium? stand Premium? on Twitch. Ass. Better. Better than a premium. That's so badass. Jeez. Classic pal and potty. Aces. The only hand you missed. Jacks. <coughs> Kings. Yep. You'll see it on TV. I'm trying to ask a question. Achilles Last Stand on Twitch asks, does anyone else hear a faint high-pitched squeal in this broadcast? When I mute, I cannot hear it. You're hearing the clock resetting. Mm -hmm. Eight, ten, two, one. It's the electronic clock on the table, the shot clock. In Dianati's defense, yep. if you are going to 3-bet it, good for you for getting away from it because Ace right. Conceit is a real pretty hand. Great spot here for Yokosawa. Got those nine. Oh bigs. my okay. goodness! Look, Runs look, look, right look, into it. Ace ten suited never that. loses here though. Just just I double them up already. I folded it. Masato, you're fine. Like this I is already it over. Look at that, thirty four percent. Isn't that outrageous? You know they call Japan the land of the rising sunrunner. <laughs> Just be there. Go all in. Is that a? Is that a call? That's my uh, maybe small plan. Not calling that. Not calling. Not calling. Not calling. Yeah, Massey, I appreciate your, you know, big grinder, traveling the circuit, just trying to make a living. But you're losing this hand, my so friend. Bad. Ace 10 of hearts. Oof. Uh, One heart, but it is still, a set of kings. Still losing I'm it, my friend. Pull the heart. <laughs> <laughs> you have no choice juicy. but to double down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Royal yeah. Flush Draw. Yeah. Your heart's full, buddy. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for a heart that creates straight opportunities. At least the hot Oof, beef. That didn't work. Straight opportunities. Oh, that is a straight opportunity, oh. though. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of like it, right? It's growing on you. Opportunist straight. Kosawa <laughs> needs to hit one of three jacks to survive. Doesn't hit the jack. Yokosawa's out. We actually also lost a player during worry, that hand. We were rooting for you. So we are down yeah, to 12. To okay. $15,950. Nice little score. 
<coughs> for Masato, but <laughs> oh, that's great. What a boss. I mean, it seems like every PT stop that he comes to, and now here at the NAPT, he's just um, making, sure stack, making runs. <laughs> Icon of the Japanese scene. Ghosty says on Poker Stars Online that Jack would have come. Lol. I mean, that's that's just canon. One hundred percent true. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, we all we are in agreement. Uh, we can't stop pretending. You know. They put it to a vote if they should change that feature or not, and we all yeah. voted nay. Yeah. Johnny River. Uh, River Stars. You ever heard of that one? <laughs> um, I I haven't heard that one. I've heard Joker Stars. That's Joker a favorite. Stars is yeah. so I good. like that because I I like I'm a comic book guy, you know. I went yeah, to Joker sure. for Halloween one year, so that one it's nice and it rhymes with poker. Who told you come my wedding dressed like Joker? <laughs> Massey, great level. Started by winning three hands in a row. Wins kings against ace, ten suited. Doing great. You're doing great, Aaron. I know I was kind of poo-pooing you there in that hand. I just really thought ace, ten was going to win. But uh, you're the chosen one. I'm on your team now. <laughs> he gets it, though. He's he's lost with kings against ace ten suit enough times to know. It's a dangerous hand. Ten raises to one hundred and fifty thousand. We are just playing six handed. So expect ranges to open up a little more, and this is a perfect example as Dianati goes for the huh. Three X under the gun. This is a little out of line. From yeah, Antony Dianantony. And I'll tell you what, yeah, Massey makes a very tight fold, and even though that, that does appear to be quite nitty oh, based on what man. we see, wow. A 3x is a little startling, you know? Just suddenly you see this 3x under the gun, you just won this big pot. So I, even though Dianati has king 8, I don't mind that fold at all from Aaron Massey, and now we see that the blades are in the big blind. Snickety, snickety, just, snaw, snaw. Just, he's so cocky with those aces. <laughs> black, too. He doesn't do yeah, red aces. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just jet black. No, yeah. Obsidian, no light or chips can, it, can escape them. Shulman battling back after doubling up Ryan Lang up over 45 bigs. Yeah, been playing very, very solid, very, very well all day. Was all the way up to 5 million and actually the chip leader of the tournament, but a very unfortunate turn of events against Ryan Lang. And it's still sitting with 46 big blinds, so I think it'll be fine. Sunmore is on YouTube asks, when is the new big game going to air and on what channel? Absolutely. Thank you for your question. King, queen off for back ahead. Nine, nine for Massey. Nine, nine. Well, that was pretty lackluster. <laughs> Sorry, when you said it, I'm like, oh, Gretzky? Hockey stick? What, what am I doing? Uh, oh, 9-9! Nine, nine. Dianati! Ace Jack in a big. This person really does not like Nick Shulman. He's doubling <laughs> down? Tripling down. Same guy? Or a new guy? I mean, he went, he basically called Nick the worst thing you could call a person. Oh. Huh. Dianetti defends out of the big blind with ace jack, and away we go. Ace jack four. Top pair, second pair, no, get two a little, pair. Get a little ice with my apple juice here. Ooh. <sighs> Pretty 
standard continuation bet to fold out those nines, and then you expect the big blind range to, you know, not just be aces and jacks, but a lot of hands that it would be prepared to fold, if not now, but by the turn. Ace jack, though, I feel like he's sticking around. This guy's got a tight hair thing going on. It's good. It's like it's all, it's very deliberate, you know? Like this, it was this it was manicured an cut. Yeah, he's not a strand out of place. Deliberate, deliberate man. Three seventy-five. Deliberately betting three hundred and seventy-five. Seems like a lot to stick around for a gut shot. Of course, you may think your king and your queen are alive. Also, we know that they are not. Yeah, I think it's just a bit of. Posturing here. Very difficult to continue. Hard to imagine Dianetti's going to find that many bluffs in this spot. Time bank card going in. But he does look like he doesn't really want to let it go. Dianati repping such a thin range, right? Basically just repping ace four, ace jack, pocket fours. You wouldn't really check raise any other hand, and that's why I think it's taking him so long to let go of even just king high, drawing to the nuts. Time for those cards to go to the muck. 700. Oh, oh, that is a re-raise. And a going to leave third only 600 behind, put in bet. over half of his stack. And, and, and this is why I said, you know, Dianati is repping such a thin range here of, of top, top value. You know, he wouldn't be check-raising here with ace-five. So Bejahad here just doesn't believe it. And instead of floating, it's deciding to, you know, just in case Dianati is doing something weird, like seeing where he's at with an ace three. I think that Dianati, if he was doing something like that, would consider folding at this stage, certainly. I didn't know Simon Cowell played poker. I'll allow it. Reader, 1986. Great bad look like. Absolute rubbish. Nice. Just with the call. Smooth call. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you what. Alarm bells are going off in our... Well, well Roche kind yeah. of boned here with 600K behind. Yeah, he's not putting another chip in this pot unless he hits a 10, in my opinion. At this point, he knows that... This is not good. <laughs> One point, nearly 1.8 million chips in the pot. Um, and he does have ultimate position here, and Dianetti is going to check this turn, so is going to get a free river. I'd be very surprised if we saw a shove here. Would you be more surprised at a shove or a bet of one big blind? I would be more surprised at a bet of one big blind. <laughs> there is the check. Oh my god. Ten on the river. I gotta go. No, we're not doing this. Sam Cowell. Sammy. What have you done? Shot oh in god. the gut. <laughs> this this guy's not gonna be happy, guys. You guys have to stick around for this. If you guys have any friends, spouses, family members around the house, tell them to come over. There's about to be Put the headphones on, yeah. actually, <laughs> if there's kids around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is uh this is gonna get ugly. 425. Uh oh, and then, then he's gonna shove for 175 more, and he's gonna know. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna know, Joe. Oh, and you're gonna see On it. his soul leave his body. <laughs> um, and that's made it worse. And uh -huh. uh -oh. trying to get out in front of the blast off by saying he played it bad. <laughs> Man, oh, man. Being lucky is the best. And look, Aaron Massey cannot close his <laughs> mouth. He's trying not to be uh, overtly agape, but he can't can't get that thing closed. And I'll tell you what. Dianati's taking it very well. He played it brilliantly. 
And that's the sick puppy that is this game. Wow. I got to sit down after that. Yeah. I don't want this to be on TV. <laughs> oh, it's on TV, buddy. At least now people get to see how bad you play. Absolutely. That was a little pointed. <laughs> Steiny's mom asked, does right. Tapes really think the reading the question and not giving answer is continuously funny? So, moving on to the next hand. Dianati, I believe, did make a bit of a pointed comment there. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think he said that people are going to see how bad you play or something. <laughs> So, you know, it definitely... Thank you for your was, question. Yeah, was taking it well in, in stride, but little jab there. A5 suited action is folded to Anthony in the small blind. Great. Very clear, Ryan Lang is tough to shake. And when he has ace nine, he's real tough to Impossible. shake. Impossible. Yeah. King, king, eight. Immovable. Two clubs. Tim Duckworth asks Stapes, what's for dinner? Griffin, I was thinking food. How about you? Yeah, I'm down for some food. You want to get food? Hungry. Food yeah. for dinner. Food for dinner. Thanks for your question, Tim. Yeah. You know what? No, no, I'm food, yeah. Still food? Yeah, I'm going to go with food. I thought for a second maybe not food. I'm thinking maybe some duck. I think it's worth it. Duck? Because they fly together? No, because his name's Duckworth. Oh, I see. Oh, the best jokes are the ones you can play. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said... Ryan Lang, tough to shake. It feels but like you're facing feels quite like you're a big bet here. This is okay. a pot sized bet. Take it. Take it. And yeah, really good instincts here from Ryan Lang. Not someone who's going to be folding ace high very often, I think, in a spot like this. But when you see a pot sized bet like that, you're against an opponent that clearly is like. You know, going through it and he's going to keep barreling. Get out of there. <laughs> I fucked myself. I'm receiving word from the front that we have outer table action. Sergio Aido. Versus Liran Batito. And Aido bets... 250,000. Oh, no, that was the last three. Sorry, this is a this is a three bet. Sergio. Oh, and the these. money went in. The call of the three bet, I should say. Now the money goes in after the fact. After Sergio shows queen ten of clubs. Tito shows king queen. Yeah. Sergio, such a mainstay from the EPT. As much of a talent as he is a sellout with his shirt. The queen 10, by the way, was a straight. King queen was trips for Petito. Sorry, Griff. I was trying to figure out who had what there. You did good. We got there. And I got my, uh, my jab in. <laughs> I put uh, Sergio Aido up to over five million. And he's going to be a problem. He's chip leader. He's going to be an issue. That's kind of messed up. Dude comes over here from the EPT. Yeah, like this now is he's all chip leader. Yeah, he's that's, showing up all these. It's Americans. actually like a bit like weird. It's rude. Yeah, it's rude. It's like this is kind of like we're you know re-entering the North American market. We're Vegas locals. Like yeah. you just flew down from Europe. We love it. Please come, everyone. Great venue, great event. I'm happy for Sergio. 
How about that Mulberry Street pizza here Dude. at Resource World? Dude, that pizza was fuego. I usually like a lot of toppings, but you got me just the cheese, and it was the best cheese pizza I think I've had yep. ever. Don't mess with it. Yeah. Do you mind asking? Pollen Potty under the gun, Ace Queen. Makes it 110,000. for the 5K, but that's something good to know. I think it's uh, maybe like 10 tonight. Trying to shake off that horrible bad beat at the, from this man right here just a few hands ago. Shaking it off, a big part of poker. Dan P asking, how did poker with pizza do? Did he cash? Did he ever fix the Kessler mobile? He won an event here. I know that much. He said it was the smallest buy in event. But he did lift a tiny little spade trophy. Heads up to this flop, Massey and Dianetti. Three over cards on this board for Massey. However, the threes are the best hand. Is the best hand are the best hand. The threes would be one thing. So okay. the threes. The threes are the best hand. Right now. Is, is the best hand. Threes is the best hand. Oh boy. This is shaking me up here. Dianetti firing two live pair draws and the gut shot draw. If the jack came on the turn, he'd be Dianetti. Let's go of the slightly best hand. I had a lot of work to do holding on there against further bets or some of the cards Dianati could hit. You know those... Um Fruit platters that are made to look like flowers. Uh, okay, yeah. What the, um, what are they called? The um, they stick a bunch of yeah, fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone sent me one once. Were they edible arrangements? Right. Yeah, yeah. They must be really me. popular here because people keep mentioning them. Two people on edible arrangements trying. Oh, sorry. Never mind. They left out the word arrangements. I, uh, okay. Queen nine suited from Sam. By the way, this Sammy is. Uh, people in chat keep noting that Sammy is the dealer from Hustler. Okay. Hustler, nice. Hustler live, I assume. Listen, Aaron. We're gonna go to the NAPT. We're gonna get some Ace Jack suiteds. We're gonna three bet some people. Who's Kyle? We gonna take. Fold it. Hey, look, Melody Dianati is telling us how to pronounce it. You know what? I think uh, I think she's legit. Do I have a peppermint? I never, I never got and one here. The corona. Might be related. I never sure. Where is it? Thank you. Can I have a peppermint? D uh, a Pellegrino, not please? E. Dianati. Ooh, rolls off the tongue. Nice. Thank you. Do 
you think you would go on a, in the chat room of the stream and correct someone's pronunciation of one of your family members' names? Your, your name is pronounced everyone wrong. Pr everyone pronounces my name wrong, and yeah. I don't even correct them. I don't care. Yeah, I, can't, I couldn't possibly imagine yeah. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if someone called you stupid, then you might say something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seven tray <laughs> deuce, all diamonds. For Dianati. Ooh! And a set of fives on the turn for Massey. I guess it's like a way for someone to... Never mind. <laughs> Can we go back to the poker? Massey bets three fives. The uh, not E in a little trouble here. Drawing completely dead. Getting very unlucky here on the turn. So for his sake, going to hope for a card yeah. like that that maybe you can find a big fold with the pair of sevens. If you consider the positions here, you know, that's a very big card for Massey's range, right? It's not like this is blind on blind and Massey can just have like queen eight offsuit. Like he's going to have a lot of aces. He's going to have some flushes here. He's going to have, you know, sets. So it's up to Anthony here to make a big fold. And at least from what I've seen, I mean, I'm, I'm relatively familiar with Aaron's game because I've played a little bit with him and I've seen him play before and... I don't think he's really the type to be that, to like need to bluff in this spot. Mm -hmm. So I think that this would be a bit of a mistake to call. And I think would maybe be connected to that. There we go. Good fold. Nice Good fold food. from Anthony Denantney. How was, how was Joe's pronunciation, Melody? Twelve players left in the field. Playing down to the final table of some size tonight. Maybe nine, maybe eight, maybe seven, maybe six. Hell, let's throw five in the mix. What do I care? Could have a double bust out to go from seven to five. Could have a triple bust out to go from eight to four. Triple bust out bonanza. 10-9 suited. For Sammy the dealer. Lang with 6 5 in the big blind. Defends. Ooh, ace, 8 4, two clubs. 4 5 6 7 8. It's a gut shot. 1, 2, 3, 4 clubs. That's a flush draw. I was right the last time Joe said this. We actually lost two players to end the night during an EPT. I remember that. Flush on the turn for Sammy the dealer. Yeah, and this is pretty bad stuff for Lang because he has the kind of hand you want to you want to bluff with. You know, you have a club in your hand. You have a double gutter where you can get there. I think that he's going to have two barrels a lot of the time here, and he is just bluffing right into the effective nuts, the 10 high flush. So... A spot of bad luck for Ryan Lang. I would like to say there's a way that he doesn't lose another five, six, seven hundred on the river, but it might be his destiny. And Best had rightfully just calls, keeps the bluffs in there. River card is 
There are some rivers like an ace. Oh, like an ace, I think, is going to be pretty difficult for Lang to bluff. So that's good. There you go. Lang knows his ranges. I am not messing with the ace river. You live out in Vegas? You like it out here? Sammy oh, bets. You, uh, Not very much at all relative to the size of the pot. Gets a fold from Lang. Yes. Great level. Surprised Ryan Lang could take the night off for holding the door open for Brand Stark. No, I've never been. Really? Uh, I heard it's cool, yeah. You should go, man. Yeah, yeah. Everybody says so. It's nice. I heard it's a great city. Tubless on YouTube asks, any idea if Sunday we have any stream like High Roller or something, some side event? We have an idea. A lot of golf. You like golf? I do like golf. Thank you for your question. Uh, have you ever been to Waste, waste Management? No, but that's, I, like, I watch it. That's something you should definitely experience. Ace 10 suited under the gun for Ann Massey. Massey just loving life. Somehow, all of a sudden, the chip leader on the table with 63 big blinds. Can you believe it? We started this level. We had the runaways in Dianati and Shulman, and now they've both fallen under some hard times. At least the, the chip breakdown here is actually quite interesting. Massey's chip leader with 63. And Shulman At the table, is to be technically, clear. Yes. Shulman is technically last on the table with, with 47, so this is actually playing quite... You quite deep, you know, usually we're used yeah, to seeing well, some bit, yeah. 10 yeah. to 20 I've big blind stacks, but that is just cool. not the case, really is it, evened is out. Nice? Yeah, Going to see a lot of post-flop poker. Every hole is different. Really? Check, check on this four-tray tray board. Four-tray tray. my brother-in-law that I would take him to Shadow Creek one day. He's big into golf. He's going to like it. He just went to uh, play Tiger Woods' course in, um, in Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. Finally, Massey is going to take a small hit. Seems like he hasn't even really lost a pot of any significance this level. And this one isn't really much of any significance, especially if you can find the fold here on the river. But looks like he thinks this is too good a bluff catching hand. He is going to call. Twas not a bluff. Twas value. Twas not. It's interesting they mentioned Tiger Woods there. I've always found him to be really interesting. Remember when not uh, for first there was that Tiger Woods like marriage scandal? Yeah. And then there was the car accident. Yeah. And then I see this headline recently that says Tiger attacks trainer at circus. What time it is? What and I'm yeah. like, dude, I'm no golf expert, but maybe you should spend a little more time on the links. A little less time at circuses. Weird. He's a strange dude. I'm at the Ice House in Pasadena yeah. Saturday, November 25th, 5 p.m. show where all the best comedy takes place. Sunday, November 26th at the Improv on Melrose. Oh, wow. Shill West it, Hollywood, it. California, 9 p.m. show. Do you have a show this weekend? Too? No, nah, uh -huh. I, I was asked to do a show in Vegas this weekend, but I couldn't figure out how to guarantee I'd be there. Like, we worked past midnight the last two nights. Who knows yeah. how long this is going to go? Couldn't do it. It's all coming up Sammy right now. Flopping bottom two pair. Everybody loves a good dealer success story at the table. Kind of like if Tiger Woods is a caddy, it attacked a trainer at the circus. Did I hallucinate that or did Nick Walsh have a mustache? Really? Oh, he's Movembering. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, God. He would. If I, anyone I know in my whole life would Movember, it would be him. I want to see it. 
I would like to see the mustache. His mustache is such that uh, the verb for him having it is, is rocking. He's rocking the mustache. Is he really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I only yeah. got a glimpse. No, he's rocking it. Okay. I see. No, glass. But it's okay. It's okay. I've always felt that Nick was kind of missing something, you know? Maybe that's it. Thank you. <laughs> I think, I don't know. If he rocks it the way you say, I mean, oh, yeah, I'm thinking I might, like, Excuse me? respect him. This will be great. Mustache rides for all? <laughs> we love Nick Walsh here. Pocket tens for Shulman. Thank you very much. Uh oh, Lang. Lang getting out of line. Lang. Cor what are you up to? You put that down. A bit tricky, though, at this stack depth. You know, when with playing, we're what? 12 players left in this event. Over a quarter million dollars up top. You don't really want to get in 50 big blinds mm -hmm. under the gun cutoff with 10. So Shulman is going to have to be forced to play defensively unless he's just completely over it and blasts all in, which I think is definitely possible. But more than likely, it's just going to be calling, you know, yeah, with ICM considerations we we and just okay. playing defense. Uh, defense wins championships, Joe. That's what they say. Uh, that'd be cool. I hate the Defense oh. and a beautiful Ew. ten ball Daddy -oo. in the flop pocket. I think I remember um, Nick saying his dream is to do either snooker or billiard commentary. Oh, really? Yeah. Sorry, did you say something? Uh, yeah, space Too bad about his voice. <laughs> Just wouldn't translate. Yeah. It's definitely not oh, cool this, enough. We're gonna keep this nope. He's got the look, but you know he's. Lang firing into the abyss. Yeah, and Shulman. Difficult to get a read on. 625. Yeah, he's been playing these spots quite aggressively. And fucked. is going to force out a bluffing hand from Ryan Lang once again. So I'm not sure if I'm entirely on board with the... <coughs> sort of play style he's used against Ryan Lang, who is the bluffiest player, in my opinion, on this table. And now this is two separate occasions when Lang was bluffing with nine high on a three club board and now six high on a two diamond board. And both times you're now raising with your, you know, flushes and your sets. So I'm I, I'm, I'm, not thrilled by these lines from, from Nick Shulman. And, and that's being said with the utmost respect. Um, so, but it's going to take it down. Work. Nick, with all due respect, you're playing terribly. Is that what you're saying? No, with all due sure? respect, I think that he's misplaying his opponent. With all due opponent. respect, oh, you're work. playing like a <laughs> child. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> like a giant toddler, Nick. You're better than this. Sorry, that was a bit sinister at the end there. With all due respect, <laughs> you're playing like a brain-damaged monkey. <laughs> Is that, no, is that kind of along the lines no, of what you're No, no, no. Okay. No, you do not put words in my mouth. I would lie off stream, you but... You do not put words in my mouth. <laughs> feels a little ridiculous on the stream. Here. All of us, like. <laughs> Yeah, you can't lie. Well, you could. It's a bold move. I mean, yeah. I kind of respect it, but... <laughs> is that monkey talking? Lang doesn't learn his lesson. I, you know what? I love a man that doubles down. <laughs> That's kind of been a bit of a theme of this level. He just got way out of line with a 6-4 suited and got in the next hand on the plus one. He's like, you know what? One more spin. I can't lose it twice in a row. I saw someone in chat accusing Lang of doing this out of boredom. It, it's, it's more calculated than that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Lang. Lang's a good cat. Lang, Lang's a good kind of guy that's... You know, if he gets a run of cards, he can he can really he can win the tournament, which is really the way you want to play these things. He's a nice guy. I didn't, uh, you know, on Twitter and stuff and in person, but I didn't know he lied so much. Like, look at this lying he's doing. Which yeah. I like when people call bluffing lying. Yeah, yeah, I like that too. He's constantly lying with these 6-4 suiteds. Yeah, and it's going to be in a bit of a tricky spot here because you kind of need to protect with this, this mid-pair. But when you do get check-raised here... Um, 
from both the value hands and the bluffs, you pretty much always have to fold this hand. So it, you're really hoping to, to, to lose a customer here. And of course, Jack-10 with the Jack of Diamonds is not going to be going anywhere. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Merrily, we roll a lang. Two pair on the turn. Check, check. Shulman's jack high flush is good. Shulman trying to decide whether he wants to fawn that he has some sort of weak showdown value hand like a, a six or a ten. Maybe try to induce Lang into bluffing or if he should just go for value with this Jack of Diamonds, and it does go the value route. So he's not baby deering. No, and this is the right move here, and it gets a call. Huh. Wow. Nice, nice sizing, I guess. Yeah, targeted it so well, betting that amount. I mean, that's, I don't think he was going to be able to make much more. So really, really brilliant work there from Nick Shulman. Just Getting him hour. all the way up to back to 67 big blinds, 3.375 million. Yeah, has climbed from bottom of the leaderboard to second at it was this like table. It was like fake bottom, but yeah, he had 47, someone else Last, had 47. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. But making moves. Yeah. Trending upward. He's got moves to make. In the words of Jason Somerville, peaking. Spent a lot of time with Jason yesterday, didn't you, pal? Did, I, did that? Yeah. Is that a source? No, of not just yesterday. The last two days, we we're like we're like we're like close now. We're like. Close. Sorry, I should. I said like hanging out with Jason's bad. Oh. But that's not what I meant. Sorry. No, no, no. It was, it was more about him just not wanting to bring up this. Uh, I was an alternate for the big game for much of the last two days. A lot of waiting, a lot of hanging out with Jason Somerville, which was lovely, but you know. Sitting in the green room all day is not the most fun. Pelham Potty. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Electing to take this as a three bet instead of a call. How much pain? I think, obviously, Start it would be more standard money. to just call on the button here. But sometimes you want to mix it a bit, I suppose. Sometimes you just see that that chunk they put out there, and you're like, I just want it. I just want it now. Want it now. You seen the sphere out there, out the window? Not only did I see it out the window, I was inside. Did you uh, see the movie or you too? Saw the movie. How was it? It was staggering. It was beautiful. It was so good. Cool. Really good. You have to go see it. Is it, a, it was like a documentary or an actual movie? It's um, a sort of hybrid. It's called Postcards from Earth. Do you learn anything in it? Not really. I don't. Okay, good. Because I hate learning. It's not a learning thing. Okay, great. It's just. It's just like a. It's, Does it's, it open expand your mind? It's a love letter to humanity and the <laughs> earth that no, eventually becomes like a preachy fun. sort of like yeah. uh, global warming. Oh, uh, like we gotta save. Destroy. We gotta yeah, act yeah, yeah. soon. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> if one of the Chris's isn't in it, I'm not interested. Is Chris yeah. Pine in it? Um, Hemsworth. No. Not Hemsworth. Even the Christian one? I'm trying one? to think. I'm trying to think. Um, the one from Parks and Rec? Seeing it? I'll take him even. You'll take Pratt? Yeah, I'll take Pratt if I have to. As long as one of the Chris's is there. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't... I'm not like a big beauty guy. Yeah, we know. <laughs> Thank you. 
But the thing is, it's like, it's tight. It goes by quick. It's five, five zero fifty minutes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So and it's like the out. experience. It's like the whole thing. Are you standing? No. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm, all right. I'm getting there. It's it's yeah. And I have some tips too about. They say, for instance, do they, they have a do they do a, a bit where you can check your phone for a little while or no? Yeah, I was checking my phone the whole time. Oh, like, really? Yeah. yeah oh, hell yeah. Like, okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it really expensive? Um, we got like the, the no. It's like they range from like oh, seventy no, I, bucks to two fifty. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. That's very expensive. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, I'm in for that. Oh, like you like that? I want it to be expensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, actually, um, six point one was the peak. Oh, and so hot tip. Yep. They say your tickets at like nine thirty or whatever it was. Of ours was nine thirty. Yeah. The show doesn't start till ten thirty. So it's like a scam. They what? There. Yeah, it's like this whole experiential. Like you go around, they have these robots giving you facts and stuff before the show, and like this whole area where you can spend the hour getting drunk and eating food. So I'm just saying, don't worry about getting there on time because you'll be sitting, at, at, you know, at 10 o'clock, we were like sitting in our seats like, when does this start? Someone was like 10.30. I'm like, what is this scam? <laughs> Why are they turning this into a two-hour thing? Pretty inconsequential pot. I'm glad because I'm really glad to have that conversation. King I may... May, li may like this with kidding, the aces and fives on board. I'm also kidding. I'm not, I'm not a bluffer. Oh, me neither. That's one thing I don't do. Shulman could very well get a nibble here. <clears throat> Guess inherently I don't the only a problem for that ever. <laughs> is that he should have a stronger range that in this spot as the aggressor than, say, if he was making this bet out from the blinds or something to that effect. So, really going to be thinking about this. Also, maybe wondering if you live, you live ever chopping, yeah. but why would Chopping. he bet pot, almost pot? Never been there. I heard just go when the weather's nice. When? Oh, when boy. Oh, yeah. I heard good things. Yeah, I love it. I heard downtown's really nice. Not a call yet. Just a time bank going in there. Good food. Everything's good, dude. Sammy yeah. the dealer yeah. looking Chicago. very Winter's suspiciously Winter's toward Winter's Nick Shulman. Right in the city. Yeah, where's a good place you but would recommend? But does fold like the worst hand. I flop, I flop downtown. Like, which hotel? Um, it's like not flop the draw. Good fold, good yeah, fold. Nice you would yeah, just want to be near the same with the dealer. Um, I'm not from you. Oh, we're going in. And that's going to be the last Reverse. hand of the level. I said, are we playing this hand or not? Hold on, dinner break. Okay. 60 minute dinner break. Right. You oh, heard oh, the lady. Yeah, walk. yeah just river walk. You're going to have food? Uh, yeah. Or, there's a bunch of food together. West Loop. Love food. River North. Just anywhere downtown. Yeah, I got to check it out. Yeah, we can talk more about it. Thanks. So you did hear the lady. One hour dinner break as Greg demikes the player for them to all get food. Actually, I don't know if they're all going to have food. They are allowed. Twelve players remaining. Playing down to the final table today of some number. Will it be nine? Will it be eight? Will it be seven or six? We don't know yet. These are the chip stacks of our feature table. This music is crunchy, I like it. Las Vegas, baby. No better place to play poker than Vegas. And we are taking a one hour dinner break. More from NAPT Las Vegas 2023 in one hour's time. Uh-oh. Uh, that one hurt. Created a monster. Bill raises. Phil should probably make it less obvious that he's steaming. <laughs> Donnie, suited in the small blind, calls. 
Perlot also suited. This is a hand a lot of players would defend in the big blind, especially against a steaming poker brat. And Friedman will do so. Three to the flop, which is nine jack six, top two for Helmuth. Phil's locking on the tractor beams. Stern, the first to act. Donnie's open-ended with an overcard. And bets 3,600. Friedman folds. And Phil raises to 15,000. Donnie was hoping to take it down with a semi-bluff. Phil's just told Donnie where he can put that semi-bluff. <laughs> Phil's raise is pretty big. On the off chance, Donnie has a set. He's kind of painting himself into a corner. Keep in mind, you want players with draws to call you. Phil gets what he wants. Wow. Nice hand. <laughs> the turn is the eight of hearts. Donnie's made his straight. Phil was just joking, but I think his mindset coach must be teaching him the secret or something. Or maybe instead of reading the book Blink, he accidentally read Bink. Donnie's in a great spot because he's got the nuts, and he's pretty sure Phil's got something big as well. Stern bets 25 grand. Helmuth quickly calls. To quote Phil from yesterday, that's a snap call, kid. Even though he's dead to a boat. The river, the seven of hearts. The only thing Donnie's worried about is the slim chance that Phil made runner runner hearts. And since Phil made his big moves before the hearts came into play, Donnie can be pretty confident Phil didn't make a flush. It'll be safe for him to value bet this river. Stern makes it 35,000. Phil's got to have a pretty good idea. He's beat now. There's a four card straight out there, three hearts. Phil has to wonder what hands would have called a huge raise on the flop and then led the turn in river. <laughs> Is this for real? I mean, is, is, are these hands for real? Phil's impression of David after dentist. Wow. Phil can't believe he's been run down again. He may be trying to talk himself into making a I can't be this unlucky call. Donnie's also given him pretty good odds to make this call. 35K more to win over 120, about 4 to 1. Phil should maybe be suspicious of getting such a good price. Wow. What can I beat? I mean, I guess I can beat Jack-8. Phil's trying to figure out what hands he can beat, and that's why this is taking so long. There aren't any. All right. Phil calls. Ejector seat in three, two, one, blast off. Shocked he called. I'm really, th I, I didn't think he was gonna call me. These hands for real? Dad, I don't know what you could have to call the raise and just fire. That was weird. I thought you were gonna lay that one down, brother. Nice hand, buddy. Nice hand, buddy. Where's my blow up? Okay, I'll lead it off. You want to go? I mean, what the f? That's more like it. God, that's just so sick. Finally decided to play a big hand with the big with the nuts, and they hit their miracle there too. I thought you said you had 10-8. I didn't think you were that stupid to believe it, but maybe you are. <laughs> I mean, I think you're stupid enough to call, Bam! but since we're the making would have been a straight, would have making personal attacks already, yeah, another bad winner, huh? I'm a bad winner. Is that what you're didn't saying? Didn't you just say that I, didn't you say I was just stupid enough to Didn't call? you just say I was stupid enough to believe you? Yeah, I'm you? a bad loser. You're ten times as bad as a bad winner. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You I should, because I shot it back, I shot it back at you after you just called me stupid, so I'm the bad winner. Are you kidding me? You, you needled me about having 10-8. For I didn't some needle reason. you. You said I had 10-8. Obviously, I was kidding. So you needled obviously me about you're that. Kidding. So Why I is that obvious? You called the you. river when there was a force straight on the board. Why is it obvious that you didn't have 10-8? Good stuff. 
Wow. How okay. could it possibly okay. Okay. be obvious? See, here's that you the didn't beautiful thing. Any. You honestly don't think you've been out of line at all, and that's amazing to me. That's what? I know that I've been out of line, but I'm a man. I admit it. Now's your chance. You're 23. I don't think you could admit it. Admit that I'm out of line? Are you kidding me? Wow. Do they they capture all this for for the camera? Yeah. I hope so. I think we might get that. <laughs> Nine. Ace for Phil Hellmuth. He also limps. We've got some more limping, which is basically like the vulture circling. Russ raises to 2,000. King, queen. Antonio calls. Tony G, small blind. He's out. Everybody wants a piece of this loose cannon money. Ike got out of the way last time when he had two sevens. Ike folds. Jason uh, calls. Phil raises to 11-2. Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your husbands too because they raising everybody out here. <laughs> Oh, boy. Decision time now on Harlow. You can see how much he's got left. How much? 9,200. Might as well give it to me. Phil limp re-raised in order to isolate the cannon. At this point, I don't think Russ has much of a choice. He calls. Antonio folds. Calls. So's Jason. Heads up. We just saw these two dance a few moments ago. Looks like they're ready for their next song. The flop. King five king trip kings for Harlow. Russ has crushed this flop. Helmuth checks. Russ should bet here to try to get some value. He doesn't have a lot of chips or a lot of time. He's probably doing everything he can to not jump out of his seat. One reason why playing on the internet's better. He bets twenty thousand. How much have left? Forty-five thousand. Forty-five total. Get some on. Phil puts Harlow all in. No chance he's folding. I think he's just taking a moment to soak it all in. And Russ calls. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it's been going for me. That's sick. That's, so, that's the worst. I think he just got over 100. He will if his hand holds up. He's folding. I was like, oh, well, that, that's probably a call. That is the worst. Phil is drawing virtually dead. I just got over 100. He just has to dodge two more hands and come back to mine. That's so sick. <laughs> I'm glad I, I hit it the five. What are you flush. thinking? <laughs> are you thinking back to a flush? What do you mean, what am I thinking? He has to move in, right? I mean, he... he, he... Oh, I, don't, I mean, he can't move in unless he has a hand. I mean... Well, how much? What do you mean, what am I thinking? What the f I mean, well, I got in... Uh, there's 30,000 in there or whatever. I mean, I, I'm playing no matter what. I have to give him a chance to bluff off his money. That's the only reason I check. Phil can only hit running aces or running hearts. You want insurance here? <laughs> so brutal. What a day. In some way we can ensure. The guy folded so many hands, just waited, and then Phil Holman just doubles him up, you know, no problem. It's sort of like betting five, and you could just bet five and and fold. <laughs> you could put 45 in. Rush is picturing driving his kids around in that new minivan. The turn. It's a six, and Russ has a profit. Why would he bet 20,000? It doesn't make any sense. If he had a king, why would he bet 20,000? Because he knows his opponent will ship it with ace high, you know? That was, that was deep level <laughs> kid, you know? <laughs> high tech. 46, he, yeah, he's over now, right? I don't know, I was just... Yeah. He's got like 110. He's got like 110. I needed that. <laughs> Helmuth checks. Andre checks. Everybody's missed, which means Donnie's pair of fives is best. He's looking at a continuation bet, even though this is going to be the best hand a decent percentage of the time. Donnie makes it 8,500. So far this week, Phil's had a hard time laying down ace high on the flop, especially to Donnie. How deep are you? A little less than 100 to start the hand. Donnie's into the big game for over 150K, so he's still down over 50. Bill calls. Andre folds. 
Donnie actually doesn't look very strong, which is surprising because his hand isn't strong enough for him to be trying to look weak on purpose. Six of spades on the turn, okay. giving Helmut the nut flush draw, and he checks. At this point, both players probably will want to just have a cheap showdown. There's the check by Donnie. The river, the seven of diamonds. Phil still only got ace high. Checks. Helmuth checks. Looks like Donnie's struggling with thoughts of value betting his fives. He has to wonder what worse hands will call him. Stern checks. Ace king. And Stern wins a pot of more than 34 grand. Pretty good check there. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait for it. It's my favorite part. He had a lot of ass <laughs> Same man. Same. I think you could have bluffed him too. I think Danny's I gonna fold. Him, if you bet the river, you're gonna fold, right, Donnie? He called the river. He's, 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 if he bet, for sure. If he bet twenty-two hundred dollars, I would, I would, I would, I would have raised. He could have bet twenty-two hundred, I think. Yeah. You guys are never smart enough to raise the right amount. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. What the f man? Mercier checks his straddle. No one has that much discipline to not show the bluff there. <laughs> Four, five, king. Right. Helmuth checks. Jason's flop bottom pair. Bets twelve hundred. Snap raised by Helmuth. Helmuth's clearly steaming, and there aren't a lot of hands he'd limp with a king pre-flop. Mercier calls. Jason's probably picked up on Phil's aggravation level. Wants to see another card. Ace of clubs on the turn. Helmuth bets 8,000. Phil's acting quickly again. He's picked up a gut shot, but this is a bluff. Jason knows the ace isn't likely to have affected too much, again, from Phil limping pre-flop. Mercier calls. The river. The six of hearts. Check. Phil checks. Check. Jason checks. Check, hi. Oh, oh, Phil's not going to like that. Wow. Soul read there from the young Mercier. He's good, that guy, too. What the f is going on here? The bad player should call with bottom <laughs> pair. They call 9,000 more with jack 10 or whatever 6, the hell he more. had. And they just spike a jack like it's nothing. Spike two jacks. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it, Donnie. Well done. <laughs> I would be. That's fine. You made a good call. I just I just want to play another five, six hours and but see how many times you lose with really hands like that. Today. Jason, I think, is an excellent player. He just I said he was a bad player. No, I'm the right bad after player, the hand, you go, these bad players. And he's the one who made the... These bad players calling me with bottom pair. See, that's the thing. You insult him because you're losing. You would have got, my, mo you got my money. I would, I would have snap called with a pair of kings. Raises? Yeah, I know. I know. That's why, that's why I've been kind of, like, bummed out that I... Yeah, you were like drawing dead. Yeah, Phil calls. Fishman's out. How much is it? It's a lot of money. Not going to be able to do any business deals, but I'll, I'll call. <laughs> Perkins calls. I hope Perkins shareholders aren't watching this. Five jack jack on the flop. Check. Perkins checks. Williams checks. Helmuth fires 4,000. Phil's got the best hand. That gets Phil's nemesis out of the way. But Williams calls. Looks like Williams is floating here. The turn, the queen of clubs. Williams checks an open-ended straight draw. Phil's still best, but you can see David has decent equity. Helmuth fires 4,000. Even a five or a queen can counterfeit Phil's hand. Williams calls. The river, king of diamonds, gives Williams the lead. Bink. Williams checks. So's Phil. King. 
<laughs> Here it comes. That's the ejector seat straight out of Goldfinger. Yeah, you know David Williams. <laughs> Moron, mother. <laughs> <laughs> You hit the queen on the turn? Yeah, I hit a queen on the turn, buddy. Oh, your, your five didn't hold up. <sighs> you think I had a five? Or your pair of sevens, or whatever it was. I don't know. Helmuth raises. King, queen for Fishman. I don't win very many pots from this spot, so... <laughs> In a fit of discipline. Wow. Fishman calls. Perkins is out. Williams. An absolute fit. Calls. David Williams in real bad shape with a real loose defend. Maybe a little tilty from that last hand. Deuce, Jack, Ace, two clubs, action flop. This looks like a fun board. Williams checks bottom pair. Helmuth checks top pair. Fishman leads out with a semi bluff. Williams folds. Helmuth raises. This is a pretty easy call with a flush draw, gut shot, and two big cards. And there it is by Fishman. Five of hearts on the turn gives Helmuth two pair. He bets 15 grand. We know Fishman isn't getting great immediate odds since his pairs are still no good, but PH could be doing this with worse flush draws, and he's got enough behind for decent implied odds. Add it all up, and Fishman makes the call. He's looking for a club or a 10. The river. There's the 10 completing the straight. Fishman swims the upstream battle and runs down the great one. Action on Helmuth. 23,600. Bets 23,6. 23,600 to a $45,000 pot. This is pretty dirty. Fishman's reverse peddling the nuts. Clearly, he's going to raise. The only question is how much and can he get Phil to call? I'm not going to let you do this to me again, Phil. I can't let you do this to me again. Leonardo DiCaprio could not be selling this any better. How much you got behind? Was there an answer to that? <laughs> like 85 or something. <laughs> uh, I'm all in. Fishman shoves. He even fake hesitated. Watch that Oscar, I'm Leo. I'm done. I'm done, Phil. I see method acting, improv, pantomime. If Phil calls here, the kid stays in the picture. This is so sick. I mean, I just, I just, do I just, is it possible that I just get cooled every hand I play here? You got king, queen of clubs? I mean, I guess so. Phil's put him on his exact hand. But if he does make this call, the loose cannon will have a profit of more than 140000 and will be poised to take down that NAPT passport. God, all that talking leads me to believe him. Wow. Now, that might be real. I'd certainly be shaking either way. All right, I call. Helmuth calls and sees King Queen of Clubs. Bingo! See, see, if a club comes, I don't lose one nickel in the sand. What a pot for Fishman. I mean, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Can I even play in this game? I mean, what the they find, all, I mean, what the I mean, how can I even play in this game? It's like I just get cheated i mean hand after hand after hand don't blame blame the dealer we all know it's the seat that's unlucky give the amateur an offsuit 10 i don't lose one nickel if he hits a club it's unreal where are these cards coming from david fishman with 53 hands left has a six-figure profit and he can taste that napt passport <laughs> And, and, and you know what? I would have called him quicker, except he, he talked so much that I thought he was super strong. But I know he can't move in with ace-10. That was a great read, by the way. You had him. Yeah, was... You're a real classy guy, buddy. You are. Who? Him? You. Why? What did I do? 
Why would you say that? I mean, why would you, why would you, I mean, what are you trying to do? You, the guy hits a miracle ton on me and what, you want to just step on me? He's a school me? teacher and you and him have endless trunks of money. <laughs> endless trunks of money. He's a school teacher. For God's sakes, man. Screaming will do you a lot of good. Tito, table chip leader in action here with ace-queen, raises to 55,000. So Cool asks, how come we had no world-famous bubble coverage? Because we weren't covering the bubble? Because we used our first two days here in Vegas to film the big game on tour. That's right, we told you guys, we were bringing back the big game. Those games have taken place, but we're not talking about them. Do you know why? No spoilers, because those shows will go into post-production and will air in 2024. As we see a classic race lining up on the main stage, Borenstein with the James and Joe. And this three bet looking pretty strong against a fellow big stack in Batito opening from early position. So, you know, Batito can Five certainly elect. Wow, ASCII though, hold on, back it up. Wants to, wants to go with King Queen suited. Um, Goo. Yeah, it's tough because he is so short and he probably won't get the opportunity to pick up many better hands than King Queen suited off of that Even stack. More. But when you're 95 more, so facing you a three bet before you, it yeah, does make the king queen shrivel up a bit. Definitely a weirder spot now for Petito, even though ASCII is short. I would imagine that most times he was planning to call the three bet from Borenstein. But now wondering, should he ISO, should he fold? What's gonna happen if he calls this 245K, but <coughs> the action is reopened, right? Back to Borenstein. Yeah, so the shot clock came into play at the start of day three. So we see time bank cards being deployed here by Petito. Remember, every player has 30 seconds per decision. If they need additional thinking time, they have to use time bank cards. They received six at the start of today. They'll receive an additional six cards at the start of tomorrow should they progress to day four. Some of the first ever Poker Stars time bank cards being deployed in North America. There's more time. Oh, time oh, sorry. Yeah. That, you yeah, see? Still some hand. still some growing pains. Even the time banks are jet lagged. I would assume you do at some point. Yeah. We even measure the stacks different here in North America. Inches. <laughs> Spending a lot of time on this decision, I do wonder, you know, if this is necessarily the spot you want to be employing most of your time banks. Potentially could be some other big decisions throughout the day. It does end up folding, which makes it easy for Bornstein, of course, to just run it against ASCII. All in, all. All in and a call. So it's Jax against King Queen. Another King Queen at risk. Better than Jax. No. Like I'm Skittles to believe it. versus Starburst. But if I come in, you fold. If you continue, I probably don't. I don't call. I only five bit. Yeah. I wouldn't continue versus five bit. You continue with five bit? No. I don't like. Maybe people try to spike the Jax. You know, some will <laughs> send mine right here. <laughs> If I, if I hit it, though, you know, it's big. 
Well, we've lost a player from one of the outer tables, so if Askey loses this race, he will go out in 30th place. We'll check on who went out in 31st in just a moment. Ooh. Ace, eight, seven on the flop. Bad ball. Askey with four out. Kings and queens working for him. You just had to wait for a river calls. Can I have a heart? Oh. There is a heart on the turn. 11 outs now for Askey. Kings. A queen. Too many outs, I think. And the hearts. Many, many outs. <laughs> Too many, many I think. Can I have a king? Can I have a heart? How much do I win? When's the next page up? He's resisting using his one time. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Never underestimate the, the power of the James and Joe, and we oh, lose. Your hand as well. Anthony Askey in 30th place, oh, taking God. us down to 29 players. He cashes for $6,905. And five now we can check days, on who finished no, in 31st place. You should have that all in was dealt out one. on the main like stage. 375. Yeah, one big, yeah. It was a former NAPT champion, Joe Tihan, who won NAPT Los Angeles back in 2010. Oh, Batito calling from the button with 4-3 offsuit against Borenstein's plus yeah. one open. You ever heard of the power of position? That is a little out of line. Just a tad. So Borenstein's open called by Batito and Shulman. Right, the 4-3 is going to win, isn't it? Not necessarily. <laughs> ah. Okay, so Petito has paired his three. However, Shulman's nine still ahead. A decent flop for Shulman, but out of position against two opponents. Just going to check it over. Tito can actually have, of course, a much stronger range than his actual holding in this spot when he calls an early position open. He should have a lot of the middling pairs that are playing pretty well against this board. He will have perhaps some king-queen suited, king-jack suited, king-ten suited, those types of hands that are going to be in the mix as well. So trip certainly a possibility, but for Shulman, just good enough for him to continue so still three-way going to the turn. Seven of hearts. Shulman now a four-to-one favorite in this three-way pot. Oh, he's so cool. I hate him. Now leads on the turn and leads small. 50K into 365K. It's funny because Batito is Spanish for little bet. So 75. Oh, wow. Interesting. That is not a little bet. Well, listen. All right. If you're going to call pre with 4 3 offsuit, then I like to see you take this line against the lead. You don't expect Shulman, of course, to be leading that often with trips and for that sizing. So perhaps Start detecting a little bit of weakness. Oh. The only line here is out of. All right, who's this Petito character? I'm looking at him up. What's Petito. Little bet. So Petito is an Israeli player who started today amongst the chip leaders, was the table chip leader, still one of the biggest stacks on the main stage, has 700K in live earnings. Best result that we could find could just say was at the five. World Series of Poker in 2019. Made the final table of the 1K little one for one drop, a fourth place finish for just shy of a quarter of a million. And as I mentioned, this line credible in the sense that he will have trips here sometimes, but Shulman, you know, trying to get away with a block bet of, of sorts with that lead on the turn, doesn't fully believe it. So let's find out how out of line Batito can get. Will he follow through now without improving? I, I didn't even have time to say he was going to give up before he gave up. <laughs> nice. Sand, Nick. Sand. A good hand, a good pot for Nick Shulman, who now has the table chip lead. 2.5 million, 100 bigs. Seven 
Action has been folded around to David Coleman. Jack six of hearts in the cutoff. Coleman raises to 50,000. Scott Ball is on the button. <laughs> Seems interested. And sometimes two players are just destined to tango at the table. Can't avoid each other. Ball certainly can find a three bet spot, I think, with this type of hand against the cutoff open off of 22 Ball bigs. One all, in. all in with King Jack offsuit. 570. Well, it's going to get through Coleman. The question is if the blinds got anything. And yes yeah. is the answer. <laughs> Borenstein waking up with tens in the small blind. I think against these positions, 22 bigs effective for ball. Got to be pretty happy with finding tens. You are going to be a little bit weary of, of course, you know, when you call here. I mean, assuming Bornstein does go with the call, you know, you don't want Coleman to come in there with call. an ISO because then you wouldn't feel great about your hand. But you see that Coleman's hand is just going to be a fold here and it will be a flip. Ish. Yeah. Obviously, we saw a Jack folded. Like hot dogs versus apple pie. One of these two American things has a slight mathematical advantage. Borenstein actually a six to four favorite and ball the at-risk player here. Needs to hit to survive. Queen six, deuce on the flop. Kings and jacks are Scott Ball's immediate outs. Turn card is a tray, so same out. Five cards in the deck that can save Scott Ball. A king or a jack required. River card is a nine, ten hold, and Scott Ball is eliminated in 28th place, taking us down to 27, three away from the redraw. Ball's out. Okay, King Jack suited for Nick Shulman. Raises to 65,000. David Coleman. Snowman's. Num num. Maria's second favorite hand. Mm -hmm. You're not wrong. Coleman and Shulman certainly have a lot of history with each other playing high rollers. <laughs> Then you've got Jonathan Borenstein in the mix as well with nines. I thought it was Berenstein. Calls on the button. Those are the bears, I think. A fold from the small blind. The short stack in the big blind folds. So we are going three ways to the flop. Three pulls. There's a nine <laughs> and two clubs. Wow. So Borenstein was already ahead. Has flopped top set. Nick Shulman with the flush draw. Yeah, it appears that especially multi-way Shulman is going to try to realize his equity cheaply. Has two overs, has a flush draw. It's kind of fitting that a guy named Coleman created this cooler. And uh, Borenstein really trying to trap both of his opponents by checking in position, which again, you know, it's a little bit dangerous. It's a vulnerable board texture, even for top set. Certainly not out of the realm of possibility that your opponents can, of course, not only have the suited combos for flesh draws, but also perhaps some eight, seven suiteds will be in the mix for straight draws. And now Jack 10, of course, will also have turned a straight draw. So it is an interesting check back here with Shulman now leading with that additional gut shot equity. Or 
Augustine's probably going to want to raise right here just because there's going to be a lot of bad rivers. That might kill his action. Does nope. land on just the call, though. Hold on to your butts. Manages to fade it all. Shulman does not improve. And you wonder, because Borenstein didn't raise on the turn, if Shulman is going to feel like he needs to turn this hand into a bluff. But is he really able to maybe get Borenstein off of Queen X here, if that's the type of hand that he had? Which makes sense, you know, with the check back on the flop and then calling the turn. Borenstein will have turned some top pair hands. But also, you know... The clock. Sorry, I'll just I'll sit here all day. <laughs> <laughs> just by accident. <laughs> But also, you know, Shulman ahead of some draws, right? Going to be ahead of Jack-10, even though he does block some of that with the Jack of Clubs. But maybe just trying to target perhaps some hand like eights and sevens that'll be in there that can't really withstand this river barrel, which is unfortunate because we see Borenstein pretty much with the top of range given the run out, even though eight-seven gets there. So I'm not sure that he is going to put in the raids, even though he still does have an incredibly strong hand. Well, you feel like you're gonna raise, and then all of a sudden you're looking at 300,000 in front of you, and you're like, ah, maybe I should just call. The sizing on the river from Shulman, Shulman not particularly polarizing though, right? You know, just going for half pot. They did so do it. That makes Borenstein feel good about say, his hand. Stuck to the plan. <laughs> Jonathan Borenstein takes it down. Making it look easy today. Playing nearly 150 big blinds, more than three and a half million chips. Nick Shulman drops down below two million, but still has around 80 big blinds. Blinds will be going up in just shy of four minutes. Yeah, Flopping sets, the best. It's Patka, Thomas Patka. He's picked up kings here. Opens under the gun, plus one to 60,000. Ace, Jack of Diamonds for Ping Lu. Maria has literally just sprung out of her seat because oh! she has just been gifted oh my gosh, one so of cute. the special Formula One edition Sharkies. Thank you, Nikki, thank you. Whoever got it and had Nikki bring it to me. Thank you, did, Nikki. You're the best. I have seen Maria Ho You're the best. win huge pots. I have seen Maria Ho cash poker tournaments. <laughs> I have never seen Maria Ho so happy. It's so cute. It has a helmet in one hand and ace king of spades in the other. Meanwhile, Patka is all in with kings against Ping Lu's ace jack of diamonds. Patka, so the cute. qualifier, at risk, but <laughs> <Sorry>. ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. There's a hand going on here. It's a pretty big pot. Back to the action. Ooh. Queen, 10, deuce. Heart's not a factor, oh, however... There is a straight draw for Lou. Aces and Kings working for him. Five outs, five cards that Thomas Patka has to fade on the river. The board pairs and Patka doubles up. Gerta folds. Lou is out. Thank you. Pocket Kings for you. Seventy K is the raise. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Uh oh. Ooh. It looks like I burned my Coleman cooler joke too quickly. 
Because this is shaping up to be a real one. Yeah, especially Button versus Big Blind. Very unfortunate. You effective stack here, just around 40 bigs to start the hand. Hot pink chips going into the pot. Probably going to find some four bet non all in sizing to try to induce his opponent. Again, Coleman can have a lot of light three bets here considering he's up against a button open. So you want to make sure you can keep his customer All in. All of it. And suited is a snapper. Coleman doesn't seem that disappointed by needing to hit a three outer or some clubs. Well, you weren't here 10 minutes ago when he said, you know, that he's running pretty good today. So I feel like Hello, he's, guys. he's feeling it. He thinks it's going to come. Nobody ever got to the top 20 in a massive field tournament by not running good. 6-5 tray, one club. He's going for max pain. He wants it to come on the river. <laughs> Can't make a wheel at least. Turn card is a five. Needs to hit the ace. Not the ace, one of three aces. River card. Oh, the fake ace. You are going to double up through Coleman. You at two and a half million now. Coleman back down to 1.2, still over 40 bigs. You's in with Ace. I've been here like something. two and a half years. Shulman certainly won't be folding Jack 10. Did you know? Yeah. Did you go there? I did, yeah. What year? How old are you? 34. A little too old to know my friends. 34, that's the other age. Use other card, the nine of hearts. So you were born like uh, 89? Queen nine, eight, two <laughs> spades. One heart, one Up nine. Up and down for Shulman. Oh, yeah, this okay. is going to um, be interesting, Shulman. Yeah, yeah. One of those straight guys. Yeah. Okay. So not often. Like, you poker license. Yeah, backdoor possibilities. What's the oh wait, license? sorry. Yeah. Excuse oh, me. Um, <laughs> uh, I want Up and down to the six I card straight. Yeah, Shulman's going to want to start putting more chips into yeah, the pot very quickly. Like wants to try to get as mm -hmm. much money in there as possible. Nice. A couple of draws, yeah, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. A lot of hands that are willing to come along, some pair and straight draws, some two pair combos, flush possibilities. Would you come along? Leaving after this tournament? Oh, with Ace yeah. Nine of Hearts, yes. No, no, I meant him. Oh. After you win? <laughs> Ryan, you. Not you, you. Yeah, with Ace Nine of Hearts. Would I come along with his hand? No, would you come along? <laughs> I mean, did you yes. come along? Yeah. I get it now. Up 2 percent's pretty darn good. Big old brick on the turn. You know what you was hoping for, wanted to improve to some back doors. But again, I think it's just too quick to start folding potentially with a pretty innocuous turn card. Shulman can certainly double barrel with some of the Jack X, some of the 10X, some of the flushes, even a hand like seven, six that doesn't really have showdown value. Flip. Feels like you have to kind of get yeah, sticky in this yeah. spot yeah. How many when we're talking about all of the semi bluffs Sean uh, could have here. Cool. You don't 30? block any spades as oh. you. Yeah. Very fortunate. Ooh. Ooh. Very Committing fortunate. a whole lot of chips. Well, the hand that can't win 
and is unlikely to improve. Well, uh, I lived in Italy for 20 years. So Flush draw, no good. Okay, well, the new 7 6 gets there, which is, you know, uh, this, part this year of Showman's semi bluff. But again, as I mentioned, you doesn't uh, block any spades and doesn't block any Jack X, 10 X. So okay. there's a whole lot of other hands we'll that Shulman might be inclined to continue yeah. firing with yeah. that you has beat. 10K. 10,000 people? I know. Oh, okay, I you cash for 10,000. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. 675. Nice. And now I just like 75. Yeah. You checks, Shulman bets 675. There's going to be quite a few hands that are able to go for value on the river. Obviously, straights, but two pairs as well. I think with this run out, you know, queens and nines and nines and eights are going to be able to go for value. Queen eight, of course. And you blocking some of those two pair combos. Just going to look Shulman up. Indeed, the up gets looked. Nice thing, sir. Thank you. Such a, such a <laughs> Who is kissing Nick Shulman's butt? Other than me. Other than that's you. A, that's, a, that's a money flop. Turn in the river. Doesn't he know that there's only room for one set of lips, and those are Joe Stapleton's? He's king for ping. 90. Seven raises to 90. Do I have to say 90 when they say it? It feels pretty obvious. Yeah, okay. 90, though. sure. She's out of Lou going 3x here from the small blind into O's big. And oh. Yeah. It was big. Certainly has a hand that you could call with in position C3. It's got that connective properties suited. Why not? Why does it sound like there's like some drum and bass or something coming from this? It's probably the drum and bass. So they're, um, ooh, ace, eight, nine, two hearts. Whole lot of flop for both of these players. So we're right next door to Circus Circus, and there's some kind of um, carnival in their parking lot. That's where the music's coming from. Are you being serious? Yeah. We're that close to Circus Circus? Yeah, it's literally right out, right behind this wall. Yeah. The parking lot is at least. We started this hand with about 20 bigs, so. You know, no matter what type of pressure he faces, certainly not going to be folding ace king on this board. You wonder if O's going to want to just call here, or if he's going to start getting aggressive just because he feels like he's got to have so much equity. And we can see 52%. Just get the chips in and let the poker gods sort them out. Oh, it's all in. And Lou makes the call. Technically, Lou, the player at risk. He doesn't like it. He knows it's a flip. Slightly behind. Which hand do you like? Here? <laughs> I'm not sure which paper. I know it's for the. I think you got to take the drawing hand here, right? It just feels better. No. <sighs> I don't know. Like when you miss, you're supposed to miss. Look at Ping's face. Save my brain power. Here we go to the turn. Now oh. it's a favorite. Eight of diamonds. Wow. Lou not dead. Down to 5%. I guess it was better than the heart coming. River card. Ooh. It's an ace. Wow. Hello. The old suck resuck. Hello. <laughs> That's one way to win it. That was exciting. Was Lou exciting. hits the ace. Who's announcing? Oh, God. Uh, Two, three, four, five. 
King fills up in lieu of being eliminated. I saw so Sam Kraft in here for the big game. He probably is. Action folded to David Coleman. Has pocket sevens. No Mitch, Crockford's is part of Resorts World. Coleman has made it 80,000. King Queen, mm. the J.O. who's now playing eight bigs. And you really don't mind having this hand once it's folded to the cutoff or button. And wow, very interestingly, O is going to call just playing. Oh. Okay. This is also very tricky here for Ryan. Yeah, ace jack in the big. Playing 20 bigs. Looks think, like yeah. just a call, Griffin. Yeah, it's, it's just safer. It's just the lower, lower variance route. You know, Coleman has to be relatively strong, raising an early position. This O flat from the small blind, you know, maybe Ryan doesn't think that this is a... Ooh. Always coming say? seven. That's what they say. Always coming seven. A set for Coleman. Expect to see a bet from Coleman into two opponents here. Really hoping that someone has a nine or some spades and a tricky, tricky check back. I love this from Coleman. It's just one of those spots where Coleman is just so aware that this doesn't hit O's range. You have two sevens in your hand, so it makes it less likely that. You know, Ryan Yu is on base. Yeah. You need to have a specifically a nine or specifically a flush draw. So giving an opportunity for someone to catch up, not being afraid of bad turn cards. You know, now any flush does beat you, but, you know, if somehow O has two spades in his hand, the money's going in anyway, so. Well, they have caught up, Griff, because obviously we see you pair his ace, and also O has picked up the nut flush draw. And it's a perfect, yeah, it's a perfect card to, to show why that, check is so crafty you know you have now created such a, a beautiful opportunity to make chips i think a lot of people watching at home would have always bet that flop there and gotten two folds and now we see an opportunity where he could potentially get all of o's chips and at least one street bet from ryan Yu. 110 Delayed continuation bet of 110,000. We can see that Ryan Yu is actually drawing dead with top pair here. O does have that flush draw, 19% equity. Good fold, folder. yeah. Just have so, so few chips to work with. You're just... Expecting your opponent to have an ace a lot of the time there. Ryan, too high up in his range, so under-repped with this ace-jack. Pre-flop, on the flop, now on the turn, and a complete brick on the river. Will Ryan be able to get away from a large bet? Coleman going to be pretty confident that you is split between, you know, something like what he has a decent sized ace, maybe something like 9x with the spade. Maybe yeah. Something like queen nine with the queen of spades or king nine with the king of spades would have overcalled in the big here. And then, of course, called the turn. So.
So if I'm up against that range, what do I want to bet? Probably something polarizing, probably something pretty big, and that looks to be about close to 300,000. It is 300,000. Yeah. 300K into 500K. And it's, what, about half of these remaining chips? Yeah, it, it looks from the, the way he's moving his chips like he kind of wants to give it, throw them in there, but I mean, he's a really talented player, Ryan. I, I, I also, yeah, it's too bad. Makes the call, gets shown the set. Big pot for David Coleman, 1.1 million in the middle. And that's going to give David Coleman a stack of 1.5 million, just shy of 40 big blinds. Ryan Yu now playing fewer than 10 big blinds. Ryan Yu is going to get it in here. A three will be folded from Shkirta, and it being just eight big blinds, Lou is going to give Ryan Yu some action, surely. I think he is just getting a count, but... Eight big blinds, you can't be raising pairs and then even considering folding them. That's kind of built into the what this is, right? Don't bother raising it if you can't call off the eight big blinds. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe just a bit of posturing. Just want a little little camera time. Little suspense for the friends and family at home. So, classic race underway at the feature table. Ace Jack against threes. And it is Ryan Hughes, Ace Jack at risk here. Good luck to you guys. Ten, eight, deuce with two spades. Looking good for you. 13 outs now. Still behind right now, but a statistical favorite. Yeah, and actually, preflop was a rare favorite as the overcards. And now increased that lead a little bit, but now is going to be a Ooh. big underdog. Oh, brutal card. So many cards would have even given Ryan you a straight draw, like a king, queen, seven, or nine. But the four of clubs was... One of the last cards he wanted to see. Oof. Wow, brick, brick, threes hold. And we see Ryan Yu eliminated from the NAPT Las Vegas main event in 17th place. That is going to take us to 16 players, and that is going to necessitate another redraw. Yu cashes for $12,070. All right, so survive. So that's how we got down to two tables in the PokerStars North American Poker Tour Las Vegas main event. We returned from the dinner break with 12 players competing for a seat at the final table. Live coverage of day three of this $1,650 tournament continue here at Resorts World Las Vegas as we check the payouts, the prize money up for grabs, the biggest slices of the $1.6 million prize pool reserved for the finalists tomorrow including the top three, who will get six-figure scores. More than a quarter of a million euros for the winner, $268,945. Plus, the first NAPT trophy to be awarded since 2011. Yes, the NAPT is back. We are here in Vegas for the first time since 2010. James Harskin alongside Nick Walsh. Nick, welcome to Vegas. Thank you so much. It's great to be back, and I'm very excited to see what the United States has in store for us. I know you are an Anglophile. I know you've made Brighton your home, but you are nonetheless an American person. Therefore, the return of the North American Poker Tour must mean something to you. It does indeed, and I can sense the excitement from the players out there. So many people want more poker, want more poker stars here in the States, and this is what we're serving today. Super, super excited to see what the players got for us.
As I mentioned, 12 players, two tables of six, returning from the break. We're trying to get down to a single table, be that nine, eight, seven, or six. Crucially, we don't really want to play more than two more levels tonight. As we check on the stacks of the players up on the main stage, no shorties at the feature table. Nick Shulman has slipped a bit over the course of the day. One-time chip leader, now playing 43 bigs. Anthony Dianati, also a former chip leader with 42 bigs. Ryan Lang, the shortest stack at the table with 23 bigs, about to kick off. Level 28 with the blinds at 30,000, 60,000 with a 60K big blind ante. So yeah, level 28, 75 minutes. Level 29, 75 minutes. At that point, if we are down to a single table, we will stop for the day. We will only play into level 30 tonight if we're still at two tables, and then we'll stop when we hit nine. And obviously, we will not play beyond six players tonight. So, slightly nebulous targets, but as ever, Nick, just trying to keep the days balanced. Yeah, it's important that we get through it. We want to make sure we bring you balanced coverage, and we obviously get the tournament done when it's supposed to be done. We do need to crown a winner, and uh, yeah, we're going to manage that and see how we get on. Most of the players are back in their seats. I am hearing that Sergio Aido, who sat at the outer table, has yeah, I mean, not returned they, from they dinner. Sergio, fast, you snooze, you miss out. <laughs> <laughs> Got a couple good options here at Resorts World, so maybe just waiting on a pizza or something like that. Have you had a chance to have the fabled pizza that Joe keeps talking about, James? I went to Mulberry Street Pizza last night, Nicholas. Awesome. What do you think? I thought it was pretty damn good. Nice. That is Ryan Lang, coming back from break with 1.4 million, just shy of 25 bigs. Yeah, Ryan Lang rocking the uh, Golden Knights hoodie, good. digging that. Have you ever attended a Golden Knights game before, James? I haven't. I saw a Leafs game in Toronto several years ago. That's the only hockey game I've ever been to. Yeah, hockey is a great spectator sport, and they do it really, really well here in Vegas. Highly recommend that if you guys are going to come and join us at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bet into the nuts. Not the best strategy. Right, guys, here we go. Huh? Good luck. Not a great like, strategy. Uh, Not a great strategy. Here we go. The really start of man. level 28, 30, 60 right. blinds. Family Worst oriented. Well, that was and yeah, we've been facing a lot of questions over the course of the day about future plans for the NAPT. We've announced its return. We've staged this event here at Resorts World Las Vegas. Where does the North American Poker Tour go next? Details to be confirmed, but I imagine there'll be several stops in 2024, and those details will be announced soon. Suffice to say, PokerStarsLive.com is a great place to find out information about future events. The PokerStars Live app should be your light and your guide. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, now more than ever, that app is just coming into... Um, a much more useful moment. Obviously, already a pretty stellar app following EPT and UKPT, but now so much more poker, even in the United States. Um, you know, don't forget, we got Nottingham going on as well at the moment, James. Um, the million million guarantee for UKPT. Really excited to see who's going to take that down as well. But if you guys want to follow along with the clocks, etc., great place to get that info on the app. Ace high, still ahead on this board. Massey also with the wheel draw. Calls the bet of 60,000 and ace high. Still good by the river. Yeah, he's gonna have to bet here. If he wants to take it down, 10 high is very rarely gonna be any good. 200,000 to 300 K. Massey lets it go. Definitely a spot where the ace high could find a hero. But uh, nice little move there for the old 10-7. Sammy chipping up to nearly 4 million. Has the table chip lead around 65 big blinds. 75-minute blind levels in this main event from here on out. 
It will conclude tomorrow. We'll stream the final table from 1 p.m. Pacific. And on Sunday, we'll conclude our coverage from NAPT Las Vegas with the final table of the 5K high roller. That started today, and it concludes on Sunday. And, of course, in that high roller, Nick, we have got 30 gold pass winners. Wow. And these are the special edition Vegas pass winners. Right. They don't just get that 5K high roller entry. They also get tickets for the Formula One next week. I, you know what's funny? You you mentioned that. I actually met one of our Gold Pass winners last night, arrived at the party. He's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. Can you help? I was like, yeah. And you know what the first thing it was I did? I suggested the do, James. Download the app. I'm not even I'm not even exaggerating, guys. That, actually, that isn't a shill. I legitimately said that. Nick Shulman is open under the gun with Ace Queen. Fours on the button, fold. Yep, just decides against getting involved with the pair. Pocket jacks for Massey. Looks like he's decided just to call in the small blind here. I think that makes a lot of sense. These guys are pretty deep stacked. Uh, the effective stack here at the moment is about 41 big blinds. That's Shulman. And I really like slow playing jacks in these spots. You just, you know, no reason to get too out of hand from out of position here at this stage, getting close to a final table as well. Well, it is an ace high flop. Nick Shulman with the advantage. Palampati came along for the ride from the big blind. He has paired his six, but. Probably won't stick around facing this bet of 150,000 from Shulman. Massey is in. Palan Passy is out, so heads up to the turn. Deuce of clubs. Nick Shulman now. With a flush draw to go with top pair, 97% equity. Aaron Massey's checked him for a second time. Yeah, you have to imagine that uh, there's plenty of suited hands, plenty of clubs in Massey's flatting range there from the small blinds. Although you could argue that a lot of those suited hands are suited hands with an ace. So Shulman probably still finds another bet here, I imagine. You know, clubs are a concern. You're obviously blocking clubs with the queen of clubs regardless. You have a draw if they do have, you know, a hand like eight, seven of clubs or something like that too. Again, questionable as to whether or not that would be in the small blinds calling range, but a consideration nonetheless. Massey's hand kind of under -repped. But I think he's, he's done the right thing here. Got to call the flop, and then I think just giving up on the turn feels good. And, uh, yeah, another one for Shulman now sitting on about 49 big blinds that puts him second in chips on our feature table. Yeah, 2.9 million. That means he is an above average stack once again, the average being 2.7 million with 12 players remaining. Six players at the feature table, six players at the outer table. The field merges when we're down to nine. That will bring the final redraw of the tournament. Raising from the cutoff, 120k. King four of clubs, the hand. I approve. Like this suited combo coming Nick. out. Shulman, Jack three of hearts. <coughs> Queen ten nine with two clubs. Pretty good flop for King four. If you're gonna raise king four of clubs, this is a pretty good flop. Gutter to the straight, plus the second nut flush draw. Keeping it chill, check, check on the flop. Pairs the four now. Yeah, Shulman of course with the open-ended straight draw. 
14% equity. I imagine Shulman probably wants to have a lead on this turn with the straight draw. At some frequency. Uh, you could also argue that the check on the flop is a little bit on the stronger side from position here. You'd imagine that if he had a bluff, he'd probably bluff queen nine ten at a pretty decent frequency as well. Shulman decides not to lead. Check. So it goes check, check, and we're headed to the river, and it is the queen of spades. So a pair of fours, the hand. There is the prospect that Sammy could be bluffed off this, Jack though, high. but... Nick Shulman takes the showdown value. Yep, just playing it cool, not getting too out of line. Man, Ojax watching on Twitch says, is the NAPT beard mandatory? There are a lot of beards. None finer than that of our dealer. Yeah, potentially observing November. I'm going to say that that is not growth for November because <laughs> we're, what, 10 days into the month? If you can grow that much facial hair in 10 days, you're probably not human. Yeah, you're probably right, James. Button raise from Sandeep Palampati. Round to the big blind, Anthony Dianati. Who for this table we can say is clean shaven. <laughs> this is a four day tournament. It concludes tomorrow. Every single hand from the final table will Thank be streamed know. live. Cards up from one o'clock local time. Susan is predicting a four-way all-in to end the evening. I'll allow it. Seems reasonable. That certainly would be exciting. 1.3. 1.3. A little less. Spicy, James. Four deuce as a raise here. Small blind. Immediately punished. Lang with the all in. Yeah, great spot for Lang there. Just really, really easy shove versus steal. And uh, chipping up. Ryan Lang now sitting around 28 big blinds deep. Definitely in that three bet jam range in terms of effective stock here. Feels great. Nice pickup. T. Jones 78 says, that dealer has a beard that a dwarf from Lord of the Rings would be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Would not look out of place in the minds of Moria. Nick Shulman, King Jack of Diamonds in the cutoff, raises to 125,000. Lang folds Queen Jack in the small. And Sammy folding 6 3 in the big. Sammy still the table chip leader. Overall, 
chip leader, tournament chip leader, is Sergio Aido, who's at the other table, who I've been told has finally returned from the dinner break. Maybe Sergio is enjoying a nice charcuterie plaza from Wally's or a vegan meal from Crossroads. <laughs> Or some liquor-infused ice cream from downstairs. Have you seen that place, James? Which place? There's a liquor-infused ice cream parlor. Huh. Yeah. 125. And there's a gun raised from Palapati with King Jack. Round what, two, what Aaron Massey in the big blind, who has ace five off. I basically figured out every time I bluffed, I just ran into the nuts. So Massey here, 39 bigs. Pow and Patty, 41. Yep. Interesting fold there. I'm really surprised we didn't see a defend there from the ace five, in particular ace five as opposed to ace six, for example, James. Yep. Of course, the opportunity to make the, the wheel I was curious about um, that. there. Uh, I, I would also note that the fact that we have big blind antes in play means that there is significantly more dead money that should be battled for. And I would be surprised if Ace Five isn't 100% call there in the big blinds. I realize the under the gun open can be a little bit on, on the stronger side. You can be dominated from time to time, but I think there's a chance that fold is going to be costly long term. Might be a little bit of a leak, potentially. Um, we're seeing just a little bit tighter play in anticipation of a final table, a little bit of an ICM adjustment, but I think Ace Five just needs to be in there. Ace Jack suited now. Very pretty hand under the gun, plus one. I would say from what I've seen, of Aaron Massey, he does play on the tighter side. Well, you know what they say. Tight is right, and... Oh, he's a man after my own heart. It wasn't a criticism, it was very much an observation. Yeah, no, sure, absolutely. And yeah, just the raise and the take it down there. This time, off suit. Flop for sixes here, obviously. Wang is going to check it over. Probably expect to see a check here a bunch. Definitely don't want to turn sixes into a bluff at this point. Can just have the best hand right here, right now. Great turn for Ling, though. Might be tempted to check again, honestly. With two flush draws, you're blocking both. It should be noted. I think... Um, Checking back here, obviously keeping it cool against potentially an ace jack that might flap from that position. And that is the nuts on the river. Nice. Nice work. So, yeah, Lang's got to find a bet now. You're really hoping your opponent has a hand like king jack at this point. And given the fact you haven't bet any street, like a lot of your flush draws probably just a bet on this flop. Like a hand like 9-10 probably likes to bet this flop. Um, your hand is somewhat disguised, somewhat under repped, but... Plenty of 10x combos. Check. Check back. <laughs> Nuts no, 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 is good. Yeah, six is just not wanting to uh, put any more chips in there. Seems pretty reasonable. 
Well, we need to head over to the other table, Nick, because there is a big pot being played between the two big stacks, Sergio Aido and Ping Lu. Picking up the action on the turn. What have we got there? King Jack 10 3 on the board. And that is a bet from Lou of 425,000. King Jack 10 3 with two hearts. So a straighty board with a flush draw. Sergio Aido calling the bet of 425,000. Going to the river, which is, wait for it. Oh, wow, the ace of hearts. Everything gets there. Yeah, that's a really spicy river. Straights and flushes abound. Sergio has checked. Little glance at the cards and a check. Sergio Aido tabling 10 3 for two pair. Jacks the hand for Ping Lu. A set of jacks is good. Understand why that river was a bit of a scare card for him, though. And he is going to win that pot and take the chip lead from Sergio Aido. Ping Lu now playing 4.7 million. Big pot poker, James. That was a very meaningful pot at this stage, guys. Getting real close to a final table. Those chips are going to be put to good use as we head down to the final nine. Five seconds. Ryan. Big one, Ryan. We've seen a pretty steady pace of play today with you know the eliminations coming relatively frequently I feel that we've been static I feel that we've been at two tables of six for an extended period of time and I wonder if we're going to have to play through another full level before something gives for it forces the action and we see more casualties yeah it looks like we've had some consolidation right Still pretty deep here. 31 big blind effective average, sorry, not average, excuse me, being the smallest stack here at our feature table. And as we always anticipate, James, a lot of tension surrounding making it to a final, right? Making it to a final is the next uh, yeah. landmark that, that players are going to focus on. And at that point, I think we see a lot of slowing down. We've seen some tighter folds. Um, and, you know, it makes sense, right? We're getting closer to some bigger ladders, but also... Um, you know, it's nice to be able to say I final tabled the uh, NAPT main event. Queen Jack 9. Is Lane just flopping the nuts again? However, Dianati does have the club draw with a straight draw of his own. Sixty thousand apiece, and it's the ace of clubs on the turn. So Dianetti now has a flush. Lang, who still has the straight, has a redraw to the nut flush. This is pretty nasty, James. Having the king of clubs here is usually go time in terms of a continuation bet here, and. Uh, yeah, really, really sexy spot here for Dianati. Just really awesome spot to get paid here. Assuming there's no sickness on the river here. Sickness, sickness. Question is, is there going to be a check raise on the turn, which we all should know by now is a spot very rarely bluffed. A check raise on the turn against most players is just going to be very, very strong. But it should be noted as well, the Ten of Clubs here is usually going to be pretty safe too yeah 420 and yeah there it is 420 uh, solid meme check raise size
can't fold this, can you? You've got the straight. You've got the king of clubs in your hand. Yeah, this is this is a really sad story. You're just you just gotta call and just pray. Rivercard is the queen of diamonds pairing the board. Dianati with a lock on this. Obviously some full house potential now, but in the game of Texas Hold'em, not really a consideration. I think you're just always going to go for, for value here. Not sure if this is a bit of a Hollywood from Dianati here. Or maybe potentially just trying to figure out how he wants to size here, keeping an eye on his chips, looking at the pot here as well. So 1.1 in the middle. I would go really big here if I was Dianati. That is 350,000 tall. Oh, wow. Keeps it really small. Might have let Lang off the hook here a little bit, but obviously a bet getting paid regardless. That is the street of value nonetheless. So about one-third pot on the river. Actually getting closer to one quarter. And, yeah, just a snap call with the king of clubs blocker. That's going to take Lang down to 17 big blinds, James. And uh, headed towards the danger zone. Still very playable. So now we are in a situation where there is a short stack at the table. Shulman back in action, racing from the cutoff with Ace 8. Sammy back ahead, calling out of the big blind with King 9. Ace, Queen 9 on the flop, top pair versus bottom pair. Mr. Shulman, how do you feel about a continuation bet here? Okay. Keeping it cool on the three club board. Ten of hearts turn. Uh, you got to imagine at this point there's a bet though, James. Um, I don't think two clubs would ever miss the opportunity to find a lead here. <coughs> Definitely starting to get concerned. You're not going to get value from your flop flush, for example. But a bet and to take it down. Definitely an interesting one because that check on the flop does give you quite a lot of information going to the turn. And I think on that turn, there's plenty of sort of combo draws, like one card straights and flush draws sort of in combination that you get value from. So another nicely played hand there from Nick Shulman. Now, Tom has raised a very good question that needs a response. James, Chat Pro Saturday. Are we going to make it a thing? Now, we haven't had Chat Pro Saturday for a while. Not because we haven't been broadcasting on Saturdays, but because I keep nixing it. Yeah. Because we brought back the NAPT, because we brought back the big game, yeah. because I'm in a good mood, we're in Vegas, it's a party town, I will allow it. Oh guys, this isn't this isn't James Hardigan you're talking to right now. This is Partigan, the official Partigan. That's pretty exciting, guys. Warm up. The keys for tomorrow. Chat Pro Saturday making a Flash getting involved. Right, you guys will notice that big blind fold again. That is kind of anticipating a continue from the 9-7 there with such a good price, but again, playing, playing it cool. 
I would argue that the 9.7 probably is one you can sneak in a fold once in a while, though, compared to the Ace-5 fold we saw just a moment ago from Massey, I believe it was. That's right, Maroon Poker. I am giving you the keys to the Lambo. <laughs> Chat Pro Saturday is a thing. Very exciting. By the way, there's still at least, at least, two hours of poker to play tonight. So there is still the prospect that you could ruin it for everyone by saying something really <laughs> stupid that tilts me or annoys me and makes me punish everyone. Yeah, don't be premature with the chat for though, guys. Save it for tomorrow. And uh, also a couple comments out there regarding it's going to be midnight soon. If it's midnight in your time zone, it's not midnight in Vegas, and we're observing local time only. Correct. Correct. Chat Pro Saturday will be for tomorrow's stream only, which starts at 1 p.m. Pacific. Show me back in the mix here. Pocket nines under the gun. you got to love pocket nines. Straddle for less. Pretty uneventful there. On to the next one. That's right, Tom. Just to make it clear, right now, we will have Chat Pro Saturday. When it's Saturday here in Vegas, not now. I don't care if it's Saturday in Europe. We're not in Europe. This is the NAPT, not the EPT. But Tom is right. Don't ruin it before the end of today's stream. Guys, just play it cool. Play it cool. You should know by now, I have a low tolerance for idiocy. Yes. James is sensitive, you guys. Just be cool, and we can enjoy it tomorrow. Ace Jack back in the mix, under the gun once more. And this is a nice hand. So Dianati was the initial raiser here. 57 big blinds. Palampati, 41. So there's going to be a three bet here for sure. Or at least there should be in my opinion. Um, and you're probably going to want to size up very slightly because you are out of position. That's generally the vibe. Seven raises, 5 2 5. Very precise, James. I like that a lot from Palampati. This is such a classic spot with Ace Jack. You just feel like you should be paling some of the time. It's so hard to do it without the suited ace. And he shows hey, James. Man. Dianati keeping it friendly yeah, here. And, uh, you know, giving away free information there. Well, but the I like that vibe. Looks like we're heading to the outer table again. Sergio Aido in action against Matthew Wampman. And we join this hand on the river, full board dealt. It's straighty, four cards straight out there. Ace, king, queen, 10, eight. No, there are three diamonds as well. Sergio Aido. That's the river.
Gets a fold from Wadman. And with that pot, Sergio Aido is going to retake the chip lead back over 5 million. Aido rocking the Sprite. The Rolex GMT Master 2 left-hand drive model. Notice how the crown and the date window are the other side of the watch. Wow, nothing escapes your gaze, James. Bit of an oddity, that one. Not a huge fan. 250. over on our feature table. Well, I can tell you this is blind v blind. There was actually an under the gun limp from Ryan Lang, a Gibbons. The two blinds came along for the ride, but on this flop, Dianati has bet 250,000. A fall from Lang and Shulman calling. and checks it over. Dianati with the opportunity to find a turn bet, potentially. Got the bottom end of the straight draw. In fact, he's got the draw to the queen as well, of course. This actually seems like a spot where you could fire again. Sometimes you just want to check and realize your equity regardless. Yeah, it's going to play it cool. And the river. Ace of spades, so not an improver, James, for the queen seven. However, not the worst card to potentially rep. Shulman's just got showdown. I think he checks here and just tries to get to the river. He's going to have the best hand a decent amount of the time. Given the action pre-flop, though, you know, some of Dianati's ace-x combos might have been played more aggressively. But if he wants to win it, here's the moment. The way Shulman has played his hand really feels like it's either air or it's going to be like an eight or a nine, I think. So, you know, if you bet 500K here, might get the job done. But, uh, yeah, just decides not to wrap. That makes sense as well. I mean, Queen High has a certain amount of showdown value here as well. Although you have to imagine a player like Shulman probably finding more bluffs um, if he has complete air there. And, you know, just ended up having a hand that was quite happy to check and get to showdown, potentially calling that river bet regardless. So once again, Nick Shulman, table chip leader, 3.5 million, 58 big blinds. Overall chip leader is Sergio Aido, who's over at the other table, has more than 5 million right now. Still 40 minutes to play of level 28. Blinds currently 30,000, 60,000, with a 60,000 big blind ante. Eight twenty-five behind. It's Ryan Lang's big blind. He is the short stack at the table. And Sammy Beckerhead verifying his stack size before raising here with Ace Ten of Spades. for Nick Shulman on the button. Folds. How much do you have? 8.25 behind. Ace, king of hearts for Anthony Dianati. Yeah, these guys are pretty deep stack, James. Dianati, 50 big blinds after uh, the ante and blinds have been put in. Of course, in the small blind would just be the small blind because we're doing big blind ante here live. Mm -hmm. The shot head around 54. So a three bet nonetheless. 210K though? Seems small. Yeah. That is very unusual for the small blind. I don't know if that might have been a possible misclick there. Price is in Sammy who makes the call. 
and sees a 9-5-4 flop. Ace King still ahead. Yeah, you have to imagine that depending on the continuation here, Bashahed might be tempted to come along with two over cards back to our spades once in a while. It goes check, check regardless. You also have to imagine that if Dianetti checks, Bashahed might be tempted to have it continue with some of those pairs on that low board, although potentially afraid of getting check raised by you know aces or kings. And the size of the three bet is so freaky here, James, right? Yeah. You're thinking this guy must have a monster. And chop opportunities, but ace king is going to be the best of it. At this point, I think Dianetti's pretty happy. Um, to take it to showdown, in fact, trying to go for some value apparently anyway, but yeah. So playing six-handed at both tables of the six players on the main stage, Nick Shulman has the biggest stack, 3.5 million. Ryan Lang, the shortest stack, and he's just played through the blinds. So he's got 13 bigs. Thank you. <laughs> That's what you're thinking about right now? Yes. <laughs> thinking about everything. Think about his aces. Your ace king. Unbelievable. No, that's how it goes. Oh, I hear you. Sick, sick. <laughs> I don't know. That was a pretty normal hand there, though. <laughs> you put 40k in the river and folded. I got you great, man. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking got me. Out of all the hands you played, you played a hand against him, I think I remember. Which one? You're talking to me. Your, your hand was just so sick. What's up, Phil? <laughs> wow. Is here. <laughs> Nick, I mean, uh, I'm just going to say good luck. Thank you. Else, Thank you. A visit from the goat. They are blessed. What a, group, what a groupie. Yeah. The guy follows me around. Every time I make a run, there he is. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh man. What's he doing? I really is he working the I have no idea. What's he doing? <laughs> I'm not sure. Is he vlogging? All right. I think he's yeah. trying to be in the trend. Jesus Christ. Oh, they're going to vlog. That really warms my heart seeing, seeing a Phil just join the table there for a moment. Bringing some hashtag positivity to the proceedings. Listen, guys, NAPT is back, and if that's not evidence of that fact, I don't know what is. Alan Patty is open with Ace Deuce. Aaron Massey with 9 8 in the big blind. Defense. And pairs his 8 on the flop. going to go to Florida for the. Ace on the turn. Palampati now with the advantage. 95% favorite. I've never I can't there. believe there are some cynics out there Bahamas suggesting that if there weren't cameras yeah. at this table, Phil Helmuth would not have come on stage yeah. to wish Nick yeah. Shulman good luck. So cynical. Uh, Hard to find direct, you know, outside of that. Not really. No, in terms of like, I heard. Yeah. I've been lucky there. I've heard huh? some bad stories, but. You no. can't take cash with you. You can declare. Massey folds on the turn. Declare. Good lay down. They actually, they don't, they don't care what about coming in, leaving. Yeah. That's when they're. I would imagine they like when you come in with tons of cash. You know, go right to the casino. Pace of play has been pretty good, James, in terms of actual getting through hands, right? We haven't had too much excessive no. tanking, which I really appreciate. Yeah. Um, no. 
and I also six-handed obviously inherently is going to be a little bit faster. That's anyway. true. And the shot clock was brought into play at the start of today. First two days of this tournament played without it, but now we have that 30-second timer, 30-second countdown on every single decision. The time, time bank cards being employed when they are needed. We got a first-time chatter over on Twitch, Shala. Says this looks fantastic. Can we get some claps in the chat for the set design and the production team and the quality of the camera work? It really is beautiful out here, guys. This this is looking sexy. And speaking of sexy, Pelham Potty waking up with the big pair once more. Had Queens earlier in the small blind. We saw him three bet to five hundred and twenty-five thousand. I'm assuming. Yeah, there you go. Drilled it. Yeah. Keeping it very, very precise. And it's important that you notice those patterns, guys, right? If you're watching this footage, it's really was important it? that you it's pick up on those those uh, those patterns of behavior. And Pelham Potty knows the size he wants to use at approximately this effective stack depth. And yeah, takes it down pre-flop once more. Andy on YouTube asks, is the Formula One on in Vegas this weekend? Nope. Next weekend, Grand Prix weekend. <laughs> Practice on Thursday, <laughs> qualifying Friday, the race on Saturday yeah, night, 10 p.m. local time, down the Las All Vegas Strip. Yeah, yeah, Vegas so is bad. really popping for uh, for F1 at the moment as well. Uh, lots of like, stores sorry, popping up, selling the merch. Lots hand. of people here in anticipation. There's going to be, you know, some pretty cool parties going down. They're like, you're an idiot. Some fun idiot. stuff happening next week, including a few charity no, poker tournaments I'm being hosted <laughs> by PokerStars and Oracle Red Bull Racing. Are you going to be here for the F1, James? I will be. Thanks for the invite, bro. Jeez. You think I decide that stuff? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lang's back in the mix under the gun, plus one. Hmm. My friend not telling me I'm an idiot too. <laughs> what, did they, what did they tell you how to play? A reminder, we have six players at the outer table and we're going over there now because Guess is in another pot. That's right. Sergio Aido. He's chip leader right now and he is all action. Playing against Jonathan Berenstein in this hand. 998 is the flop. A pot of about 800,000. Sergio Aido is bet 600k. Berenstein plays a time bank card. And a fold. And now Aido's up to around 6.2 million. Wait, who's that? Who's that? Oh, he's back. Some other really good players here. 12 left in the NAPT. Poker Stars main event. Let's go. Hashtag positivity. A double dose of the goat on this stream. <laughs> you people are spoiled. Got to get a picture with Phil before we go. Absolute legend. Nine high flop. Dianetti. Richard on YouTube says, thank you, gentlemen, for a clean professional announcing job. It is much appreciated. Richard, your comment is much appreciated. Thank you, sir. Good thing Richard wasn't here when Griff was doing commentary. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> no, thank you, Richard. I appreciate that. Dianati with a hand might be tempted to have a little check raise on a 5-9 deuce. Does have a decent kicker. This is cutoff versus big blind, so will be some combinations of 9x that you have out kicked. Probably more happy to have a, a check raise on this board with, you know, ace nine, king nine, but the call also completely reasonable. And that is top two on the turn. Gonna have the best hand here a ton. 
Massey does have showdown with the ace high. In a lot of cases, what you'll see here is a continuation of the flop and a check on the turn, just trying to get that ace high to showdown. Although some people will just say, I'm going to use the jack as a scare card, and I'm going to find another barrel here. Probably preferential to have a spade in your hand or a diamond in your hand, though. Makes it a little bit less likely your opponent will pick up one of those draws that might still call. Yep, seems good. Check on the turn. Ten on the river. Zup Chili says, did Phil Helmuth enter the tourney? He did. He busted yesterday. And not sure if he's playing the 5K. Not sure if he's playing the high roller. He's been filming some stuff around the venue today. Obviously, Phil did play in the big game. Played in the table that we filmed on Wednesday. Again, no spoilers. Not going to discuss any hands, any outcomes. But I can confirm Helmuth was at the first table. Playing alongside Jennifer Tilly, Arden Cho, Lex Veldhaus. Man, what a lineup. Very jealous of the uh, of our loose cannons who qualified earlier this week. Oh, and Alan Keating. Alan Keating was at that table as well. Yeah, a couple of great loose cannons, by the way. Shout out to Nikki and Lily. Again, not going to say how they fared. We'll find out when the TV shows air in early 2024. Joe asked, where is Alan Keating? Alan literally flew in for the day. Flew in, played on the big game, flew out. So I don't want to put you on the spot here, James, but this is a question I was getting a lot even before we shot the big game this week. When can we expect to see that, and whereabouts do you think we'll be seeing it? If you can answer that. I imagine it will be some point in 2024. Where depends on where you are in the world. Okay. Look, it's not a cheap show to make. Yeah. So it's not just something we're going to stick straight on YouTube. I understand, yeah. These are going to be TV shows made for actual traditional broadcast networks. Okay, Boomer. JK. No, it's going to no, be... No, it's, it's a fair comment. I know people think that needs to be on Netflix, needs to be on Prime. But the reality <laughs> is, if you want casual eyeballs, if you want to bring people into poker, you still got to be on old school traditional TV. No, I agree. I mean, look, how many people do we know that said, oh, I, I, was, I turned on TV late at night on Channel 4 or whatever, and there was, a, there was poker, and I thought, this is cool, I'll give this a go. It really is an important tool to you know, growing the, um, the game that we know and love. Sea Turtle Man says leaking cannon names Took might not be a good idea. Morning, They're out in the public domain, dude. Nice it's the whole public process of how they qualified, how they were cast, when they were announced, Nothing. being the big game on tour, we're at a live event. Can't exactly keep it under wraps who's playing. I like those shoes, though. And by the way, yeah. don't test me. I have yeah. given the green light to Chat Pro yeah, Saturday, yeah. but I reserve the right here. to revoke that here, right? if you provoke. Yeah. It's not like the wind. No, it's not like the wind. So no, let me just do a little rhyme here. No. That's don't cool. provoke if you don't want the revoke. <laughs> my model, my girl, yes, I need to work on that, but you get the gist. You get the idea of what I'm alluding to. I can't order a you mess with the bull, you get the horns. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. Like, I'm sorry. I'll make sure we play at the wind next time. Yeah, the Israeli guy. You go to a lot of the uh, UFC fights out here in Vegas? I go to some. Not, not a ton, but, you know. Are you going to the one in December during the, the win series? Which fight? No plans. I mean. Well, the one that uh, Conor McGregor... There we go. Fight, Thank you, Bear Totem. If we provoke, he must so revoke. That yes, mean, that's it. What's the one dude that's the line. Trump supporter, I forgot his name. Oh, Colby, Leon him, Edwards, him. yeah. That, that is a good fight. Yeah, him. I don't know who he's fighting. Leon Edwards. Okay. Yeah, like, do you think that's a good fight to go to? Yeah. Okay. All in. All in. Aaron Massey, all in. Over the top of Shulman's open, he quickly folds. I've never been to a UFC fight. That would be cool. 
Yeah, they were fun. AG asks, is this a real-time live stream? Yes, thank you for your question. Yeah, we live. We here. We're watching it with you guys. Oh, that is Matthew Wantman walking away. He's just busted in 12th place, cashing for $15,950. And that means we are down to 11. We are six-handed on the main stage, five-handed on the outer table. That's right, Tom, a bust out. Two away from being down to one table, two away from the redraw. Khalifa Nasser on Twitch chat says, the worst all-in I have ever seen. It's not Chat Pro Saturday yet, so watch it, Khalifa. What was the worst all-in? The sevens just now. Oh. And also, I'm going to go on a limb here and say, I really like you that all-in. I think worst. that's exactly what you should do every time. One time I had this. You said two pair. It's only one. No action. Aces, that was a very quick hand. God, your spidey senses are so good. Yeah, my spice is so good. I fucking fed 370 to get too fair. <laughs> fucking brilliant. <laughs> also, you showed it down. He, he wasn't making the read. You know? Yeah. No. <laughs> he true. just had it. We all saw it. I tried to get you. I tried to get you a full to nine. Nice try. Thanks. Folded around to the button. Nope. Massey's folded the button. It's Palampati in the small blind with 7 6 off. We're down, we're down to 11. Lost. Calls. Nick Shulman in the big blind with Jack Deuce. Could check his option if he so desired, and he does. Yeah, could consider just isoing a ton with your trashy hands. Jack Deuce might actually just be a check back regardless in this position. Just one of the worst combos in poker, really, in the game of the Texas Hold'em. We've got a like gut that. shot straight draw for Palampati, who checks this flop. Nice, the picture I so feel like Palampati sure. probably could have snuck in a lead here. Um, I would argue that check actually looks somewhat suspicious here. James, ace, nine, five is a board that a lot of players will just leave the small blind oh, yeah. into yeah. the big blind here, especially with the gut shot. Um, Jack high. Quite happy just to check here again. In these blind v blind spots, with the ranges being so wide, Jack High can very, very frequently be the best hand. But yeah, there's got to be a bet at some point. You got to semi bluff your uh, your straight draw here at some stage. <coughs> now he's open ended. Palampati making it 75k. Jack High for Nick Shulman. Who faults? And it seems we are losing Anthony Dianati from the feature table. He's being balanced off. And if he's being balanced off, that means something's happened at the other table. We're playing until 9 or? Yeah, we're playing until 9. Come back, 8? It says on the thing. It's always 9 if it's an 8 hand in tournament. Right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, final table is always one more. Oh, it's one more. That's yeah, what I'm saying. it is. Oh, nice. It says it, it said it combined it. And I, saw, I read I'm pretty it. Pretty sure it's nine. I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, it's nine. Right. So Dianetti has so to go because they are currently yeah, four-handed on the other table. Let's yeah, see yeah. what happened. Action replay. It's. I saw it nine somewhere. Yeah. Spoiler alert! Someone's going to get eliminated here, <laughs> and I don't think it's going to be Sergio Aido because he's the chip leader. Aido. King three against Liran Batito's King Queen. Suffice to say, Batito incredibly short. <laughs> I feel like King Queen's uh, gonna run into some trouble here, James. You think? Yeah. Three. There it is. <laughs> oh man, savage one for the King Queen. 
going to take a picture. This is the elimination hand. Got to do it for the gram. So long, Leran Petito. One of the start of day chip leaders is eliminated in 11th place. Sergio Aido, now an even bigger chip leader with 7.3 million. Petito cashing for just shy of 20K. We are down to 10, two tables of five. And when we lose another player, we will have the redraw. We will be down to a single table, but we won't stop. We will play to the end of level 29. We've got 17 minutes on this level, then another 75 minute level. So you're looking at another 90 minutes of poker. Back to the main stage. All in. Lang rivers that seven because it is always coming seven. It just happens to be the seven of hearts, giving him the jack high flush draw. Not being funny, trip sevens were enough. I think I think it's greedy having a heart here. Yeah, absolutely. This guy's playing PLO over here. This is a sad story, guys. I know we missed most of the hand, but as you can see, it just was one of the worst runouts for the old ace queen. Now, obviously, Lang can have a bluff here. Seems like a good river to bluff if you are playing out of the big blind. It is an easy fold. I guess the consideration here is, you know, Lang in the big blind, how frequently does he have a heart big enough to shove for value? Jack of hearts, queen of hearts, king of hearts being the obvious ones. And, uh, you're, not yeah. cra you're not crazy enough to bluff. <laughs> Nice pop there for Lang. Now 19 nice big blinds, a little bit further away from the danger zone. Danger zone. See raising under the gun with ace eight of diamonds. One heart from that board. It'd be fine. Oh, you had it? No. Yeah, Massey here We're is fine. under the gun. However, also the hijack. Decent flop for Ace Eight of Diamonds. Gut shot for Sammy's ten nine. Uh, dyslexic potato says James, that is Griffin's job. Please never say danger zone again. I think Joe might take issue with that line being credited to Griffin. Shall I do my Griffin impression of him doing the danger zone? No. <laughs> All right, bet Nicole. And a diamond on the turn. Nut flush. Yeah, that is the nut flush. It's looking looking really spicy here for Massey. Dyslexic Potato says Griffin does it better. Sorry, Joe. Oh no. Oh, wow. Dys Dyslexic Potato, I actually like you, dude. I don't I, I'm not sure if that can stand though. Um not being funny. We're, 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 we're provoking, guys. Oh, and, and you know what they say. Provoking you... could mean revoking. So, you know, just... <laughs> Don't provoke or he'll revo revoke. <laughs> Dyslexic potato. Don't be the reason we lose Chapro Saturday, please. And, yeah, it's going to take it down there.
Mm -hmm. Aaron Massey playing just shy of 30 big blinds. Those blinds going up in 12 minutes time. Cheryl Carter on YouTube feels very strongly. I love capital L, capital O, capital V, capital E. I love Joe's danger zone. And she has included in her missive not one, not two, not three, but four big red hearts. Only four? Just me. So, Mr. Massey. All over, man. With the dominating ace does call no change on the I'm flop. I'm the shortest with 1.2. Uh, Two-ish, probably. Check, check. Ace 10 yeah, still ahead. No. I mean, a couple around like 1.5. Check. Two. Both players just happy to get to showdown here, it seems. Check, check. Pretty straightforward. Two tables of five. Love the shorter handed play. Big fan of short handed poker. Pleased to see these guys getting through the hands pretty quickly here, too. Not too much delay. Obviously, sweating that final table situation. To say you made it to a final table of NAPT, definitely very cool. It's got to be playing on their minds here a little bit. Definitely going to adjust some ranges for uh, potential pay jumps and a shot at glory. Yeah, the first NAPT main event final table in 12 years. 12 years. That's such a crazy number. It's just wild. And there aren't that many NAPT main event champions. Remember, the tour only ran for a couple of years. And despite only being a handful of events, there was a two-time winner. Vanessa Salps winning the main event at Mohegan Sun in both 2010 and 2011. Jack-9 suited, very pretty hand. Going to want to play that from the button pretty much every single time. Do you happen to know, Nicholas Walsh, yeah. who won the last NAPT held in Las Vegas in February 2010? Phil Helmuth, can you believe it? No, it was not Phil Helmuth. I mean, it's a very good guess because he is the GOAT. Yeah, of course. But he did not. Um, I have no idea. Was it Dan Negreanu? No, it was a gentleman by the name of Tom Marchese. Oh. Yeah, no, there's no chance I was ever going to get that one. Call Ace King for Lang. Lang's had a couple really nice spots so far here, guys. Not too much action with his premiums. He had Queens, Kings, now Ace King. <coughs> Excuse me, Palampati had Queens, Kings, and now Jack Deuce. Misread there, guys. Laying our shortest stack, excuse me. We had the camera on uh, Palampati at the time. That's where the confusion arises.
We did see a Gibbons here as well, James. Appropriate, as the Gibbons was born on the NAPT, a Mohegan Sun in 2010. Joe Gibbons gave his name to that move, limping under the gun. Also frequently executed the perfect double Gibbons, which is where you limp under the gun and then call a raise neck. And Palmer Potty's going to take it down. I, I got I to gotta wonder here, should Lang maybe just have taken the raise there from under the gun? We are five-handed. I don't think it would be super outlandish. I don't think you're telegraphing a super strong hand necessarily. Ryan Lang, unfortunately. Uh, just over a mil. Yeah, so players just checking on sacks there really quick. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, Ryan Lang. I'm constantly counting anyways. Taking that multi-way, unfortunately, didn't work out from on this occasion. You know, it's a spot, James, where I don't think a lot of players are going to be limping that raise. It looks super sus. Yeah. Which is which is ideal when you have ace-king in that situation, and therefore probably you just want to have a raise there every time. Um, having limps a lot more useful in bounty tournaments. <coughs> uh, limping range very useful when you're playing PK was online, etc. But under those circumstances, I think you're probably just going to end up playing multi-way, and Ace-King needs to improve most of the time in order to win, especially in multi-way pots, really struggles to realize its equity when you don't connect, which is going to happen a lot of the time. What's the short one over there? Now, I think Ling probably just wants to ship here. Oh, oh wow. excuse me. Okay. This is 2.2. So it one, was call, call. Nine. Really surprised Lang didn't shove versus limp here, James. Obviously, Shulman will have some traps here, but ace three just feels really, really good just to be all in versus that limp when you've got that ace blocker. Definitely a spot where Ling can find a call, no doubt about that. Instead, finds a raise. Huh. All right, well, that's one way to do it. Taking it down regardless. Nice hand for Ling. Round to the blinds. Ryan Lang in the small. Jack eight of clubs. Complete. Sammy Bezahad in the big. Checks his option with 9-7. And it is a nine high flop. Advantage Sammy. Again, I feel like there's Ooh. a missed bet here, James. 9-7 Check. checking this flop just seems like you're not getting enough value and you're 
not giving yourself enough protection either. And straight draws abound, but none of them get there. So pair of nines still good for Sammy. Check that call. And just two minutes left on this level. No break. We'll roll straight into level 29, which will probably be the last level of the day. Remember what I said? I told you earlier about the supposed to. There is no supposed to. I very much agree with that. Aside, like, calling all in bases and kings, there is no suggestion. Thanks, Shin has been folded to Ryan Lang on the button. And that is a call with eight six of spades. Sammy in the small with ace king. Sammy here, 42 bigs. Lang obviously our shorty. Um, definitely oh. don't mind the flat from Lang here, but hey, look at this spot, James. Massey has the James and Joe, the JH, the JS. He is all in. And Lang will fold the 8-6. Sammy will call with the ace king, and we are off to the races. And this is a coin flip that Aaron Massey needs to win, or he is out in tenth, and we are down to a single table of nine. Yeah, big flip spot. These are the moments you really need to win. These are what define your main event dreams. Time to deal Aaron Massey's fate. If Jack's hold, by the way, Sammy's going to be playing around 10 big blinds. It's a decisive pot for him as well. 9-6-3. So far, so good for the Jacks. Six cards that Aaron Massey has to fade. King on the turn. And now Aaron Massey's drawing to a two-outer. Needs a jack on the river or he's KO'd. Ace on the river, Barry Greenstein, two pair for Sammy. And Aaron Massey bows out in 10th place, cashing for $19,140. Taking us down to the final nine, taking us to the final redraw of this tournament. We've made it to the final table. We are going to play on tonight. He said they're coming we're going to play to the end of level 29. We are going to play another 75 minutes of poker. Most tournaments it's one over the, you know what I mean? Sammy now playing 4.6 million. Another page, huh? Just shy of 60 big blinds at the new blind level because we have ticked into level 29. Blinds now 40,000, 80,000 with an 80k big blind ante. But Sergio Aido, we think, still is pretty big chip leader right now. Last time we saw him, he had about 7 million chips. Where's the, where's the full Obviously, lady? we are going to get to see all nine players now. We'll have the yeah. chips of all the remaining players, Nick, because they're all going to be on the main stage. Yeah, very, very excited 
Final table time, guys. No, I don't want to. Yeah, and that Jack's hand just so devastating. So close yet so far, but what are you going to do? Putting in the chips, good. Ace King doing nothing wrong there. Jack's doing nothing wrong there. It's moments like that. Love your work, man. Oh, thank you. Love your comment. What's your name? When you realize sometimes you just need to run a little bit better to get there. New seat assignments will be allocated. All nine players will take their seats on the main stage. 75 minutes of poker still to be played. The only way we would stop quicker is if we got down to six. That would necessitate three eliminations. Unlikely, not impossible, but unlikely to happen in the final level. Everyone who survives today will bag and tag and come back for tomorrow, the official final table the final day of this NAPT main event when we play down to a winner who's going to cash for just over a quarter of a million dollars. So, as ever, the redraw necessitates a short break. We'll be back very shortly with nine-handed action. In the meantime, we're going to give you the chance to see what happened at last night's players' party. Highlights of what went down at Zoo. Nick Walsh, is there a chance you feature in this video? There's a chance I feature very heavily, James. You know that. Let's watch Nick Walsh embarrass himself at last night's NAPT Las Vegas players' party, and then we're going to play on in the main event. Vanessa knows her own reputation, so she knows Prahlad could be three-betting her light, thinking she's raising light, which she is. And if that's the case, she could get into some real trouble here. Four bet to 13,200 with the jack high. So typically, a Vanessa Selbs four bet is going to start to get some credibility, which means if Prahlad thinks she's got some kind of hand, he'll easily put in a fifth bet. Another thing to consider, if Prahlad wants to continue to have Vanessa think he's bluffing, he's more likely to raise again than he is to just call. It is five bets to 35,000. Is it 30? 35. All right, well, this looks like a pretty easy fold for Vanessa. But she hasn't dumped her cards yet. Joe, what in the world could she be thinking about here? Well, she might be a little steamy from that last hand still, and is probably leveling herself with thoughts that Prahlad is just messing with her. Now it looks like she wants to see how many chips Prahlad has left. If she levels herself into thinking Prahlad is messing with her, this is going to be a disaster. She should be folding any second now. But uh, she puts in six bets with Jack High. The oh boy. 106.2. is now the bet. This is an absolute punt. Let's count the hang time. All right, I'm all in. Prolot is all in. It is a mistake. I call. Vanessa calls. Okay. Aces yeah. from Perlotta. No, no, no. He's got aces. Yeah, I know, I know. I'll bet you he's got aces. He has aces. It's like 100%. Of course. She has ace, king, or kings? Nope, I have nothing. Uh, twice? Whatever you want. Let's do three times? Sure. Three times. Nice he has live cards. Oh boy. How much do you have? Uh, one, He's got you covered, 60, I think. 60, yeah. So they're gonna run it three times. Almost spoke to win, couldn't do it. 
How many times do you guys say you're running? Three. Three times. My turn. I'm gonna leave if I don't. I think I speak for Vanessa when I say, <laughs> Even worse, some of Vanessa's outs have been folded, so she's a bigger dog than she thinks. First to three runs coming up. Winner will get a third of the pot. King four five. That's not good. She'll need runner runner. Six of diamonds. Six of diamonds. Six of diamonds. Don't waste it. Six of diamonds would be. Would that be the best card? Six of diamonds would give her straight and flush draws. God. To the turn. Nine of hearts. All right. Put a deuce of clubs. Oh, ace of clubs is good. I think Prahlad knows the time for speeches is over. River, 10 of hearts, and Prahlad has locked up a third of the pot worth over 113K. I'm such a Why do I do this to myself? Every time. Not every time. I usually don't do this to myself anymore. What are you laughing at? I'm not laughing. I'm just, you know. Pretty sure he was laughing. Here comes the second of three runs. Eight king, five, two diamonds. Flush draw for Vanessa. It's already a diamond over there. <laughs> there it is. That's the spirit. Show the other diamonds. That you, yeah, how six hard of diamonds would definitely be more useful here than it was in the last one. Vanessa only needs one more diamond. Turn five of hearts. Wow. Prowlot is strong. How did he dodge it there? Missing the flush draw would be devastating. She's not likely to flop this good again. To the river. No diamond, three of clubs. What a brick. Brick ball. Super brick. Bricktastic. So Prahlad is two-thirds of the way to scooping the biggest pot ever won on the big game. What an absolute gift from Vanessa. No Jackson sevens. Run number three. Four, six, king, three more bricks. This is getting hard to watch. Not even a sweat. Vanessa's dead to two pair trips or a straight. All of them runner, runner or else Prahlad's gonna need a wheelbarrow to bring all his money home. To the turn. Deuce of spades. Nice hand. And Prahlad's gonna win a pot worth over $340,000. Wow, Prahlad did it, that's sick. All right, I'm out of here. Nice playing with you, Vanessa. Nice playing with you. Good playing with you, Vanessa. Why not win one of them? Vanessa's going to hit the rail, and with that, Prahlad Freeman has the biggest scoop in the history of the big game. Enjoy. <laughs> Good playing with you, Vanessa. Why did I do this? You understand? you have any idea why I did this? Honestly, I don't know why you did that. I mean... <laughs>
I mean, there's some value in punting on TV, especially in that moment. People are way less likely to bluff you in the future. And when you actually make a hand, you're more likely to get paid. So yeah, it was obviously a big punt, but there is some value in it long-term. Did you ever do things differently on TV during that era in the hopes of it paying off for you later in non-TV situations? I I think everybody plays different on TV. Nobody wants to be bluffed on television. And so, and everybody wants to be a hero. So I think it just changes the overall game to many different levels. I know that I probably played a lot looser um, on TV. Um, And so did everybody else. Everybody wants to be a hero. Well, the other TV show we want to talk about is Shark Cage, which was a show that was built around bluffing. Um, and both you and Maria played in both seasons of Shark Cage and both made the final in the second season of Shark Cage. So you both have plenty of, spe- of experience at this show. Um, in, in turn, I want to get your honest answer to this. Maria, when you heard that stars had come up with a TV show where they wanted to put people in a cage, were you thinking, what are they doing? <laughs> I mean, I kind of thought it was brilliant. Like, just when I heard about it, I was like, okay, this sounds cool, and I I love it. Um, I didn't want to be sent to the cage, but I thought it was a really cool concept. Yeah, I I mean, I think a lot of players, Antonio, just heard it's a million-dollar free roll. I'm like, yep, you can do what you want to me for that. (laughs) Of course. First of all, I think anything that brings some sort of fun and something new to poker is great for the game. And I actually love that show and I'm still bitter because I had an opportunity to put Phil Ivey in the cage yes. and I didn't, if I just called him, he's going in the cage. Instead I raised like a ding dong and uh, he didn't go in the cage. So that would have been nice, but that was a great fun show. And you know, anytime somebody puts up a million dollar free roll, kudos to them. You know, we got nothing to lose and a million to win. I mean, that's pretty strong. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the North American Poker Tour from Las Vegas. Live coverage of day three of the main event from Resorts World on the Las Vegas Strip. I am Joe Stapleton. He is Nicholas Michael Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. And we are at the business end of the first NAPT main event in over a decade. Nine players remain. One of them is Nick Shulman. Only one of them could be Nick Shulman. Your future best friend? Two of them couldn't be Nick Shulman. Yeah. Yes, my future best friend, Nick Shulman. When I go out there and interview him when he wins, we're going to have a chemistry. We're going to have a rapport. It's going to be like we've known each other for years, which technically we have. Sergio Aido also in the final nine. And a couple of people we have known along the way. Sammy Bahamed who apparently is the dealer on Hustler Casino Live. That's kind of cool. We got Antony Denantony here in the final nine. Ping Lu is a player who's been on our radar over the years. Jonathan Borenstein, someone that had we been covering events in America, we would have seen time and time again. And Ryan Lang, a big fixture in the poker community here in Las Vegas and on the West Coast. Forgive me if there are people who are well-known here. I've been in Europe for a long time. We've been covering EPTs for a long time. I'm not as dialed into the American t- uh, scene as I once was. But that's a lot of American flags. That is like a monster truck rally right there on your screens. But it's the one European, Sergio Aido. I was about to say. Leading the way. <laughs> Just had to show him who's boss. Espana producing some serious players over the years. Yeah. And we're back in the mix. Hand number 138 blinds, 40K, 80K. This will be. Big blind ante. This will be the last level of the night. If we don't lose a player, we're coming back tomorrow at 9. And interestingly, we have gotten to see a lot of these players throughout the course of the day today. I don't think there's a single player here that already hasn't been at a feature table. That's cool. So 
folded rounds. Hijack has open. That is our chip leader. 99 big blinds after putting in that slightly above mid raise. And Lang's going to ling it in. Thank you. Uh-oh. We have some hands. Sergio start things off with Queen-9. Ryan Lang, who does get out of line fairly regularly, is somewhat in line. Three-betting, ace-jack on the button. Pocket eight for Shulman. Snowmen's nom-nom. Five seconds. Nick has Lang covered, but not Aido. Nick with that awkward 45-ish big blinds to start the hand. Flats the three bet from Lang. And we are gonna have a bloated pot to kick things off here at the unofficial final table. Queen, 10, five, two spades. Lang with two overs to the eights. Whoa, why do I see the eights on he's, their backs? He's only got two big blinds behind. He's always going in. Aha. Yeah. Four Nick Schulman ahead of Lang for now. Lang with sure. nine outs to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Turn card is a five. Eight's still holding. Lang needs a jack, a king, or an ace. The fifth and final card is a queen. GG, Ryan. Ryan Lang, beloved member of the poker community. Gonna go out ninth place here in the first Poker Stars event on North American soil. Yep, GG to Ryan, Poker staple, legendary character. It's been a long time. First NAPT, at least. A couple of small Poker Stars events have happened over the years. New Jersey, Pennsylvania. But this is the real deal, Holy Field. That's right, Boom Shakalaka. Hodor, no more. <laughs> and we are playing on, play us. What's everybody guaranteed now, Nick, prize-wise? $32,355 from a sixteen fifty investment. That's okay. chunky. How much again? $32,355. Wow. 20X? Yeah, that's, that's pretty serious business, man. This is a pretty stunning uh, turnout here in Vegas. 1,095 entries. That's how you know you're in Vegas, baby. Hordenstein opening from the cutoff. Queen 10 suited. Dianati in the big blind with ace jack off. Playing it cool with the flat. Borenstein flops best. Borenstein bears. I always thought it was Berenstein. <laughs> it's like it changed.
200,000, so that's almost half pot here. Now, Dianati has underrepped his hand to a certain degree here, Joey, because obviously he could a three-bet a hand as strong as ace-jack cutoff versus big blind. On the final table, certainly a reasonable situation to find three bets because people will probably overfold given the nature of the pay jumps at this point. So as we just discussed, 32,355 for eighth place and then 42K for seventh. So a 10K pay jump. Given the fact that that was quite a chunky continuation, ace-jack just folds, but you got to be careful in those spots because when your hand is that under-repped and they're opening from the cutoff, you will have the best hand there a significant amount of the time, and uh, you certainly don't want to be in too many situations where you can be exploited. Your opponents can uh, fire that as a bluff pretty aggressively a lot of the time. And um, if you start to notice some of those spots coming up more often obviously can consider putting in more c bets as bluffs against that individual but also i think pretty reasonable as well no hand no play mr analysis nick good to have you back in here i'll tell you what i'm not going to miss is that mustache <laughs> december can't get here fast enough <laughs> Can somebody cure prostate cancer so I don't have to look at this kid's mustache anymore? <laughs> Weird me out. <laughs> Keep expecting you to pull up in a van and ask me to help you find your puppy. I'll offer you some candy. Nick Shulman raising from the button. King 10. Double suited. Dianati giving it a think in the small blind. Queen eight suited. Three betting candidates sometimes, Nick, against the button raise. Sure, why not? I think it's actually a great three betting candidate some of the time. Let's take a look at the stacks though. Shulman 61 bigs. Yeah, I think it's pretty reasonable. Sneak it in there. I think on the final table, Joe, you just get away with more three betting generally, right? You take that down pre-flop a lot more often. Zephyr says the Tash is great, Nick. Thank you, Zephyr. No, no, no. You don't. You don't. You're not within smell shot of it. <laughs> don't say that, Joe. <laughs> seven, seven, six, two hearts. It smells like a Brighton strip club. Stop it. Just stop it. Unbelievable. You know, I just think it's important that we support men's mental health, Joe. You know, if you oh, just, if, if, I thought it was I thought it was prostate cancer. I, I, I think it's a combination of oh, things, okay. but yeah, yeah. But if you don't support that, Joe, that's totally cool. <laughs> that's a great comeback. <laughs> Jack of hearts on the turn after going check check on the flop. Shulman with no heart in his hand. He's got plenty of heart. He's he's the greatest. Somebody block this person who asked when the final table is. Can we, can we block this guy? Can we block? Oh, Nikki, Nikki. Yeah, oh, so it. sticky. <laughs> Check out his stack. It's nice and thicky. Nick is going to be able to very comfortably value bet this in position. Yeah, it feels like a really good run out for King-10. Man, my best friend just runs so good. Runs so good, plays so good, runs so good. We're going to talk about this later when we go to dinner. A fancy dinner that he's going to pay for because we're best friends. Are you guys going to make friendship bracelets? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. Are you guys going to get, like, necklaces that are, like, two halves of a heart, and then they, like, link yeah, together? Yeah, we're going to have gnocchi. Because <laughs> that's what you do with your best friend. Ooh, Lou looks him up. And Nick gets paid skyrocketing up the leaderboard. 
Second and chips now. This is the official final table. Why has no one blocked this person yet? Get him out of here. Crazy Carl in the chat. Nick Schulman has one of those resumes that always amazes me. WPT titles, WSOP bracelets. Is that it? Was there a third thing? How about an NAPT? How about we add an NAPT? He is my best friend after all. I can't I can't help but be biased toward him. Surely you understand. That is someone that hangs out with Nick Schulman all the time. <laughs> I'm gonna be rooting for him. <laughs> it's hard not to be biased when your best friend's at a final table. Right. I mean, what are you gonna do? Yeah, it's safe to say Nick Schulman knows how to play some cards. All the cards. Now, interesting spot. Lou in the small blind. Going to want a three bet here pretty much every time. Lou is the effective stack. 36 bigs. And uh, you're going to want to size up because you are you you are sorry in the small blind. Being out of position here usually means you're going to have a larger size than if you were three betting from the button or the cutoff, for example. uses a time bank card, just wants to figure out what size he's supposed to do here. So 620K was the initial raise. Is that right? Seems chunky. It seems chunky. Sorry, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to look at the stacks here. As he basically five million. Brutal. Uh, basically oh, an all in. Yeah, I think he missed. Uh, of course he missed. <laughs> right. Oh man, Mr. Showman. I I only noticed the size Almost just then, Joe. But it. buddy, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I had a really good joke. If you didn't catch up. I, I was. I saw you grab the six things. Like, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> was he gonna realize? <laughs> oh man, that is a I sizable had. misclick. Huh? I did. I was wondering how wide I can show that. I would have called Obviously, your bet, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> First one, pretty First good for me. Nice. Look, guys, day. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Even if Nick's saying he misclicked. Don't laugh at the man. Folks. He didn't mean, he didn't misclick. It just, he knows it, what he's doing. Yeah, sure. He's playing the long game. <laughs> Nick Schulman doesn't make mistakes. My best friend does not make mistakes. I think I think I might have given a little bit of commentator's curse there, Joe. <laughs> Here's a guy that knows how to play some cards. <laughs> Straight in with the misclick. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, he's playing the long game. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of big blinds. There's a lot of big blinds to put in in the fold, but uh, there you go. They're on their way, sir. In any case, on to the next one. Seems pretty reasonable, though. I mean, we're gonna see, he's going to see it's ace-king. He knows he wasn't getting exploited. There hasn't been an NAPT in 12 years. Of course there's going to be a misclick every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Nobody's done this before. <laughs> we're going to interview these guys later, and they're going to be like, we literally haven't played guards for 12 years. Oh, sorry. One too early. You don't want my card. I'm trying to go over. Never know. Alex on <laughs> YouTube says, I'd run this table. Jeez. It's not Chapter of Saturday yet. It's so weird, Alex. Why aren't you here? <laughs> if you would run this table, surely you could win your way. He's probably just so bored of running tables all over the world that, you know. He's just taking a break. You, gotta, you can't always run tables 24 hours a day, Joe. SC174 says, why hasn't there been an NAPT in over 10 years? Google Black Friday, but make sure your safe search is on. 
<laughs> Sevens again, this time Lou. Ping.com, right? Is that this ping? I'm pretty sure it is. So the shot head here yep. flops best. In fact, it's a pretty good flop for the old KJ. Yes, ping and sorry, ping's partner, I believe, is pretty high up at the WPT. Big fan of Kathy. Kathy, if you're watching, what's up? And takes it down. One bet on the flop. Good enough. Stella on YouTube says, when did you let everyone know there was going to be this NAPT? I didn't hear about it until it started. I'll take it to you. Same with the loose cannon qualifiers. Did not know until it was happening. Stella, do you follow me on Twitter? Do you follow PokerStars on Twitter? Sorry. Do you follow me on Instagram, PokerStars on Instagram? Have you ever watched one of these streams before? Yeah. Do you follow Nick Walsh? Yeah. yeah. Do you watch Nick's streams? Yeah. Anthony, right? Are you on my Discord? Do you yeah. actually consume anything where we constantly have been putting out this information for the last three months? Because if not, thank you for your question. I think I mentioned it about three times every single stream for the last two weeks. But we're glad you're here, and now you know. Go and follow and like and subscribe and all that good stuff wherever possible, including here on Twitch, and you get some notifications. It's all good. You'll never have to miss another piece of PokerStars content ever. You got King Jack oh. on King Jack. Ping Blue once again getting involved. Palampati. Gonna see a floppy. Or attempt to at least from the button. Yep. King Jack suited. Dyslexic Potato says, no, you banned. I got banned for way less. Guess what? <laughs> you banned. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Sea Turtle Man on YouTube says, I'm one of Nick's Discord kittens. Amen to that, buddy. Apex Hunter says, I love you guys, but no, not going to X or Facebook or Insta. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> you can miss out on great opportunities and great content. That's great. Yeah. Makes sense. Doesn't hurt me none. Have you guys done a song yet, Joe? No, I haven't. I haven't, I haven't done one either. Check, check on the flop. Ace of spades in the turn. Is that going to be another check, check? I don't know. This strikes me as one of those spots where the ace might be a barrel for the player who's in position here. <sighs> the stupidity is really getting to me today. <laughs> you guys, it was play a it, it was cool. a great day. Now you're driving me nuts. You tap dancing on my last nerve. Chat Pro Saturday, I might be the one to cancel it. Oh, no, for the first time ever. So SC174 says, Black Friday didn't stop the WSOP, though, so I guess I don't understand what makes WSOP financial transactions different than NAPT.
Kalampati trying to wrestle this pot away from Lou. And succeeds. Succeeds and wrestling it away. Route 711 says, I've been loving the coverage tonight. Y'all killing it. You know what? I hate a kiss ass. You're banned too. It's not you, it's me. 160. Four raises. Nick's like, oh, Nick has seven. Doesn't mean it 160 this time. You sure you meant to make it 160, Nick? <laughs> uh. Pompati with another hand. Flat call, and it's going to be these two. Oh, no, Aido's in, too, with the Jack-9 of suited hearts on the button, the dealer button. I guess it's only there's only one button. I don't know if this specifies the dealer button. 10-8-8, up and down for Aido. Shulman blocking some of those outs. And has the best of it with the two sevens. Eight. Check, check, Taito. Who's going to be able to comfortably semi-bluff. 225,000. Right around a third of the pot. successfully gets one better hand to fold. The better of the two hands. The taking of Palom, one, two, three. Sergio Aido. You know what I love about Sergio Aido? His last name sounds like the Wilhelm scream. That joke was for you, Chris. The one person in the world. Thank you, brother. Oh, that's a cup. S Sergio Ito. His last name sounds like the Wilhelm scream. That's right. Ito. I mean, come on. That's my box. My video cards. Appreciate it. Man, we're spending an awful lot of manpower on trying to get this one Stella de Villa Thank you, informed about our events. Send me your email address. I will email you personally. He'll do it, too. How about that? He'll do it. Oh. Is there a Wookiee? I know. Ace Queen suited in the cutoff. King 10 suited for dealer Sammy. Just 
So let's play it cool here. Mr. Shulman has a hand that can also defend. Looks like he just wants to get out of the way, though. And look at that flop. King, eight, seven, two diamonds. Nicky, Nicky. But just to be clear, he has actually folded Joe. Nine, what? Nick Shulman is not in this hand. Oh, no. Yeah. Probably regretting that fold now. I think Jack Four Suited definitely is fine multi way there in the big blind. You got a really nice price just to peel in, like, I don't know, maybe like flop a flush or something. Would have got some action too. Bashahed. Yeah. Really, really, really nice turn to get paid. Yeah, we're going to kill graphics for a second here, guys, just because there was a bit of a misclick our end. Regarding the multi-way nature of this pot. So King 10 is correct, though, for the Shahed here, who does lead turn. And a fold, so ace-queen, no dice. And Mr. Shulman missed the opportunity to get in there and flop the flush and be up against a top pair flop, two pair turn. He had his reasons, Nick. Calm down. <laughs> There's no reason for you to talk about my best buddy like that. Sorry, Jeff. No, I think also folding is fine, though, of course. I'll be, we'll be discussing that comment over Gnocchi tonight. <laughs> On to the next one, guys. Eight players remain. Hand number 147. And the Ping Lu. Once again, back in the driver's seat. Once again, Ace Queen makes an appearance. Sergio with double sixes. So Edo here, of course, our chip leader at the moment, 100 big blinds deep. And Lou is the individual with 40 bigs who's <laughs> open onto the gun. But I think we're deep enough where you can just call with sixes here, Joe. You need to be careful with these smaller pairs as we get shallower because a lot of the value in those small oh pairs boy. is when flop sets. Borenstein Bears. You know what I liked about those books? Yeah. Not a lot of words. Just a lot of pictures. Pretty easy read. I can I also just say I love these chips? You know how you know how I always complain that I'm slightly colorblind and yeah. the chips are too similar? These yeah. are really, really good, like shocking colors. So you can see a difference in them. Yes. Okay. I mean even that even that pink in this what's this color, Joe? Bornstein announces all in. So it's like s salmon? Sure, like salmon, and then there's like a hot pink. Yep. I'm into Magenta, that. maybe? No, hot pink is probably closer to it. Yep. Anyway, guys, Bornstein is going to be all in here. Great spot. And lots of dead money already in play. Lou is going to be very tempted here. So, if I'm not mistaken, Bornstein's got about 25 bigs here. Great spot to squeeze. Lots of chips to win at non-showdown here. I think Lou's got a really tough decision here, wow. and Edo pretty clear fold. Well, I guess that's the problem, right? Is that Lou still got Aido to back behind? Yeah, just decides not to gamble here. I think that's pretty reasonable. It would probably be easier to call if they were heads up. It would probably be easier to call if the positions weren't the way that they were, right. Joe. Yeah. So Sea Turtle Man says they honestly look like chips designed for colorblind people, but he spells colorblind with a U. <laughs> what are you, letterblind? Huh? This is the North American Poker Tour. Get out of here with that. What do you think? We're playing for colored money? <laughs> it's 
the, the color of money. Greenbacks. You think we're playing for pound sterling or <laughs> Canadian funny money? <laughs> all the same size, all the same color, without a U. Speaking of the same. Aces. And he is flatting Joe. Have you ever seen? Oh, oh my, my days. Goodness. And the flat could not have come at a better time. Dianati is going to do some chips in this pot. Dianati is 45 big blinds deep, guys. The Shahed covering it with 63 bigs. Somebody call an ambulance. 1.5 million. 1.5 million, Joe. Goo. Oh, no. The Shahed actually just finds the pure flat spot. And we'll be very happy to see chips going in the middle here. Palampati might even put some chips in himself. Okay, makes the fold. And now it's how little damage can Dianati take when the aces are so under rep, Joey? On in. On in. Dealer Sammy all in. <laughs> Even the dealer was like, are you sure? <laughs> was not expecting that. It was so... Dianati makes the call, is the player at risk, and is way behind. Guys, this is an absolutely massive pot. This could be for the chip lead, if I'm not mistaken. It, it. No, but it is dang close. It's like less than a big blind. A couple of big blinds for being the chip lead. Dianati is going to have to hit something Dianasty. He is not going to be eliminated. We know an ace was folded. Not that it really matters all that much. Two outs for Dianati. Two outs, one chance to hit them. Giannotti's fate rests on one card, and it ain't a jack. It's the nine of spades. Antony Dianatny has been eliminated. Yeah, really rough spot. That back raise, Joe, was nasty. And the Shahed is the chip leader. You are right, pal. Sorry. I guess I. Yeah, 115 big blinds now for Sammy. But look, found a beautiful little trap there. Really, really fantastic spot. Sneaky. Yeah, Please. sneaky indeed. Anthony that probably is, wondering if that, the Jack was it, a call it, after it, all. He told me a story once about the worst he, he, he ever. I, I heard. I, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Where <laughs> the guy in his seat said he you guys shut up, Nick's talking. the other Jacks, and the turn was stone clean, no straight draw, and he was lying. The Jack <laughs> <laughs> on, on the street. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> He's so funny. And he said the other guy was like a hard luck guy, too, who had the aces. Great storyteller. <laughs> catch a break. Is that what first captivated <laughs> you about Nick Filman? No. Great. It was his eyes. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I made the mistake of only looking at the pot size, Nick, and not what... Sammy still had behind that wasn't in the pot. So good. I apologize. So <laughs> Stone clean. Six 
Sammy Bahad with 9.2 million in chips, 115 big blinds. Sergio Aida with 96. Shulman in third with 56. So a significant gap between first and second and third. Stella's back. She says, this is epic. No, no, no. The Epic Poker League also went belly up about a decade ago. Not sure if. This is the NAPT. It's not epic. I thought Here we are. Here we are. Shit counts there, guys. Yes, I'm Shaw had loving life with those aces and that call. You look extremely good today. Looking real, <laughs> real spicy here. <laughs> Sammy's got to be. Living the dream right now. Imagine being a... Wait, you were a poker dealer, weren't you? I was, yeah. And now you're a professional poker... All right, so you know exactly what this guy's going through. I, I guess so. I mean, I've never made it to a final table of NAP, NAPT before, but... Almost no one has. Yeah, exactly. But Sammy, yeah, looking really good. Great to see dealers doing it. I think it's funny, too, Joe, because like, I think every poker dealer low-key thinks that they're a great poker player. One Many do, like, yes. I, like, I think most are just like, yeah, I, like, I'm, I'm just really unlucky. Like, you know, I don't. But I think that every once in a while, you know, the dealers really come out and shine. Obviously not just playing a bunch of poker, but also observing a lot and being able to, you know, glean information and learn how people, you know, in the, in the real world are playing cards and taking that experience to the tables yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And some of them are good poker players. That's true. Sometimes. Remember back in the day, Scott Fishman? Yep. He was a full tilt pro, I believe. He he was a former dealer. Two raises, 160,000. Dealer Sammy back in action with all the chips. A7 suited. We got a Stephanie. Uh, I had. I hope I'm saying that right. It's actually one time I wouldn't mind someone correcting my pronunciation. <laughs> As I fumble my way through it every time. Tom Hall is a d Dust Till Dawn dealer once upon a time. Says one false step. Thank you. Mike Mizraki, the best former dealer. Sure. Arguably. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ace-King versus Ace-7 domination situation. And now... Sammy with the nut flush draw, top pair for Aido. Kenny Hallert, sure, there you go. Finton Hand, of course. Finton? Who, by the way, is on an absolute tear. Finton just murdering poker at the moment. And the bet of 115,000 from Sammy called by Aido. 670K in the pot. Turn is the 10 of diamonds. You'll notice Aido just with the flat here, pre flop. Just not wanting to play a big pot against the other big stack, it seems. Playing it very cool. I mean, it would be a major error to get it in. <laughs> to do 96 big blinds on a final table against the other chip leader? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that, that, feels, that feels like a really sad story. But no, his hand's so under wrapped, you just got to keep calling here. And of course, you're going to have the best hand here a ton. And a mega draw for the shot. One, one card I don't want to see, and that was it. Oh, my God. Yeah, the shot. That is so sick. Absolutely drills it. I know checks. I think he needs to go big here, Joe. I think he needs to make it like a million. 
Oh my goodness. You get paid by a king. You might get paid by a queen. They might have a straight that they turn that they're slow playing once in a while. Oh my days, it's big. 1.3 million in the middle. 765,000. You heard it, that's a half pot bet. A little more than half pot. But 765,000. Yep, 765,000 to me, Joey, is I really want a queen to call as well as the king. He's mm -hmm. really, really trying to keep all of it in, which I think probably on in this context is preferable to the million that I suggested anyway. Um, the issue for Edo Joe is the Shahed can literally have a king that he's that he thinks is the best hand at this point, right? He could have a, hand, a king as weak as like you know king four suited, king five suit here, and that's just playing a more conventional range. The fact that he's one of the chip leaders, in fact, he is our chip leader at the moment, means he could have all kinds of kings, even some offsuit combinations that he thinks he's value betting. Ido with the Psy call. Sees the bad news. 765, correct. And that is going to <coughs> add to Sammy's chip lead. 10.75 million, 134 big blinds. Aido still with over 80 bigs. But man, oh man, big gap now between them. I think it's safe to say Sammy's having a good day so far, Joe. Thanks, sir. What a story it would be. Yeah, I'd love to see the dealers taking some down. Not just a dealer, like a, a streaming dealer. So yeah. he's got fans. Yeah. He's got a following. He got fans. Marley says, nice call, my Aido. How does he get away from the raise there? Mike Donkass would have raised and folded to a three bet. <laughs> Ping.com back in action. Six Pocket One sixes eight. for Lucky Lou. Tray balls for Aido. Yeah, I think we're deep enough again to potentially set mime here, Joe. Are you, are you ready to do some set miming? What'd you think? Excellent. No. Guys, I wish you were here to see it. Hold Ooh. on, I'm gonna go again. Wow. You're a true artist. Oh, I mean, just amazing. It seemed like I was in a real box, didn't it? Like, you know, like, people think it's kind of gimmicky, that stuff, but when you see somebody do it right, and it's just, you know, it's art, it really blows your mind. It's a craft, and you have to exercise it like any other muscle. Sure. Sixes versus threes. Nobody flops a set. Stella Davila back in chat says, those are crabs. Stella, that sounds like a you problem. Somebody want to link her to uh, the shampoo? You know what? I have a bottle at home. Ping continues and gets a fold from the threes. Tom is asking me if I can email Stella, let her know there's a stream tomorrow. She said she sent me uh, her email address on Messenger. Okay. I don't know how she has my Messenger. <laughs> Also, I mean, I guess as long as we're doing throwbacks, why not? 
reference MSN Messenger. Sure. Oh, maybe she meant Facebook Messenger. <laughs> it would be fitting. Hand number 153 underway. Man's got stacks there. Folded round, folded round. We are eight handed oh, now. She did send me her email address on Messenger. Oh. <laughs> All right, Stella, I'm going to email you from now on whenever we have an event. <laughs> He's going to do it too. Could I, ju could I just message you on. Messenger? Messenger, though? Wait, or did, do I have to email Was you? it Stella who said that, that she's not going to use Messenger? No, that was someone else who okay. said they wouldn't go to Facebook or whatever. No, it's got to be email now, Joe. Sorry, buddy. Stella, just friend request me, and then you'll see my updates. What are we doing? <laughs> Stella goes, yeah, I sent you a message on Instagram. Just, just drop me a message on there whenever you go live. I don't look at stories. Mr. Coleman has a playable hand. Uh, Coleman, unfortunately, one of our shortest stacks, though, and I think for that reason, will just give that one a miss, and I think that makes a lot of sense. You need to bear in mind the positioning of players here, and when one of the chip leaders is on the button and you are one of the short stacks, you don't want to be mixing it up there. Just playing it by the book. Seven six suitor for Aido. Nick Schulman having a think in the big blind. I don't think this one's going the way of Jack Four suited. Nerp. And Schulman does pair his three. Aido with the seven card straight draw. Be pretty bad news for Shulman if the five peeled off. Yeah, I think on these textures, you probably want to have a larger continuation size if you are going to see bet. Um, Edo doesn't have showdown right now, so probably going to go for like 250K. That is 325. Yeah, even bigger. 325, I like that a lot. These guys are quite deep as well, so you do generally want to have larger sizings here to put yourself in range of, you know, playing for stacks under certain circumstances. Mr. Shulman is going to have the best hand here a ton. Now, just weighing up his options, obviously might be tempted to have a check raise on this texture once in a while. I don't think ace-3 is the best combo, though. don't think you want to turn ace-3 into a bluff here necessarily. And I think the flat is probably what you're going to want to do most of the time. I love a flat. love a flat. Ten of diamonds might be an opportunity for a second barrel from Edo. I think we're just waiting to see what Shulman wants to do. So Shulman's already checked, excuse me. And the second barrel, here we go. Eight two five, really nice and chunky, Joe. It's not chunky, it's husky. Sorry. Not a lot Shulman can do. Love the aggression from Edo, but I think that's pretty textbook. Like the size on the flop. Like the pre-flop open. Like the turn continue. And at these stack depths, your turn bets are going to be pretty chunky quite often. Sure. Well. All right. <clears throat> Stella, we're Facebook friends now. Don't ask for nudes. Yeah. That's where I draw the line. Yeah. And don't 
expect. I don't have a camera that zooms in that far. <laughs> and don't go asking to be Joe's best friend because that slot is already taken. Correct. Just don't don't go there. You know, just be happy. Just being Facebook friends. All right. Uh, you know, back in the mix. Oh, I wanted to show you this email. If you could read this aloud, I got a poker related email today. You, you can read all this. Go ahead. Google Domains. Hello, Joseph Stapleton. Thank you for making a purchase from Google Domains. So my domain re renewed today. Yeah. For my website. Kingjackoff.com. Yeah. Great, great purchase. Can you believe that nobody owned that? And only twelve bucks. It's a poker website. King, so Kingjackoff.com. So is this another? You know, make sure your safe search is on before you try and Google it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I couldn't you, believe it was available. Do you still own Stapes? Stapes.com.com? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Good. Are you ever going to do anything? I also own High Stapes Poker and the United States of America. <laughs> you're just collecting domains, Joey? 125. You never know what you're going to need them for. Well, you, you know I used to be a web dev, right? I can actually make you a website with one of those. I know you've offered a couple of times. There was a fellow who, who made a website for me. Uh, I think... I mean, they meant it for free, right? So I'm not complaining. I think I've seen your work. I think yours would probably be better than what I've got. But Thank you. the people who update them do it for free, so I don't really, I don't really judge. Yeah, I would, I would charge you wicked, wicked cash. Else You're talented. Thank you, sir. NicholasTV.com. You know, it's a good, it's, it's, it's a good situation. Some real high stakes action. Love that. Maybe um. Maybe you should get that one while you're at it. Highstapesaction.com. What do you think? I'm made of 12 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> you think I got a $12 tree or what? 180. Sand deep. Pile and potty. Ace 10 off under the gun. 20 minutes to go on the level. 20 minutes to go on the day. There's only 20 minutes left tonight. This yeah. is a great three bet spot, Joe, if he wants so to bad. take it. Although, Palapati is under the gun. We are eight handed, so range will be considerably stronger. I think the fold there is perfectly reasonable as well. Um, in interesting just to note here, though, Joe Sandy, Palampati, 35 big blinds deep, and that's one of those really interesting, you know, late game ICM exploitable stacks mm -hmm. because obviously, sort of towards the middle of the field. David Coleman currently our shortest stack with 24 bigs. If Coleman was even shorter, that, that sort of becomes even more pronounced how much pressure you can apply to those players. But I think the fold there is cool. Probably going to sneak in through bets really from solid. later position opens more often. Ahead, Coleman does lay it oh, down. Is that what it is so far? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's strong. Tight is right. You made 20,000. That made you yeah. 20,000, right? Yeah, 20,000. What else do you need? <laughs> one close fold. I mean, Expedition says the website doesn't exist. That's because it's just a domain, buddy. That's what we're talking about. He just owns the domain. There's nothing on it yet. If you think about it, it's kind of a power move to have nothing on your website. Yeah. It's Absolutely. like having a business card that just has your name on it. What would like, what if, You know, track me down. What, would, what if I just make you a one-page website that's just Joe Stapleton, like, in text, just centered on a white background? I love it. Yeah. That's the kind of minimalist thing I'm going for. Sure. Like, do less, do less, do less, less than that. Less yeah, than can that. you make me a website that just says 404, <laughs> page not found? <laughs> Stapes not found? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I'll give it a go. Apex Hunter says Bone White. Bone White is actually a legitimate hexadecimal uh, color code on in websites. So much so that you can actually use the hex and or just bone white and it will recognize both huh yeah hashtag fun fact he's on the board <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Oh, Bone White Hex Code, <laughs> hashtag F9F6EE. Uh, you lost me, buddy. <laughs> blind on blind battle between Coleman and Pal Palampati. Pair of sevens for Coleman is going to give David Coleman 97% of the Equita. What's up, Exotic Chaotic? How's the VR world? What's it called now? Uh, Infinite? Queen on the turn means Pollen Potty's drawing officially dead. No betting on the flop. I would like to think so. Hmm? I would like to think so, but I don't know. The one guy's dad died and they didn't want to give him a reason. Not, not true! What happened? I was thinking of Ghost no, I don't have a room for tonight. Yeah, oh. he was oh, asking if they would give him a room. Like, I wanted oh. to wait last minute or dri drive back home if I bust. Where do you live? Sounds LA. like he lives pretty far away. In LA. <laughs> LA? Yeah. Yeah. yeah just drive back and forth. You'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go home for the night <laughs> and come back. <laughs> That'd be very smart. Get Zen on the ride. Right there. Hmm? Get Zen. It must be Sammy. Weekend, but they should get you, you should ask now. Yeah, I don't know who to add, though. Yeah. Paul and Potty bet 100k in the river, and Coleman called. Is Paul and Potty going to try to bluff this four high hand? Does for dinner break to figure out, but I forgot. So stupid. And has a reasonable chance of getting the best hand to fold. I think 175,000 into 440 is not a massive bet, but that ain't a great board for a pair of sevens. What time is it? Coleman sends the sevens into the muck. Well played. Staying deep. Sand deep ran deep, Nick. Sand deep ran deep. Yeah, so far, very, very solid poker coming from Team Sand Deep. I like the hoodie, too. I'm a fan of Noble, the brand. I'm actually rocking some Nobles right now, Joe. Look at that. Yeah. I think wrestling shoes. Uh, they're actually the official sponsor of the uh, CrossFit Games, which I, which I would know because I'm just such a prolific CrossFit. You're pretty extreme. Yeah, extreme CrossFitter. Yeah, that's me. They do really cool trainers, though. They look like boxing shoes because they got like the big tongue, but it's a cool situation. I like that. I went on one date with a CrossFit model. Oh yeah. I asked her how long she worked out for every day. You know what she said? Four races to one hundred. Ten minutes. Said when you do a CrossFit workout, it's yeah. so intense. You just need ten minutes. You only have to work out for ten minutes. <laughs> uh, also, coincidentally, ten ten minutes was exactly how long our date lasted. <laughs> when I was double dipping sweet potato fries into ranch dressing <laughs> and honey mustard, <laughs> we realized it probably wasn't going to work out. <laughs> uh, she followed up by asking you how often you hit the gym. <laughs> you said ten minutes a month. <laughs> ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Once a year. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Queen eight six rainbow. Shulman the pre flop aggressor. Aido whiffing pretty hard. Feeling inclined to defend with king five off. I shall see. Any questionable fold? Check it, check, 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 check. Queen on the river. Ace high, very good, and very likely to know it is good. 
Yeah, yeah. King High, no good. Showman's gonna take it down. Hey Joe, did you have a chance to play any slots yet you. since you've been here? Okay. I played some slots. Yeah. What any good? Yeah. Actually. I had one night where I couldn't lose. Oh yeah. Took five hundred dollars out of the ATM and I went to bed with fifty-two hundred dollars. <laughs> what? Tana and I last night had a. Tana was playing, but uh, he broke me off a little piece of his action. Uh, we had a forty-eight hundred dollar hit last night. Let's go. So I got half of that. Man, I don't think I have like ever hit a slot machine in like any capacity. Maybe like once. We were in that one for quite a bit. I'm not gonna lie. That well, I, that wasn't exactly profitable. Okay, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> But it got us mostly unstuck. The real Dre Goon says lol slots are good and he says spelling color with a U is bad. Ha 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 ha. Did anyone say slots are good? No. And also you banned. Your listening is bad. Okay, Ado got a little spicy AK here. Helen Potty raising from the button, very reasonable with sixes to Helen Potty, the effective stack, 39 big blinds. Ado probably wants to three bet, and I would go for like a 4X here. So whatever four times 180K is, Joe, just put that amount in. Actually goes for a 625. That would make sense to me. That sounds about right to me. Mary Juanda asking, what casino this at? We are at Resorts World. Three hotels, massive casino floor, Mulberry Street Pizza, Crossroads Kitchen. How was 80000 a food court of high-end fast food. Yeah, for sure. No Saberos or McDonald's, but you got barbecue, pho, ramen. Got some good options across the street, too. There's a Korean barbecue across the street. Yeah, I think there's an all-you-can-eat barbecue and yep. all-you-can-eat sushi, if I'm not mistaken. We are big dogs. Big fan of that. Oh. Okay. Palapati gives up the sixes and surrenders some of his chips. How many hands we play? Decides oh. not to set mine on this the occasion. Put it back. Play, uh, regular. You know what we're doing with the clock here? Oh. What happened? The clock was. We don't need to do that. We play. I don't think we need to do that. Yeah. yeah. We just keep playing, I guess. Well, they kind of do for. It doesn't really matter with one table how many yeah. hands there are. That's why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, hey, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, it matters a lot less. I mean, it doesn't matter. If anybody tanks to make it go up on my big line, I'll just fucking stab you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> that, that, that escalated quickly. The North American Poker Tour. 170. Four raises to 170,000. Six bullets. Mayor Pete says, don't sleep on Barzazu out in the mall area. My friend Liz is the bar manager there. Noted. Thank you, Mayor Pete. Should we show up and be like... Mayor Pete said we could have free drinks. Yeah. Hey, can I can I speak to the manager, please? Uh, your friend, the Mayor Pete, said that we get free drinks all night. Shulman, cool. Ace-10 suited. FTA, first to act. Is that 160? Dealer Sammy with deuces. My worst misplay. Will be set miming. It's tech with Ace, seven, eight. Top pair for Shulman. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a good Top air. Absolutely. For the head. He's like a once a month. What a come up. Okay. All right, win a little, lose a little. Little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
pretty uneventful standard situation. Um, All done on the flop, on to the next one. I think we're going to have a pretty uneventful eight minutes That's until right, the end Joe. of the day today. Yeah, eight minutes until closing time, but glad to see we made it down to final Ocho here in Vegas. La Electro Man. He did not say he would stab anyone that limped his big blind. He said he would stab anyone that stalled so that his big blind would go up yeah. on the next level. I should say we're, I'm glad we're down to the final seven, Joe. Of course we had that Buster Reno Jacks versus Aces as well. Daniel, I would love to know how to say Sammy's last name properly. I keep saying Bahahead, but it sounds like something that your uncle would call you. I think it's Bashahed. Bashahed, that sounds a lot better. Look at these kids that are around this Bahahead over here. Bahahead. Bashahed sounds a lot better. We're going to go with Bashahed for now, so someone corrects me. Ace, King, Nine, Two Clubs. Yeah, if there's one thing that Joe loves, it's when Chat corrects his pronunciation. <laughs> I just call him Sammy. Sammy continues dominating this final table. Over ten and a half million chips. This oh, time we've got the ladies. Lady Kings. Two Lady Kings. Oh. 10 8 suited for ping.com. Yeah, Lou's got one of those hands that really busts up big pairs, though. 10 8 suited, so pretty. Let's go to the flop. Ace nine four to spades. So effective stack here about forty three bigs after that action pre flop, and therefore probably going to see a one third continue on Ace nine four. I think that checking queens is also fine though. I think you probably do want to bet here most of the time though just because you get action from the four from the nine from the spades from the straight draws sometimes a combination of both straight draw and flush draw and the big blind will have plenty of that right even hands as weak as like deuce three suited mm -hmm. might sneak in there deuce three of spades being a pretty significant draw that you want to try and get value from right here right now oh man lou hits the card of cards for producing outage yeah, you'll notice it was 100K into a pot of 470K on the flop. And I think the rule generally, Joe, is in situations like that. Look at the run out. Queens officially cracked. Ayedo probably not loving this board to begin with, hence the check, check on the turn. Right. I was going to say, usually when you're facing that one quarter or smaller size, Joe, if you think there's a chance you can bluff on a later street, you should probably be peeling with, you know, anything that has a back door. So nine of diamonds being that middle pin to a back door straight flush draw. And obviously the ace high texture board that's going to be see that as a bluff a lot. So you can do a combination of calling where you improve, but also calling 500. where you bluff. 500, is the and 500k on the river for Lou. Queens can definitely still hero here. Obviously spades have missed. They will need to bluff. Straights have missed. They will need to bluff. So really, calling the queens here, I think, is is a very reasonable, reasonable uh, opportunity for uh, for Edo. I 
think Lou will have plenty of ace combos. But obviously, some of those combos will be played as a three bet here once in a while. Given the hijack versus big blind nature, certainly ace king, maybe ace queen, maybe ace jack. I'm fine for this tank to take us to the end of the night. I think there's a chance it does. Tough spot. And Ado has already used one time bank card. Egghead fold. Yep, very good fold. He, he knows there's a chance he got bluffed there for sure. It's always sad when you got to abdicate the queens. Great. Good fold. You tell him, I don't know. I, know. I told him good fold. Tell me. <laughs> I, I don't know why. It's very simple, but I love that APT hat. Yeah, it's chill, right? I would wear that. Yeah. I like things that are plain. Cheese pizza, grilled cheese. Or maybe I just like cheese. Is button sent tomorrow? Yeah. Boy can dream. Very likely to be the last hand of the level, the last hand of the night. And it seems like we're going to be coming back tomorrow with seven players. Starting with our round three, right? Two points. Oh. Hmm. Oh, hmm. Pocket twos. <laughs> like a set of twos, thank you. Uh, you sound like the scary puppet from, uh, from mm. Dark Crystal. Mm -hmm. Twos, indeed. Mm. Skeksis. <laughs> All right, Moose. I had enough of you. Later on. Go play your tournament. Pocket deuces. Still good after this king six four. Rainbow flop. One fifty. New data mom. One Now facing a bet of one hundred fifty thousand. Seems reasonable, but what future bets will you be facing? on a board that is almost guaranteed to get worse for you. Like that. Oh boy. Ten of hearts on the turn. I think I like to continue on the turn from Pelham Potty here, just because I think the small blind spot is gonna have a lot of pairs like this that haven't made a set. Fives, sevens, eights. Maybe even like nines, given the under the gun nature, the nature of the under the gun open. It does not second barrel, but does get rewarded. Backdoor straights galore. I think Lou probably quite happy to try and take it to showdown. I think he checks a bunch here. I think turning deuces into a bluff isn't the craziest idea ever, though. You can definitely get plenty of better hands to fold if you if you do it just right. Mm, not this hand. Yeah, not the uh, not the nut straight. No. Six thirty. Oh no, six hundred and thirty K. That is a lot of the pot. 
and it ain't coming back. Yeah, I, I think Pelham Potty basically never folds here. I think backdoor flushes are obviously unlucky, but he could be doing this with King 4, he could be doing this with King 10, he could be doing this with King 9 suited. King 4 probably not going to be in there from the small blind after he opens under the gun, but definitely some King 9 suited, definitely some King 10. And then obviously a, 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 a fair few bluffs. Palm Potty elects to call just in case. He's up against backdoor hearts. But that is a significant pot being shipped the direction of Sandeep, who switches positions on the leaderboard with Ping Lu. And that is going to draw a line under today. Are we getting. Cross it off the calendar. Six more. Bag and tag. These seven chaps are coming back for the final day. North American Poker Tour Las Vegas 2023. Seven players out of 1,095 total entries. $1.6 million prize pool. Lots of love coming in for Sammy the Dealer. Here's how they're going to stack up tomorrow with blinds at 50,000, 100,000. Sammy will be the chip leader coming in with 106 big blinds. Sergio Aido, very healthy stack, but trailing Sammy by quite a bit. Shulman and Sandeep bunched up tied for third and then things start getting a little dicey for Ping, Jonathan and David Coleman reminder of what they're playing for, everybody now guaranteed $42,000 make it to third, you get six figures 168 for second and the winner makes more than a quarter million dollars for a 1650 buy in event not too shabby If you want to read more about what happened today, if you prefer textual healing, check out the Poker Stars blog. Updates and stories that we didn't cover on the broadcast today for all the events happening across the NAPT Las Vegas. Join us tomorrow. We're back at 1 o'clock local time. That's Pacific for the main event final table. But for now, for Nick Walsh, Griffin Benger, Maria Ho, and James Hardigan, I'm Joe Stapleton. Smell you later. Got no time for counting the stats Say you want this